Hey everyone, Blaine Austin here at Sewing Machines Plus, and welcome to day four of Quilt Fest. Man, oh man, are we going to have fun today. Uh, we've had such a good week so far, and can y'all believe it? It is day four already. It's just flying by. Again, we have another uh, great lineup for you today with some fantastic demos. Uh, we have a great educational session at 1030 Pacific Time. Uh, 1230 Central Time, and uh, so you don't want to miss that. But before we get too deep into the show this morning, I want to say a big shout out to some of the SMP Nation watching. We have uh, Hazel Isabel in Pennsylvania watching, Sarah Lamp in Texas, we have Cindy Outlaw in Virginia Beach, we have Jennifer Hoffman in St. Louis, and Patricia Roberts over in Oklahoma. So Good morning to all of you and uh, good morning to the SMP Nation. Real quick, I want to know how many people have watched the show from the start on Monday and today is your fourth day. Put a number four in the, in the chat right now. I want to see how many fours are in there. And if today is your very first day uh, attending Quilt Fest, put a number one. We'll see if there's any newbies in there. I know there's got to be a lot of number fours, though. Is there a lot? Well, I've got Kyle and Kennedy in here in the studio with me this morning. Good morning. And uh, they're raring to go as well. And we're going to have a special guest host coming in this morning, too. And that'll be Jane Klaus. And I'll, I'll introduce her here in just a second. But I got some uh, business to attend to and tell you all about. So... I uh, got to thank our sponsors. First of all, we uh, could not do uh, Quilt Fest without them. And uh, I tell you what, it's great having a, partners like these guys. And uh, our platinum sponsors this year were Handy Quilter and Grace. Uh, gold sponsors, Baby Lock, Janome, Brother, R&K, Juki, and Quilt Easy. Our silver sponsors, King Quilter and Arrow Cabinets. Bronze sponsors, uh, Reliable, Bernina. So Steady, Brewer, and Laura Star. So uh, as y'all know, part of Quilt Fest uh, is not only do we give you some really great deals and uh, with products, but it's education. We always try to educate people on some techniques or different things. And uh, this year's no exception. On Monday, if y'all didn't, if you missed it, you need to go back and watch it. But we had... Uh, it was called Colorful Yarn Couching with Beth Ann Nemish. And uh, Beth Ann did just a fantastic job. Hopefully, y'all, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch that segment. On Tuesday, we had Kitchen Towel Project with Edita Centaur. Uh, another fantastic uh, session. Wednesday was Beyond the Stencil with Jane Hoprich. And then today, we have Ruler Work with Kimberly, Kimberly Imo. And so you don't want to miss today. And then Friday, it's going to be called Meet the Judges. And it's going to be an hour session. And we get to meet all four of those educators, which are also our judges. Uh, they're all, uh, you know, what they call quilting celebrities. They're very well known uh, across the world. And uh, so we're super excited and happy that they're here with us this week. And uh, Friday, we're going to talk to each one of them, talk a little bit about their quilting journey uh, and uh, what they look for in an award-winning quilt. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So also what uh, Quilt Fest is all about is the quilts. And we have a contest that kind of coincides with Quilt Fest and it's done virtually. So you could enter your quilt uh, via photographs. And we had rules to tell you where to take the picture and what to, how, what to take it of. And you submit those in. We had over 130 entries. And it's, you know, once we got all those submissions, we opened it up for voting. And voting ends today, everyone. So if you want to see the quilts, you can go to sewmachinesplus.com on our homepage banner. At the very top, you'll see Quilt Fest. Click on that. It'll take you to the Quilt Fest page. Uh, at that point, just click on galleries at the top of that page. It'll show you all the quilts. You can vote on your favorite one. You get two votes per day. So go look at them. There's a lot of them to look at, 130. But <laughs> there are some unbelievable quilts in there. Now, what we're going to do uh, with all those votes, we're going to actually award a People's Choice Award. So we're going to have 
the top three vote getters win first, second, and third in the people's choice. And each one of those win a prize package. And then the judges are going to pick uh, one that is going to be called the best of show. They're all going to pick. We have a point system set up. But here's what the judges choice winner gets. $11,500 prize package. Look at that on the screen right there. A ton of product they're going to get. And then the People's Choice Award, the first place gets a prize package worth $3,500. Uh, the People's Choice second place gets a prize package of $2,800. And the People's Choice third place gets a prize package worth $2,300. So they're all getting a lot of great things. Now you ask, what do I win? Well, hey, guess what? You have a chance to win something as well. Uh, we're giving daily giveaways uh, throughout the day. And at the end of the day, we're giving stuff away. And uh, we've got probably this year $100,000 worth of product that we're giving away. And also, we're having what we call the, the Dream Studio giveaway. And that's what's really exciting because that is worth $26,000. And each day we're picking a finalist to be involved in that. And look at the Dream Studio there on the screen. Uh, it was supposed to be $25,000, but Kyle and Kennedy got generous and ended up giving another $1,000 worth of stuff. So it's valued at $26,000. <laughs> Can't leave Kennedy and Kyle alone at, at any. They, they, they always have to up it. So, But I'm happy they did because it is a fantastic prize package they put together. And so what's so cool about this, each day we're going to pick a finalist. And here's the thing. All four people that don't win the Dream Studio, the runner-ups, they all go home with something. They're all going to get minimum a sewing machine. Wow. So if you're picked, you get something. So that's what's awesome. So Monday, our first finalist was Laverne Mendez. Uh, Tuesday, our finalist was Sewing Bev, if y'all remember mm -hmm. Sewing Bev. And then yesterday, our finalist was Karen Bruin. And today, at the end of the day, we're going to pick our fourth finalist to get in there. So right now, all three of the ones I've just named are guaranteed to win something, but they're going to be in that drawing for the Dream Studio giveaway. So what I'm going to do on Friday, we're going to print their names out. I'm going to throw them in a hat. And I'm going to pull it out live on air and you'll be able to see the name that wins the studio. So we're super excited about that. So now I need to introduce my co-host. It's been for here all week with me and uh, she's here again today. Now, Jane Klaus, y'all know her, love her. She is a two-time Emmy Award winning TV host. She is a radio host. She's a do-it-yourselfer. She is an ambassador for a brother. She's a fitness expert. You name it, this girl does it. I'm telling you, she is so talented. She's a sewer. She's an embroiderer. She's learning how to quilt, and she's here all week. So y'all welcome Jane Klaus to the show. What's up, everybody? Good morning. <laughs> how are you? I am so good today, Jane, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I'm just, it's getting close to announcing the winners for the quilt contest. It's getting close to announcing the grand prize dream studio winner. So I get so excited about that and we're getting closer to it. So I get more amped up. So many reasons to get excited. I love browsing through all the quilts. You said there was like over 130 entries, which is like yes. how to decide. They're all so, so, so good. So good. And also that yes. dream studio and those kids <laughs> throwing in an extra grand in the whole thing. Like, I love that. You know it. Yeah. More well, and you more and less you is more. You know, it's like, you know, it's like leaving a kid in the candy store with Kennedy. <laughs> she just goes. I said, Kennedy put something together. And I mean, I'm telling you what, she put an incredible package together, like what she would want in her dream studio, but she added a little bit. Well, that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, and a little bit of this. And Let me a just bit take this too. <laughs> <laughs> she so, added it to myself. It's what Blaine would want. It's what Blaine would want. Yeah. That's how I, like, <laughs> that's how I leveraged it. Well, she think, her and Kyle both kind of think like me. We always want, you know, go big or go home. And uh, so, Hey, we went big. I love that. You know it. Go big or go home. More is more or less is a bore. You might as well yeah. do it. It's now or never. All the things. Well, you know, <laughs> Jane, and I want to explain to everybody, too, 
about our Quilt Fest pricing. Uh, as y'all probably know, you've heard me throw the term around map pricing. Well, map pricing means minimum advertised price. And that's what the vendors set for all the dealers. Uh, that was, and that's the price that we can advertise. We can't go below that price uh, verbally on a show like this or in print. So that's why we have uh, show pricing and we tell you to call in, wink, wink, and things like that. Call in because we want to give you the best deals. And what we do, I start working on this early and I go out and I work the, you know, the manufacturers and tell them, you know, here's what we're doing. What kind of pricing can I get if I buy X numbers? And they usually give me some really good deals. And when I get those good deals, Jane, I pass them right on to the customers. And that's how we're able to do uh, the Quilt Fest pricing and uh, making sure. So I don't want to think if you bought something last week before the show and now it's you can you call in and it's cheaper. That's the reason it's cheaper because I didn't buy those ones you bought last week at a cheaper price. I bought these ones this week for a cheaper price and I'm just passing the savings on. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, you know, I don't want people to ever feel bad uh, that they didn't get a deal, you know, certain periods of time because, you know, I only have certain amounts too. So, you know, if you uh, didn't jump on board, you know, we had a machine yesterday that we sold out of and I only had 10 of them to sell at that price and we sold out of them. So now I'm having to go back to the manufacturer and beg them to give me the the same deal <laughs> to get more. Wow. So you could probably understand that. So, so literally when the show's over, everyone's like, okay, I'm moving on to dinner. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to keep, keep quilting. You're calling the, the manufacturers going, dude, can you just give me some more? Yes. <laughs> they want it. I need to get it for them. It uh, works when, like that. I love that too. And then let's just remind everybody when we say call in, You've got you've got a whole crew there just picking up the phone mm -hmm. and answering. And then we've got the chat. So if you are waiting for a response, they're going to call you back or you're going to get picked up right away. Well, and normally, you know, sometimes our phones are so busy. Kyle has a Google Sheets link that he right. puts in the chat and they can just click that, fill out the information and we can call them back. But that we've hired more people uh, in our call center. So we're actually handling all the calls this week. And uh, so if you haven't get, you're not getting through, get in the chat and let me know, because I want to make sure that you're getting through on the phones uh, because they're telling me right now that they're answering all the calls and not having anybody, you know, that's having to wait. And uh, so that's a good sign. And yeah. you might, you know, call today and it might be busy and you might get voicemail, but uh, they will call you back if you leave a voicemail. But Go right ahead. now it's been working really smooth this week. The shipping in the warehouse, we've completely, doubled our size of warehouse workers and a whole new crew out there. And they are really uh, kicking some butt, Jane. They are they are getting everything out and uh, working extremely hard to get all the orders that are ordered each day out. And uh, if you order your product by 6 uh, p.m. Eastern time, right. it should ship today, the same day. Amazing. That, so that's why I say don't wait. Like we've got this entire week. I don't know. We're like seeing all these new products and we're just kind of maybe making a decision. But I say buy something every day because then you'll get something delivered to you every day after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, that's you know, logical, it's right? Fun. It's that's always fun to order something and get it in. You know, that, that excitement at opening the box for the first time. And and, you know, uh, this week we've got so many great products. And, and the other thing I want to remind everybody about, too, uh, if there's something that you've been kind of have your eye on uh, that's not on the show, even if you just been on our website and you're like, man, I've been looking at this machine and there's a good chance it could be on Quilt Fest. Because when I you know, there's a, thousands of products that you know we we purchase uh, weekly. I mean, there's this we, we are constantly have a. Uh, influx of trucks that come in and bring product and we have trucks going out taking product you know shipping them out so what we do is we're you know we're always trying to buy and i'm when i buy for the show i'm always trying to get the deals so there's things right now that we're not that didn't make the show because we didn't have the room for it but that doesn't mean that i don't have a really special price on it because of what i bought it for so always ask them call in and ask and they're going to be able to tell you real quick uh, you know, whether it's on the show or not, or, you know, where we have pricing on it. Like there, that. 
I mean, there are so many things that go on behind the scenes and behind the show. And literally all I want to do is shop, host, and sew. So thank you <laughs> for taking care of all the heavy lifting for me, uh, Blaine, and everybody else. Because you do all the hard work. We do the easy work. So thanks so much. Well, you're <laughs> welcome. And want to say a big shout out out there to we have uh, our chatters that are going to be monitoring uh, the Facebook and YouTube and all the, you know, uh, Twitch and all the different social media out there. We have, uh, you know, it's Rhonda. We have Melinda, Arena, and Joe. Uh, four of them are what monitoring the chat. You may see their names. They're going to be looking for your questions to try to ask, you know, answer for you. Uh, if the if the presenter misses it, hopefully they're going to get it for you and answer. But what I'm going to remind everybody, Jane, is when you are watching these demonstrations, it's okay to chat as much as you want to chat. But if you've got specific questions you want to ask, I yeah. would wait toward the end of the demonstration so the the person who's presenting can actually, you know, take that time to look at their, their screen and see some chats or some questions. And we might more catch it, too, because we That's want to great. make sure we can answer everybody's questions. And what I notice is when I'm online looking at the products. I always get the chat box like Rena always comes up and like I always know the names. I'm like, oh, there they are. Uh oh, <laughs> did I freeze? Uh, yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I, you sure did. Yeah. Okay. Let me just, uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. That's okay. It's well, that's crazy. weird. Let me just reboot. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll let you reboot. And, uh, while you're rebooting, we'll remind everybody again, uh, you know, how, how, how things are going today. Again, today is the last day you can vote, uh, for the quilts. So make sure if you want to vote, you can do two times today. Uh, go check them all out. Uh, they're on our homepage banner. It'll say Quilt Fest. Just go click on the Quilt Fest banner. Uh, once you take it that page, you'll want to go to the gallery. That's where all the quilts are at. And you can go check out every single one of them and you can vote on your favorite one because there are some beautiful quilts this year. And I'm, I'm impressed. Were you impressed, Kyle? With oh, yeah. These are nice ones. Really nice quilts this year. The quality everybody's up their game and uh, that was matter of fact the judges even told me that that they were having a very difficult time uh picking the the uh, your best to show because there were so many great great People ones very yeah the voting is extremely close the top three uh are really really close so but i think jane is back now isn't she hi there, got you you got me Yes. So Perfect. I was just saying, Jane, the, the voting on the people's choice for the quilts, the top three, uh, really, really close in votes. I mean, and then the judges were having such a hard time, uh, you know, picking the best of show. So it's, so it's uh, the quality of quilts this year is unbelievable. Amazing. I love that. Um, that's so cool. And I mean, the people's choice so important. So if you haven't voted yet, you got to get there today and vote again. That's true. You know what they All say right, in Jane. Chicago? They say vote early and vote often. There we go. Well, <laughs> I think let's kick this thing off. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. As long as you can hear and see me, we're good to go. Let's do it. All right. So, guys, we're kicking our very first session off. Jane is going to take it away, and I'll see you all back here in 30 minutes. Oh, this is so exciting, everybody. I uh, can't believe it is day four of Quilt Fest. Super excited to be here. So let's kick it off with our friends from the Grace Company. I'm super excited to introduce to you Catherine Burrell and Jana Matthews. Now, Catherine uh, has been with the Grace Company a little over eight months as a customer service representative. She's passionate about gardening, and she spends as much time as she's able to outside cultivating her plants and flowers. I love it. In the evenings, you're going to find her with her husband, hanging out on the porch, reading a good book, maybe sipping on a Diet Pepsi, enjoying the beauty of her yard, all of that work. She's just taking it all in. Uh, guess what? Her husband and her are empty nesters. They have two kids, a son and a daughter with one new granddaughter. Congratulations. And our friend Jana Matthews, she's the assistant sales manager with the Grace Company. And in her time there, she's had the opportunity to work with both customers and dealers across the country. And when she's not at work, you know it. Jana is an avid baker and she loves bringing in tasty treats to share. They're here today to talk about the Grace 16X Elite on the Evolution Hoop. Hi, ladies. Hi, Hi Jane. Jane. Hi, How everybody. Oh, my gosh. So good to see you bright and early today. Uh, Jana, what did you bring in Tasty Treat today? 
Well, it's pie day, 3.14. I'm a math nerd as well, so <laughs> we have some pies that we brought in today. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You know what I say? Uh, I love that you're a math nerd. I, when people say, oh, I don't want to quilt, I don't want to sew, I go, listen, it's a lot of straight stitches and some math, and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, today you're going to talk about the uh, 16X Elite. Is that right? Yes. yes. And on the Evolution Hoop Frame. Yeah. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you have that fun and I'll be right here watching and getting some questions for you. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Jane. Um, yeah. So Kathy and I are so excited yes. to be here. This is one of our favorite combos. Yes. The Evolution Elite um, Hoop Frame and the 16X Elite. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the machine first, okay. and then we're gonna go into the frame. And so, okay. just so you know, this machine and frame is set up as a combo, but you can buy them per separately yes. and on other machines and frames, right? Mix and match always. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna start with the 16X Elite. One of the fantastic things about this is you can see that 16 inches of throat space and those lights that are right back here, you can see them kind of shining there at the top. Yeah. It makes a world of difference just having that little bit of extra light. I don't know about you, but my craft area sometimes can get a little <laughs> dark. Yes, especially right down here where there's the, the machines over it, you really need those lights for exactly. sure. Exactly, yeah. so we've got 16 inches of throat space with those lights on there, and there's also a light in the bobbin case area. Now, we don't have a camera on that one, so you just have to trust us that it's yes. underneath there, but that's an M-class bobbin. Yes. So nice big bobbin, able to do so many stitches, and speaking of the bobbin, we have a bobbin winder on the machine. Yes, it makes it so much easier. You can wind your own bobbins, you can use the thread colors you want for your bobbin thread. Exactly, so you can match the top yes, and the bottom. Exactly. And then the other thing is that that bobbin winder is a separate motor. You can see on our thread mast here that there are two spools or spots for spools of thread. And so that bob back one goes with a bobbin case um, wind or the, in the case, but the actual bobbin <laughs> area. And then the front one goes to the threading. And you can see there as it's threaded, you can kind of see those that pad printing. So there's a different roll on the left side as on the right. So the left one goes one, two, three, four for you to um, take those needle uh, threaded and all that kind of steps. And then the back one is A, B, C, D. So you don't even get confused. Yep. They've got it all figured out so that you're not trying to thread ABC with one, two, three, and yeah. cross those. <laughs> no, don't cross the streams, Exactly. Right? But since they're separate uh, motors, you can thread um, your machine and be quilting with it while you're also winding a Oh, it makes it so easy. Yeah. So two things one time saves you time because there's never enough time there's for quilting, time. Exactly. right? <laughs> so we've got that, the, the bobbin case um, uh, and the bobbin winder. The other thing I want to talk about is I'm... I'm a little shorter, and so... I'm a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're quilting, maybe our reach isn't as far as some people. Yeah. And that's one thing I love about this is the adjustable handles. So it has these clamps here that I'm just going to release, and then you can see how far I can bring that out. I'm able to just then clamp it down again, and now I can adjust it for my hand holding. I'm just set for whatever is most comfortable for me. I'm going to do this other side as well and pull that out. So I have it all the way adjusted because I like them all the way. Now, this is true of all our machines, but yeah. I really love it on this one because then it's right at my hand, fingertips. Yep. And you can use the same thing on the screen as on your fingertips. But this way, if I'm extended out, mm -hmm. I just have this, the fingertips just right here and I don't have to reach and exactly. pull and everything well, like and that. You know, let's talk about the throat space of the 16. Um, it's my favorite size because like I said, I'm really short <laughs> and so the reach for me isn't as much as other people that are taller and have longer arm mm -hmm. so the 16 is just like the perfect size as far as the reach on the quilt gives me that full quilting space that my arms allow right. not just the the machine itself but that's what my arms allow yeah so. i love that yeah i also love that um when we're talking about the 16 so yesterday we talked about the 16x which is right. the smaller screen but this 16x Elite yeah. has the elite size screen. Just you can see here, seven so inches. Big. It's a touch screen. It's color. There's so many fantastic things on the screen. Yes. We're just going to go a little bit back okay. and forth. So the first thing is the stitch modes. Precise means. Uh, precise means when you stop um, your handles moving, your stitching will stop as well. Right. It does exactly, exactly what you want it to what do. Exactly what you want it to do. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next is cruise. It's just like the cruise in your car. Mm -hmm. So that needle goes up and down exactly while you're moving, the, whether you're moving the machine or not, right? Right. So the same thing with the cruise. You don't have to push your foot pedal down on your machine um, in your car. Same thing with cruise. You don't have to push the yep. button and move it. It's just going to keep cruising. Then we have basting mode. It's a wonderful stitch, you know, when you're basting your quilt together, long, medium, and small. And then manual mode. Now, Kathy, what do you think, why do we have manual mode so much? So with the manual mode, sometimes it's a little easier to move the machine mm -hmm. around curves and corners. So if you're doing some big circles, the manual mode gives you that control rather than the cruise or the precise mode. Yeah, and with yeah. manual, there's a lot of people, so it's 2,100 stitches per minute, yeah. which is a really powerful machine with that stitch regulation. Yes. However, there's some people who They've just been quilting a very long time <laughs> and they are like so Fast. much faster, right? Yeah. And so they want to keep that stitch regulation and so they um, they are precise, right? Like right. they are their own stitch regulation. Yeah. Moving it at the speed of light. Yes. But that way with the manual mode, they can just do that. Yeah. Um, and they can way. go fast without it beeping at you <laughs> and letting you know you're going too fast. Or like er erase the stitch regulation. Yeah. They just, they've just they got know it. it. Yeah. So that's why we have that manual mode. Other things on the screen you can see also are is the stitches per inch. Mm -hmm. It can go, you can click our plus sign and go all the way up to 16. And you can press the negative number and come all the way to four. Or I can click, if it'll work for me here, click and drag it. I think it's, there we go. <laughs> so I can get to where I want it to be just by dragging it over. I also can do that by using the buttons on mm -hmm. my handle. So I can go up and down depending on which way I want to go just by the handles. Again, that non-touch, yeah. I don't have to reach it as far. Next thing on the screen I want to talk about is our toolbox. This is exclusive to the Elite, yes. right? Is this, um, not everything on here. The edge warning is also available on the right. X's. But I don't know about you, but I love the edge warning. I do too. <laughs> I do too. So much. <laughs> yeah, so setting that edge warning, you can set where you're going out before you start your project. So you're not going out of bounds mm -hmm. on accident w without knowing it. Yeah. It lets you know. So you can set it just in a block yep. if you want that available, or you can set it just especially when you're doing on a hoop yeah. frame like this, so you don't accidentally hit those quilt clips. Because I know you're just quilting, you're making those popcorns, and then you hit the clip. You and have you, a and straight it's, line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to pick it out. Yep. We do enough picking. We don't need to do that. For exactly. That. So that's why we've got that fantastic edge warning all set up. The other thing on our toolbox that we've got available is the bobbin oh, estimator. Yes. This Even is, though it's an M-class bobbin, sometimes we run out still. <laughs> yes, if it's a big quilt or you're doing a lot of detail work. Yeah. yeah, so we have this bobbin estimator. You can set it up. You can name it. You can add additional names. Um, obviously, we've named it blue because that is our um, color that we're working on. And we can reset it back to what we think it is, turn it on, and then um, when it comes up, it'll tell us, oh, we're almost out. So you can see our estimator, even though I'm adding the bobbin in and I said, I'm supposed to have 55 yards, the bobbin that's in there doesn't have 55 yards. So it's gonna show up as red to tell me yes. it might run out soon. It'll be green when you have a full bobbin and orange when you have uh, almost You're gone getting, bobbins. Yeah. yeah, close. So other things on the toolbox, we've got our measuring tool okay, yeah. where you can measure diagonal, straight across, up and down, you know, everything that you need for there. And you can, oh, I forgot to say it, show. You can do in inches or centimeters, whichever you prefer. And then we also have this project. This one's fun for me. Yes. We've got the lifetime <laughs> of the machine, right? This machine has gone for 16 hours. We also have the project that we're currently working on has 10 hours. So I can reset it because our project is starting over. Right. And now we're at zero, but you'll notice our lifetime project stays at 16 because that's how we still have qu quilted that much. Exactly. And go from there. So that is all the items here on our screen for in the toolbox. The other part that's exclusive to our um, elite machine is our settings. So say this screen is a little too bright for you. You can come grab it. You can see it goes quite dark. Also the throat light, if it's too bright for you, can grab that and bring it down. The needle area we can bring up and down. So you can see as I 
click and drag it there. The there needle area gets brighter. Because we have cameras on, we always put that needle area down so it's easier to see. We also have some other buttons for lights and sound that might be a little bit triggering, right? Yes. So our edge warning, our overspeed, when we're doing both of those, going past um, our edge section or we're going past the stitch regulation, it will beep at you, it will flash a light at you. Yes. Some people have said, hey, I get migraines, I get um, certain sounds are bad. So you can turn any of those off. Yeah. Um, available to um, get through the, the section. But so. it is nice to have those if they don't, uh, affect, they don't you. affect you. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to see the blinking lights knowing that we're going out of bounds or we're going too exactly. fast. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then the last part of the screen, and I know this is one of your favorite yes. things, is that help screen. Yes, absolutely. This is going to help you if you're having tension issues or if you're having issues with your bobbin or you're having just issues putting it on your frame. It'll give you the full uh, uh, manual and everything on this screen. So let's go into preparing to quilt. So even though it's pad printed here, we still have how to thread your machine and kind of a <laughs> little instruction on how to get through there. Yes. Also we have, let me get back to the next screen, choosing your needle. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we get asked questions, what should I do? Um, what thread should I use with what size with needle? What fabric, yes. And so also it shows you the size, you know, you should change your needle after every project. Again, the help of winding the bobbin. And then troubleshooting. I think this one's great. What yes. am I doing with my stitching? And tension is all wrong. And I have long stitches. I've, you know, skip yeah. stitches, all that kind of stuff. As you come through, it'll walk you through. This is how you find stuff. And I love that it's right here on your machine because a lot of times I'll put my machine on and then what happened to my user manual? Who knows? It's, in a safe it's somewhere place. <laughs> in my craft room. Exactly. I don't know where. Somewhere. Yeah, it safe. even has um, using the touch screen. So if you haven't understood a touch screen or just mm -hmm. want to understand this one, it has a tutorial where as you go through, it'll tell you things about it, walk through, and then in the upper right hand corner, it'll have exit tutorial. So if you're like, ah, enough of that. I just need to kick quilting. You can exit that <laughs> and it'll take you back to the main screen. It's so, awesome. Many fantastic things about the seven yes. inch. Have we forgotten anything about I this machine? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the frame. Now, then. this is what I'm really excited about. <laughs> I love this frame because mm -hmm. I'm like a lot of you out there, I only have a certain amount of space. I have kids that live out of town, so I have guest rooms. I don't have an extra quilting area but this frame is the perfect size it's great it's yes. five inch or five inches <laughs> five foot five tall feet. just like me it's five foot wide yep and it's a hoop and rail <gasps> quilt so, so i don't know if awesome. many people knew this we call it the hoop frame because you are and yeah. that's what we have set up right now yes we have it set up with this hoop style um so we have these clips in the back now some people have asked me they're like you know these clips are hard to take off I have arthritis or something like that. I just want to remind everybody how I took it off because I don't have a problem. I've taken it off with two hands. But if you're having issues with the clips, put all your power together for your two hands and side. then lift them off. Yep. That way you're not trying to lift too much and before you know it, you're on the floor because you <laughs> pulled it too hard. Yeah, <laughs> similar to the, the clips on our other frames. Mm -hmm. The two hands, one side, pull off. Yeah, and yeah. then just pushing on, push it on on one section but use two hands so that goes on cleanly and then you're set to go. Um, also right. on the front, because it is a hoop style, we have these clips here in the front. It also has clips on the side mm -hmm. when you need it. This particular one wasn't big enough for what we were quilting, so we're just using our tension here with the uh, bobbin, I'm sorry, the, the, <laughs> the bungee the clamps. Bobbins, the bungee clamps, <laughs> wrong B word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's got all these great ways to keep your tension. Now, when I say keep your tension, that doesn't mean you want it so tight no. that you can bounce a quarter off, right? Right. You want to be able to reach up and grab a little bit so you have a little give um, as you're going along there. Most quilting machines like it that way. Yeah. Even domestic machines, it depends on which one you're using. You'll get used to it. So sometimes yeah. you think, oh, I'm having tension problems and, and it's, it's my machine and it's really it's how tight fabric. your fabric is. Yeah. yeah. The other fantastic thing about this frame though is that it can be a rolling frame as well as a hoop frame 
right? And so you, even yeah. though you have a small space, you're not limited to just the hoop style. It's true. I mean, I may start with the hoop frame mm -hmm. and decide later on, hey, I want to, I have a room now. So yeah. I want to turn it into a rolling frame. That's well, what's even, really nice about this yeah, evolution Even at frame. the five feet, you can see right here, yep. it's got the metal ratchets. So I could create this as a rolling yep. frame if I wanted to. There's a little end cap that goes on there that whether you're hooping, you put that in, it has a little stopper so it mm -hmm. won't roll. And then when you're switching to the railing, you put the other one on that has just a full circle. So you have that option. But like you were saying, you could also- Extend it. Extend it. Yeah. You can get a five foot or a three foot to make it a 10 or an eight. And then there's a two foot when you're ready for that 12 yep. feet. Or seven feet. Or seven feet. You can set so it up So many for options with so, this frame. It's so awesome. So easy to get yeah. it to where you need it to go, right? The other thing I love about this Evolution hoop frame is that you can put the Cunique 21. Now, I know we're talking about the 16 yes. X Elite. I will cover its ears. <laughs> we can talk about the 21. Um, so a lot of times our smaller frames, you can only put a 16 or 19 inch right. stroke space on it, right? Right. But, I mean, we always say get as big as you want because you, you know, you always like to go bigger rather than smaller. Exactly. So, yeah. The other thing, so we're, we're talking about the big one, so you yeah. can put that 21 inches of throat space on there, so you're able to do that, but you can also go smaller. So yes. our little Rebel, so these quilt clips in the back, let me pull that off again so that I can show you. They are kind of higher, right? Yeah. They're available so that you can put the extra fabric here right. in the spring section. So as you, you know, getting your roll, put it in here and then it holds it tight. So that's great for the hoop. But because of that, sometimes not all domestics will fit on here. Right. But what domestic or little straight stitch will fit on there? The, <laughs> the little, little rebel. rebel. Yeah, yep. so you can have, I mean, that's my favorite thing about yeah. this frame is whether you're going really big right to the 21 yep. or, or you're smaller. starting with a little rebel. It's so easy to put it, it's yeah. versatile either really direction. Is. Yes. For whatever your space is, right? Exactly. Five feet or 60 inches. And then the quilting space. So people have asked like, well, how much is my zone left to right? And so you can do because the needle, no matter whether you're using which kind of frame, I mean, whichever machine, yeah. the needle's in the middle. Mm -hmm. You can't move it once you put that on the, the carriage, right? The right. carriage sits there and then so there's additional piece. So even though the needle's here, my carriage comes to About just this. here. So on each side, so then we're limited. Yeah. I can't quilt all the way to that section. So because of that, yeah. even though it's 60 inches wide, I have 47 inches. Makes sense. Left and right. Yeah. And then your quilting space this way depends on which frame you're doing. So with 16 inches, I subtract two inches for my quilting clip, clip and rail. Yep. So a 14 inch quilt block. Yep. 19 gets you 17 inches, 21 gets you 19 inches, yes. but the little rebel still gives gets you, you 11. 11. Yeah. Yep. So it depends on which way you're going and everything like that. Yeah. So um, one other thing I wanted to talk about is height adjustable. We did not make this adjustable for us no. height. We made it so that you can see it in the screen well. <laughs> in the camera. <laughs> in the camera. Yeah. But it does have the ability to adjust the legs. So this is, we kind of put this on our, you know, most height people. Yes. It's often in our showroom and um, using it in our studio. So we have it so that people can, you know, use it for the most ease when they're coming up and holding it. It's pretty okay size for me. Yeah. But if you needed it to be adjustable for you, the legs do adjust. Yes. And, and I always tell people, don't do that once you have the machine on. Right. Wait, because <laughs> then you have to take the machine off yeah. and flip the frame up and, and try and adjust those yeah. legs. So decide first, and there's instructions in the manual, where does it go? Where's right. my... Where's the perfect yeah. spot for your shoulders? Mm -hmm. you, you don't know, want them too gonna high. Be comfortable. You don't want them yeah. um, like you're reaching straight armed or something <laughs> like that. So you just want that easy. Yeah. So, so it has the adjustable legs as well. Now you can also get casters for it, mm -hmm. which it can wheel around. So if you want to put something on the back, you're doing pantograph work with rear handles, all those kinds of things, mm -hmm. um, laser work, all the accessories, all the accessories. It's available. Yes. You don't have to, just because you've height adjusted, yeah. you don't have to try and wheel it around or, um, not use the casters exactly. just because it's higher. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, have we talked about everything? 
I th height adjustable. Yes. All the machines that can fit on it, including the 21. Yes. The 16 X Elite, all the fantastic things about this one. And again, my favorite size yeah, out of it's all just, of our machines. I love them all. It looks nice, right? It's like, so I pretty. I just think it looks, <laughs> it's that, that nice um, go between uh -huh. the, um, domestic machine that you mm -hmm. love so much to right. your mid arm so that it looks kind of like you're just quilting again with exactly. your sewing machine yeah. and everything like that. But okay, I think, I think I you think had a joke. I did have a joke, but yeah. I wanted to make sure Jane was back so she okay, could hear so it. Okay, so she could hear the and joke. And I wanted to make sure that we could talk about the, f they're going to be able to talk about all the fun pricing because I know yes. there's bundles and everything like that. <laughs> I'm here for it. Let's hear this oh, joke. Okay. And we will <laughs> talk about the pricing, but the joke first. We, this the is joke the first, first joke okay. of the day. Yes. So, um, how to you, how do you keep your quilting room clean? How do you keep your quilting room clean? How? Go. Good. You close the door. <laughs> <laughs> so true. That's exactly right. It's I mean, so why clean. Did I think of that. I love. It. How do you keep your quilting room clean? You just close the door. You just shut the door. Shut the door. It's, it's, just, door. it's oh perfect. Oh my gosh, yeah. Kathy, you guys are great. Thank you so much. What a great demo. Um, I have, actually have two questions for you. Yes. Um, okay. uh, this came through. Is there a foot pedal option? No, there's not a foot pedal option. And the reason for that is all the handles are right here. Yeah. All the, the start and stop, needle up and down, that's all in your handles or on your screen. So there's no need for a foot pedal. Otherwise, you're you're moving the foot pedal as you're going along and kicking oh. it and that's just a little bit even though it's a smaller and a smaller frame yeah. yeah okay good and so that was early in your segment that i just wrote down trisha wants to know can you set all four corners absolutely yeah. with yeah. that edge warning yep yes yeah with the that was early on the too. and then kathy tyson says hi from kalamazoo michigan <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> she's a big fan uh, she's here for you guys and wanted to hear a joke as well. So there you go. Oh, good. I'm All glad right. we had the joke. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jenna and Kathy. It's really great to have you on the show this morning, kicking things off in a big, bad, great, extraordinary way. So thank you very much. We'll see you a little bit later on today. I know you guys are back again. So thanks so much. And uh, I'm going to just wonder what i Bye, everybody. Bye. All right, Kathy and Jana, just, they're bringing the yucks and uh, bringing us some really great products from our friends at The Grace Company. So let's get to it and show you how you can get your hands on the Cunique 16-inch long arm quilting machine and that Evolution hoop frame. You'll love it. Again, the Quilt Fest pricing. And Blaine went over the pricing on these things. We see the Quilt Fest pricing is $7,198, but there is a call in special. So you know what to do. All of the representatives are standing by waiting for you. He's hired more and more people. So if you've got questions, if you're interested, if you're just ready to say yes, call 800-401-8151 or you just chat live to place your order and they'll tell you to call in special right there. But again, that is the 16-inch long arm quilting machine and the Evolution hoop frame. That was so much fun. What a great presentation from our friends and an even better joke. So um, when we're moving things along, I've actually got a joke too, if you guys like to hear it. Okay. I'll tell it to you. I want to oh. hear it. Okay. Um, <laughs> why was the sewing machine, why was the sewing machine so funny? So why was the sewing machine so funny? So funny. It because kept it coming up with new material. Stitches. What? Wow. It kept coming up with new material. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thank Good you. Good one. Thank okay. I, somebody to do it with I've got a joke too. So, uh, Jane, uh, uh, knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Needle. Needle who? Need a little more fabric, please. <laughs> <laughs> you just cracked yourself up. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're uh, still good. No We're here I'll all week. All right, so what did the needle say to the spool of thread? What did the needle say to the spool of thread? I think you got thread in your eye. <laughs> well, I think I got needle. I think I got thread, I in, I got thread yeah. in my eye. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll okay. Be, I'll be here all day. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay. So I think I got thread in my eye. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah. really funny. <laughs> um, so Jane, I have got, uh, we, we had a little problem. 
but we're going to get through it. Uh, Miriam Coffey was coming up next with Janome. Right. Uh, and uh, Miriam cannot make the show this Ooh. morning. Okay. Uh, nothing. Everybody be fine. Miriam is fine. She's okay. Uh, everything is good. But just the gremlins got up And uh, life, you know, happens. And Miriam couldn't be here. So we have a 30 minutes. Uh, and it ju this just happens. More so jokes, we, you mean? Yeah. We didn't really have time to uh, plan anything else. But what we're going to do, uh, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about some of the things we got going on at SMP. We're also going to show uh, people how they can navigate and get to the quilts to see the quilts and right. if they want to vote. Uh, so we're going to show some of that stuff. So first of all, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things coming up at SMP. And uh, we've got a lot of great events coming up. And you all see the calendar right there. I love uh, it. That Kennedy just put up. Um, so somebody just said, can Jane tap dance? <laughs> I, I think Jane can probably tap dance and probably do anything. So uh, every Thursday, just want to remind everybody, every Thursday we have SMP Live. And we encourage y'all to come and join us on that show. We give stuff, we give a sewing machine away every week. Uh, we are we start at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Central. Uh, we're on every Thursday. Uh, on April the 10th through the 12th, we're having our Serger Soiree. And we'll be putting that schedule up uh, and have a page for that where y'all can go check that out. But it's going to be three days of nothing but Sergers. And we're having uh, the best Serger educators in the country going to be on the show and we're basically going to highlight uh, just about every brand and every serger out there. Uh, so it's going to be a really cool show. And I think I told you all yesterday, the idea that I have uh, is kind of doing like a serger challenge, Jane, to where, you know, maybe try to invite uh, somebody like Joanne Banco, Melinda Stevenson, some people like that and say, hey, you are going to go head to head. We're going to I'm going to ship you. Uh, a box of goodies and things that they have, you know, like some, it could be some repurposed jeans or some uh, jackets or shirts or whatever. And they have to make a project out of it. What I send them with a serger and we'll kind of let them kind of check through them throughout the show uh, on their progress and what they're making. And I think that would be kind of a cool little thing. So uh, try to see if I can get that worked out for the April 10th through the 12th show. I then think that's May the a great 9th, idea. Oh, yeah. yeah I think it'd be really it. cool. I think everybody would love to see that. And because, um, you know, uh, these people that are really good for these sergers, I mean, you know, I had them tell me one time that they could only only own a serger and they could do every kind of sewing they needed. With yeah. It. You know that's what I mean? Great. So, and then on May the 9th, Jane, uh, we're having our, it's called Blaine's Birthday Bash. Mm -hmm. And instead of y'all giving me presents or things, I give you gifts. So we have a really cool show. We do a lot of, and Kendi and Kyle go out there and always get these surprise guests that come by, mm -hmm. stop by and say hi. So I have no idea who will be on the show. Uh, so it'll be fun. June uh, 10th through the 14th is Hoop Fest. This is all about embroidery. And so we want y'all to make sure you tune in. We're going to have a brand new premiere launch of a brand new embroidery machine that'll be on the show on June 10th and through the 14th at Hoop Fest. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, again, uh, $25,000 dream studio in Broadway studio. We're going to give away for the show. Uh, lots of great things. Uh, we're going to give away for the entire week. And then July 11th, uh, this is something that's really cool. We did it, uh, in 23 last year, we did it. It is the SMP's private auction. Uh, so if you've ever kind of went and seen an auction, this is what it is. And it's just like one of those Mecham car auctions. We roll the sewing machine out on uh, on the floor in front of me uh, on camera, and you get to see the actual machine you're bidding on. This is closed to only SMP customers who have purchased from us, and we you have to go through kind of a vetting process where we uh, send you uh, you have to sign up. We send you a code through an email. 
uh, to verify you are who you are. And then you have another code that you can get into this show. So very, very private. Very private. <laughs> so it's all exclusively just for SMP customers who have purchased. Ooh, that's so fun. What a great idea. You said you did it last year, right? Yes. And it was awesome. It was so much fun. And, and it, I even I even tried to be an auctioneer, Jane. I failed <laughs> miserably, but I did have a gavel I could slam down on the on the desk. <laughs> uh, I think I'd love that. And I would love to hear you try to be an auctioneer with that accent and you're like just it would so work. It would so work. <laughs> yeah, Kennedy was trying to get me to wear a cowboy hat last year. I I yes, yes. But last year I remember we started the show and we just kept rolling machines out and we were going for so long that we forgot to like give ourselves a break because we just kept doing machine after machine. We were so excited to keep doing all these machines. And then we were like, wait, <laughs> we gotta get some water. <laughs> <laughs> back. So, so yeah, it was fun. And then uh, September the 9th through the 13th, Jane, is SoFest. Oh, I love SoFest. And wait, before you move on to SoFest, really quick, I know some folks are just listening as they're working. So that date on the private auction is July 11th. Yes, yes one just day. It's a one day show, I'm not looking 11th. at the screen. <laughs> and then uh, September on SoFest, and that basically SoFest, what it entails is everything sewing. So you're going to have quilting, you're going to have embroidery, you're going to have serging, you're going to have it all, uh, you know, uh, direct garment printers, you're going to have everything possible to be on the show. Um, so that's what uh, September is. And that is National Sewing Month. So that's why we have SoFest. Um, October the 14th through the 18th is our National Trade-In Week. And we will have, you'll be able to trade machines in that week. Uh, you basically call in and tell them what kind of machine you have uh, that you're wanting to trade in. And we can give you a value of what that machine is worth. And then you can choose whether you want to send it to us and trade it in for a brand new machine of your choice. So we did that last year. It was extremely popular. Everybody loved it. And uh, so we're going to do that again. I love it. Save the date. Put all this in your calendar now. If you're watching the screen, take a screenshot of it. That's exactly Ooh, what yeah. I did. So I can put it in my calendar too. And then Monday, we don't have this up on the screen, but the Monday after Thanksgiving, we will have our Cyber Monday show. Uh, that is a very fast paced. Every 15 minutes, we have a different demonstration coming up. And so I think if I remember correctly, we had 33 demonstrations uh, for Cyber Monday in one day. Oh my gosh. Every 15 minutes, we're just yes. turning and burning. It's awesome. Yeah. It, it was just a crazy fast paced day. And uh, we really had uh, some really good. Now, now here's the thing we got to re remember about uh, Cyber Monday. I do have some really aggressive pricing, but the quantities I have are extremely limited, Jane. So if you're wanting a machine on Cyber Monday, you better pull the trigger as soon as you see it because what happens, some of them only have like five quantity because they are limiting how many I can buy at a certain deal. So uh, when customers see that, you cannot delay or it'll be sold out. Yeah, that's one because it is just a one day or mm -hmm. you got to go in knowing like this is today's the day I'm doing it. Yes, that's exactly right. It's it's and it's such a fast paced thing. Yeah. And then after Cyber Monday show, we will have our countdown to Christmas show, which everybody absolutely loves. And uh, you and I always dress up, uh, you know, for Christmas stuff. Yes. And Not you, Blaine. It's Santa Blaine. Santa, Santa Blaine. Blaine. Yeah. yeah, Santa Blaine shows up, and uh, we'll be doing that. And I don't know the dates right off the top of my head, but I think it's the 10th through the 14th or 11th through the 15th. It's one of those about that. Kyle can look real quick. 9th through the 13th. 9th through the 13th. Okay, so it's the 9th through the 13th of December. We'll be counting down to Christmas. So that kind of oh rounds out our crazy. whole uh, schedule for the year. And uh, we've already kind of got it booked up. And we're going to be throwing some little special things in. Uh, you know, in between some of these things that are going on, uh, but we'll let everybody know what's going on. So Jane, I want to kind of go kind of switch gears real quick and let's talk a little bit about quilt fest now. So I want everybody to, to really go and check out these quilts. Now, Kennedy is going to share our screen 
and we're going to go right to how you would go. So right here, this is our website, sewingmachinesplus.com. And the very banner at the very top is Quilt Fest. So if you click on that Quilt Fest, this is the page it comes to. So y'all can see the page right there. Up at the very top navigation, it says gallery. So if voting. 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 Oh, does it say voting now? It okay. Yeah. Okay. So now it says voting. So you click on the voting and there you go. There's it's there's the quilt entries wow. and it it tell, shows you each and every one of them. And so let's just scroll down a little bit, Kennedy. And we're going to pick a quilt out. So let's pick uh, the one on the far right, the Lakeshore Hostess Queen. All right. So y'all can see that you can read the description of the quilt. Gorgeous. Uh, they, we ask that they have to write a little description about their quilt and then scroll back up a little bit where you can go through the pictures. Now, this is where you can just click through the pictures, Jane. And what we did oh. is we asked everybody, we tell them the directions of what pictures to take that we can list up here. So you can see the stitch quality. You can see, you know, all the designs up close. You can I'll see the detail. front, the back. Yeah. We do the corner shot so you can see how they bound the corner. So we try to make it consistent, uh, you know, where everybody can kind of get a good general view of the quilt virtually. Because, again, uh, yeah. as you know, you know, pictures are not don't do it justice a lot of times. However, at least everybody's being judged exactly the same way on the, the, the picture. So we're trying to make it as consistent as we can. So, so that's how it is. So like right up there and you see the vote uh, tab underneath each quilt. Well, if you find the one that you want, all you have to do is click that right there and that will actually vote on that person. And how many times uh, can you vote uh, a day? And how many can you vote You can, can do two for? votes a day. So you can vote on the same quilt if you want to, or you can vote on two different quilts. They're awesome. I don't know how y'all are going to choose. Well, you know, it's a tough. <laughs> and, and I'm ha actually a backup judge for the celebrity judges. And if in just in, you know, worst case scenario, we get a tie. Because uh, there's four judges. Let's say there's a tie. Two of them vote one way and two of them vote the other. I'm the tiebreaker. <gasps> and we've done this. This is our fourth year. Three years prior, I've never had to vote because they. it's amazing how they always come together and pretty much vote on the same quilt. So, uh, but that's kind of how it works. We got a point system. And the and judges don't talk, right? Pardon me? The judges, do they talk to each other? No, they don't talk to each other yeah. about it at all. They they go out and do their own thing. And they, how we've got it set up, uh, for they have to pick their top three quilts. And their first place pick gets 10 points. Their second place gets eight points. And their third place gets six points. And then what we do is we take their all their, their, their top three, each judge, and we tally the votes up for the quilts they vote on. And that's how we determine the best of show. And like I said, if it came down to where there's a tie, I'm going to be the tiebreaker because I've actually voted on three, my top three quilts. I mean, I'm looking at these quilts and the amount of work. And we all know this. Anything that is handmade, especially when you're making a quilt, I would multiply all of the work put into one of these quilts and, and multiply it by 130 plus. I mean, those hours and hours and hours of just a pure labor of love. It, they are stunning. Oh, it's, it's, it's to me, I, the, some of the detail work on these quilts. Um, I, it's just amazing to me how, uh, it, you know, how much time and effort they put into it. But the other thing you've got to think about is the creativity, how yeah. some of these people come up with yes. the, the things they come up with is pretty incredible. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of, that type of stuff really impresses me. Uh, I think more than the actual time they spent is just the creativity of coming up with the, the concept. I mean, I'm just in awe. There was one sort of at the top Kennedy and it caught my eye. It was the, called the dresses and it was little squares of different dresses, I think. Yeah. I like to see that one. Well, you know, and then some of these, Look at you, how sweet that is, you know, you're looking at too, Jane, um, 
when you look at the detail on them, oh. like if we look at that now, look at the detail shot of the actual square uh, where it shows, there you go, of the dress. Look at that. Now look at the detail yeah, of all the, the different col you know, colors yeah. of fabric and pieces of fabric it took to make that. Um, so again, you know, it's that somebody having that creativity coming up with the concept and then the detail work and the time it took to create what, what we're looking at. It's just, uh, every one of these people have talent and, uh, you know, and it's pretty impressive and it's inspiring. Now, and here's the thing, you know, I learned a long time ago, you know, I'd, I'd see this, go to these quilt shows and see all this stuff. And I was just like, I could see why people would be intimidated totally. and not even want to try. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I've seen some of the people at our SMP customers, the SMP nation out there, bought quilt kits from us and entered them in the and made a quilt and entered it in this contest and now they are quilters and they're coming up with these same type of quilts now and so i just tell people if you're interested and you you don't think you can do it just try it start somewhere i mean you know i i from experience i did a a table runner uh out of one of our quilts and uh you know which i kind of you know, cheated a little bit. I guess you could say I put it on a, a uh, long arm quilting machine and used pro stitcher to do all the, the top quilting uh, on it. Uh, you know, just let the robotic do the right, quilting. Right, because you don't have that at your fingertips, do you? Yeah, well, I didn't have time to sit and do a free motion type thing. Yeah. And I don't have the talent to do free motion. But I did take the kit, followed the directions. I did all the sewing. I did everything on it. And then put it on the robotic and let it do, you know, put a program in. I picked my own pattern and just let it go and do the, the quilting. Awesome. And, it, and it actually turned out really good. Actually, Kyle and Lynn, our resident quilting expert, um, we had two, two table runners. One was done by a professional quilter in mine. And they went and looked at the stitch quality. And they and each one of us basically could use which one we, the, the inside, the, the bottom, mm -hmm. we could pick our own fabric and Kyle and Lynn both picked mine and thought it was the best looking <laughs> one of the two. And they didn't have any idea who did whose. Wow. And that was a real thing. And we actually filmed it and I filmed the whole process of me doing it. Yeah. So that just shows you uh, that anybody can do this. You just have to start. Cause I have no talent at all to do this. I just followed the directions <laughs> And just kind of did what I'd seen other people do. And uh, so, and, you know, to get to these levels, yeah, it's going to take yeah. a lot of practice. But anybody out there that sews, you already have to have some sort of creativity or you wouldn't be in this hobby. And uh, so I think anybody can do it. They just have to start somewhere and just do it. Well, and I think you're right. It's about, you know, having that determination. You're going to start again. I'm not a quilter. Uh, my mom was a, a sewist. Uh, she could make beautiful garments. And then as you know, later on in life, when she retired, she just started making quilts because she didn't have to make clothes to go to work anymore. Um, and she then kind of just fell into it and she followed the directions. And I think like, you know, it's about starting somewhere, starting with the kit, getting the hang of it, understanding it, asking the questions, making mistakes. And then you continue on just like anything when we are doing our sewing or any project, it's sort of like, I'm going to try this. I'm going to learn from it. And the next time it gets better. The other thing I can say about looking at those quilts, and I, I think about the, the amount of talent and I think about the amount, amount of time that goes into every single one of them and how special they are. I love the ideas behind it. Like there's an inspiration as to why that pattern became what it is and what the person made. And that to me, because I'm a storyteller, obviously, because I like to tell stories about people <laughs> and working in the media. I want to know about you. So there's always that inspiration. There's the backstory. And to me, I could do a whole show on quilts and the person behind the quilts. Yes, I, I, I totally agree. You know, and it's, uh, you know, every year we've, when we've done this, this is going to be our fourth year, you know, we started out doing this and, and we've had, you know, just think about it. this year, we had a hundred and over 130 entries and, and it's like every year it's been that way. We've had over a hundred quilts every year. And the very first year we did this, Jane, Kyle was, it, it was over 15,000 votes, wasn't it? For the first one, first, yeah, the first year we had over 15,000 votes, uh, on the quilts. And, 
it was a huge, you know, a show right out of the bat. Everybody loved the Quilt Fest. And, uh, you know, we had Jenny Dillon came on. We had Eleanor Burns came on. Yeah. And, you know, those are icons in the quilting world. And, uh, you know, this just like this year, our judges, I mean, uh, these all four ladies are icons in the quilting world. And they're known worldwide. Yeah. I mean, and uh, so because, uh, you know, and they started out, you know, we're going to find out Friday about their quilting journey. But they all started, you know, just like everybody out there. They, they had to start somewhere. And now look at the creativity and how good they are at doing what they do. I love it. I, and I've seen, I'm really into sustainability and sustainable fashion. And I've seen quilters that take old rock and roll t-shirts or old printed shirts and they turn that material into a quilt. And, and, and sometimes those old logos will turn into like, you know, a big bird or, or something or a cross or a skull. And I just think that is so creative uh, and especially in, in, and also sustainable again, back to the artistic, um, you know, creativity aspects that a person has or talents that a person has. Can I tell you a story uh, about how quilts in, you know, the quilts are just a, a warm hug, right? So quilts are just something <laughs> they really are because of the, because of what goes into a quilt. And I know we can hang them and look at them. A lot of quilters say, no, use it, use the quilt. I was doing some work. Uh, several years ago for a company called Fairfield Processing Fairfield World. They make the batting that goes inside the, inside the quilt. They do a, a um, they have a something called We Make for Good. So it's people that share their time and talents and they make something to give to others. It doesn't have to be a quilt. It could be anything, lots of pillows. But anyway, they sent me out across the country and I did all of these stories of inspiration about people who make things and give them to those in need. One of the ones I did, I visited a quilt guild in Yonkers, New York, and she had a long arm right there in her dining room. All the ladies came over and they were working on these quilts and they had stacks of quilts that they made. Our next place that we went to was a domestic violence shelter in Harlem. It was a secret entrance. I mean, it was really like one person go in at a time because they didn't want anyone to know where we were going. And we got permission to film and we were visiting the rooms. And we met this woman and she was telling her story about being saved and being being felt like she was being hugged and she had her own apartment and she had her own, um, finally had her own, you know, pots and pans and it was hers. And she said, I got this quilt and it was mine. It was mine. No one's going to take it away from me. And this quilt was mine and somebody made it for me and it changed my life. I am telling you what I'm, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting teared up just thinking about her and the difference that these people made in this woman's life. They got together because it's a it's a passion that they share. Uh, it's a creativity that they do together. But then they, in turn, really made a difference in someone else's life. And they continue to give these quilts to that domestic violence shelter. Isn't that a great story? It is. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, Jane, we're talking all about being creative, you know, creative and, and all that. But I, I get, you know, we're ready to, to move on to our next, uh, you know, session. And wow. speaking of creativity, this next presenter uh, it kind of is, is basically encompasses everything that we're talking about right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move forward to our next one. And okay. I'm going to see you back here in about 30 minutes. Okay. All right. So guys up next, we, you have a treat. We have Nicholas Turkan from Handy Quilter. He's going to be talking about, about the Mara 20. And I don't know if y'all remember, uh, Nick from last year, but Nicholas is a multi-talented and very creative individual. His journey into quilting began in 2012 with one quilt that quickly turned into several, which made him realize that he needed a better way to finish these quilt tops than a small domestic size machine. In addition to long arm quilting for customers, he has started to teach free motion quilting workshops where students can learn the confidence and skills required to further their own quilting abilities and he, so, you know, we had him here last year, man, he just, everybody loved Nick coming on. So y'all welcome Nicholas Turkan to the show again. Hey, Nicholas, I think you're muted. Yeah, there we go. There good morning. Go. <laughs> How are you, man? I'm doing very good. And uh, right. what a beautiful, touching story uh, Jane just told. Oh, I know. And I always think about that. Quilts provide comfort, love, and support. And you never know how impactful 
that love and care and support goes many, many years after a quilt is made to somebody who really feels it. So what a touching, what a, what a touching story. Well, you know, I, I've been involved in this organization called uh, Quilts for Kids. And basically it's terminally ill kids that are in the hospital. And this group of quilters, uh, they basically do, you know, volunteer their time to make quilts. And then you take them to the hospitals and give them to the kids in the hospital. And I did that with that organization. And, and basically we let, let the, the quilters use our classroom and store to come in and do quilts. And I tell you what, it's just amazing what a quilt will do, you know, and I just one in, in particular, I remember I was a, a young, young boy. He was seven years old, uh, terminally ill. And we took him a quilt that they had made a, basically a race car theme and it had race cars and stuff on it. And he just lit up. It was amazing the impact it made on him. So, you know, you see that kind of stuff, it just tears you up. And, but that just shows you something that, you know, uh, that what a quilt can do for people. And, and, you know, they, and they, you know, basically let them keep them on the beds in the hospital. You know, that was yeah. kind of their, their own unique thing they could use. And, and, uh, so that it was a pretty cool thing to do. So, you know, quilts do a lot for people, but you know what, you're here today to do a lot for uh, the SMP yeah. nation and, uh, show your talents and, uh, uh, this amazing Amara. So I'm gonna let you get going and, uh, <laughs> we'll come back in about 30 minutes and, uh, we'll tell everybody how they can get theirs. Okay. Excellent. Sounds great. Well, again, good morning, SMP Nation. Uh, I'm broadcasting live from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And right behind me, I have my Amara 20. And on the theme of getting quilts done quickly, what better than having a long arm quilting machine that you can quickly and easily quilt all these wonderful quilts that we have ideas for. I know when I first got my machine, I had a stack of quilt tops in plastic bins waiting to be quilted. Now, little secret, uh, I don't have a stand for my laptop for my camera. It is literally stacked on three plastic bins that have quilt tops still in them because in my business, I do a lot of quilting. I don't do a lot of quilting for myself anymore because I just can't seem to find the time. But enough about that. Let's get talking about the machine. So. I have, currently I actually have three long arms in my studio. So you'll be seeing me later on today speaking about Pro Stitcher Premium. And tomorrow I'll be back speaking about the Moxie XL. And then tomorrow afternoon about the Pro Stitcher Lite for some of the smaller machines. But today we're starting with the Amara 20. So the Amara class is a, a family of machines that Handy Quilter sells. So we have an Amara ST, which is a stationary machine. This is the Amar 20, which means we have 20 inches of space down here from the needle to the back of the harp area here. That means that we can quilt, a, you know, about 17 inches at a time on this machine before we need to advance the quilt. Advancing the quilt is really easy since we have it mounted on a frame. So this machine is mounted on a Studio 2 frame. There's been some new improvements and they now come with a Studio 3 frame. Now the Studio 3 frame has the same type of system where we have a uh, take up roller, uh, idle bar roller that keeps our quilt nice and level to quilt along, and then a dual load quilting system. So we have a standard load where our uh, backing fabric is on the lower layer on the lower roller, and then our quilt top is rolled along the top roller. And this is sort of the, the way they were initially built because our quilt is built in layers, backing, batting, and then quilt top. And that's the rollers reflected that. Now they've invented a new system with the dual load where the rollers kind of pop down and actually our backing roller is higher than our quilt top roller. Now what this does is right here, you can see, actually I'll go here, the quilt goes right over our backing bar down here to the top bar. I'm just doing a little sample so I don't have it attached there. I just have it basted in place. But this allows you to have clear access to the entire quilt top while you're quilting. So if you are doing something like ruler work and you have a big ruler that's coming close to the edge, the ruler can hang over the edge. That's fine. You're not going to bump into any of the rollers that are there. So this is great that you have the option to change with each and every quilt 
do I want to load it in standard load or clear view mode? And that way you can just pop back and forth and do what works best for that quilt. If you're not doing ruler work, you don't have to worry about that. You can load it in standard and just go from there. And I'm just going to switch this over to the comments so I can see any comments that come by. I'm by myself. I don't have anybody uh, to read out any questions to me. So I'll try and keep an eye on, on that. But if I miss anything, maybe Jane can pop in or somebody in, can pop in and uh, let me know that there's a question. Uh, so to get started, um, I already said we have, it's a 20 inch machine. Our handlebars are fully adjustable on here. So you can adjust, there's two little levers here. So you can put the handlebars as high or as low, close to the needle to make it ergonomic for you. When you're quilting, you want to always be doing things in the most ergonomic way so you don't injure yourself. I feel like that is one of the biggest comments people have about quilting on a domestic sized quilting machine. It hurts my shoulders. How do I get the quilt into the throat space in there? So a feature like that allows you to be at the machine and work in whatever is most comfortable with you. So if you have any issues with arthritis or anything else, you can uh, you know, adjust it to what's gonna work for your body. And I think that's very important with quilting. And yeah, I have a little uh, small rig camera here set up uh, for my needle camera, uh, which we'll, we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, so those are the adjustable handlebars. On our screen here, we also have fully adjustable lighting. So you can change the little needle light and then the full adjustable back lighting here. Now, I have to have them changed a little more specifically for camera because otherwise you won't be able to see anything that I'm doing. So there you go. That is our my little needle camera here. So again, that is perfect for that. So right now I have the uh, closed toe foot on the machine. When you purchase the machine, purchase this machine, it's going to come with two feet included, the closed toe and the open toe. The closed toe is a full circle and the open toe is almost like a little horseshoe shape. And that allows you to see what you're doing. And I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is to change this foot. So we're just going to undo that screw. It doesn't have to come out all the way, just enough to pop that foot down. And this is our hopping foot. It does lift up and down. So once you get that foot off, you can come back and sort of slide it under and lift it up to straighten it in place and tighten it up. Now I have replaced this with the sure foot. Now this is for ruler quilting. What this is, and I hope you can see that here, the profile of this little ring is much taller on the sure foot. And that means that when you are putting your ruler against it, there's more surface area for the ruler and the foot to connect to. So that allows you much easier to have a smoother connection between the two. So I'm going to set these off to the side and I'm going to pull this over and show you a cute little design. Now, I also have my ruler base on my machine here. So that gives you a full extension to support the ruler, where it's not going to wobble out of place. So I'm gonna get my thread so it's not wrapped around the needle. So I'm going to uh, pull up my bobbin thread. To do that, I'm going to do a needle down, needle up, pull my sh machine to the side, and there's my bobbin thread. Easy as that. Now, right now I'm going to do a tie-off stitch. So with the Amara 20, we have two programmable handlebar buttons. On the left is a star, on the right is a diamond. You can change those to be anything you want, uh, well, not anything, but within reason, uh, to do a tie-off stitch, to do your start and stop. Um, there's a few other features. And those buttons, if you have a Pro Stitcher added, 
will actually change with depending on what screen you're on. So right here, I just did my nice little tie off stitch. And I'm going to do a little, just a little clamshell design here. Now, when we're doing ruler work, it's very important to sort of spread your hand and support the ruler in as many places as possible. With a smaller ruler, it's easier to do so. With long uh, straight edge rulers, it's sometimes harder to do that. So it's okay to quilt halfway across the ruler, stop with the needle down, reposition your hands, and then continue to stitch. So I'm just going to turn my mach machine on. Stitch, stop, needle down, turn it back on. Now I'm just going to travel up. And then using the little reference line for a straight edge and the horizontal line to match the top, I'm now going to come back and do a second row. And now just like the original row, I'm going to do a full clamshell. And how cute and simple was that? Just to do a few little rows of clamshells. Now, this is the multi clamshell ruler. So we have different sizes of arcs that are there. Another design that we can do that's pretty cute is actually repeating a spiral. So I'm going to start with the largest four inch. And now I'm going to move to the next size, which is the three inch. And I'm going to stitch on this bottom side. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes you need to reposition your hand behind the machine. And again, you could do this with your right hand or your left hand, depending on which hand you are. And this is where if you were more comfortable to hold your ruler with your right hand, if you program the start and stop button on the left handlebar, your left hand will be able to control the machine nicely while your right hand is controlling the ruler. And again, that's where these programmable handlebar buttons really come in handy. Or if you become ambidextrous, you just learn that sometimes you have to do things with your less dominant hand to build up those strengths. Stop. Now we're back to the next smaller size. I'm going to overstitch. And now I'm going to start working my way out, but in a slightly larger size. And this will complete my spiral. And you always want to make sure that you have a nice little perimeter of space between your fingers and the edge of the ruler, just as a little safety. Um, Right here, the little uh, knob that tightens the, the needle. If your finger is too close here and that comes down, it can kind of crush your finger underneath it. Um, same thing on the back side here. You want to leave room that you can freely have the uh, little post of the foot come here without actually bumping into your finger, causing you to not have a nice, smooth, easy motion. I'll do a tie off and to finish my stitching. I'm going to pull my machine away, come back to my start point, down and up, 
and pull up my thread. And if I can have my camera switch back, we'll see, see how quickly my SMP tech people are. Oh, maybe they're not listening. Um, but I was just going to point out there is a magnetic collar on the machine where I have my little snips handy. So there is our cute little spiral that was done with the same clamshell ruler. So again, when it comes to ruler work, you can really get creative with how you use the rulers using only parts of them, going halfway, changing direction, doing things around because I feel like those are very, very different designs. So I wanna show how easy it is to do some free motion quilting on here. So I have some uh, full line stencil uh, stencils here. Um, and same thing, can we get the camera switched back to my other camera? I think this will show better on the, the larger camera. Excellent, there we go. Uh, so this is the full line stencil. Um, they are great. Essentially, compared to when you had the older stencils, uh, they'd be like a little plastic acrylic that would have a cutout on them. The cutouts had to be bridged together, otherwise the stencil would fall apart. So these are nice because it is like a very fine mesh that they then cover with this sort of greeny latex. Now, the uh, pounce powder doesn't go through the latex, but it only goes through the mesh. So that way you're able to have all of your lines showing without having to worry about that. I see somebody asking there how I got so comfortable with ruler quilting. Uh, it takes time and practice. You know, I've been quilting for a little over, uh, I think it's a little over 12 years now. And I have had a long arm for eight years now. So putting in some time and effort. My first machine is just gone over 116 million stitches. And that's just the one machine I have. So when you put in that amount of time, you will definitely get comfortable with things like that. So I have a Mandela stencil here, and I'm just gonna angle that down. So to use of this, this is the pounce powder. You know, give it a good couple taps to get the powder in there. And all you have to do is glide that over your stencil. And again, you might not be able to see it on there, but uh, a perfectly marked out stencil. There we go. I think you can see it better in the shadow of the machine. So that is now marked and ready to go for some free motion quilting. So again, if you are nervous, if you've just gotten a machine and you don't know where to start, this is a great way to start. Give yourself some guidelines. The chalk will wash away or you can brush it away, but this will give you just a little bit of a guide. If you go over the lines, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see them. Uh, this is a great way just to encourage yourself to start. So again, we can now switch back to the needle camera. Perfect. Thank you. And I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread there. Actually, I'm going to start. No, I will start in the middle. As you can see, I very carefully planned out what I was going to do. Uh, but I'm basically going to start working my way around and adding little uh, designs just into each of the shapes that are there. So because this is tapering to a very small point, I'm going to make this like the center of a flower and have little, pe little petals that come right to the middle. And add a little
and then we can come back and just choose a new design. You know, sometimes I feel like people get really caught up with, oh my gosh, it has to be perfect. It has to be, you know, everything else and more. And sometimes it doesn't have to be. Quilting should be fun. Quilting should be easy. And if you're trying to do a design that's beyond your skill level, of course you're going to be struggling with it because you're not there yet. You have to put in your time, you have to do the basics, and you have to build your designs as you go. So start simple and work your way up. Uh, what can we do in the next one? I really like those little um, curls. So we'll do some alternating curls. And I'm just trying to make sure that I have a curl land in each one of those spaces for consistency. And again, here I'll come over. As you can see, the design is starting to build up. And these are just simple little designs. You can do just a little back and forth wiggle. Again, if we wanted to come back, we can grab our ruler and we can do nice little arcs. And for this last one, I'm going to switch hands because it's a little too far over. And again, if we want, we can go back and just echo right beside that. And I think what I'm going to do here is add a little shape that's going to echo what we had previously done. I think I uh, might have been, if you're listening to yesterday's broadcast, uh, just like Christina, you know, once I get into the zone with quilting, I think I forget about talking sometimes. <laughs> so, excellent. So we can probably switch back to the big camera now. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of these comments while they're while well, I'm waiting for the camera to switch. Yeah, definitely simple variations. You know, there's definitely lots of different rulers that you could start with. But yeah, 
definitely have some fun just going with it. Excellent. So if we can get the, the big camera back. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, I do think I'm so, so talented. But again, I promise you for anyone that says that I'm making it look too easy, it is one of those things. Practice, practice, practice. There is no substitute for practice. And again, if you buy one of these machines, you will find you will not want to not be at your machine. You will find ways to go, get out of work, get out of, mm, maybe I don't want to go out. I think I'd rather stay in and spend the weekend doing some uh, fun quilting. And again, this is a great way to get through all of those different quilt tops that you've made through the years that are sitting and just waiting for quilting when you think, I just can't manage this on a small machine and I don't want to pay to have somebody else do it. I want to tackle it myself. And again, if you start with some simple, easy designs, use the tools that are going to help you to achieve those designs and then build up your talent. So again, I know all week we've been talking about some of the different accessories for the machines with some of the different broadcasts, but uh, I have some of the different feet here. So uh, I showed you this was the, the sure foot and that is for doing ruler work. Now there is the the glide foot and I have this is a glide foot two. We actually now have the glide foot three. This is my new favorite foot for all the machines and that will fit all of the, the handy filter family of machines. It is a plastic bowl shaped foot and it will glide over any bumps in your quilt. If you have thick fabric, thick seams uh, at the edge of your quilt, if you're doing an edge to edge and you're going over uh, where the side is, you get to, um, you know, the, the foot will glide right over it. I'm giggling. Somebody just said as a bonus, do we, get to, do we get him for a month with the purchase? And that would be nice, but I don't know who's paying the bill for that. So um, then we have our micro quilting foot. Now this foot almost has, it has nothing that surrounds the needle. It just comes right up, right there. The tip of it comes close to the needle. Now, if you are doing any very dense, tight, micro stippling, uh, really packing down a backing, uh, background, you want to be able to see where you're going, what you're doing. This is the foot for that. And really, the reason, and I've had this question come up before, well, why do I even need the foot if this basically has nothing there? You need this to prevent the fabric from being pulled up when the needle is coming up, forming a stitch, and as you're moving over. And that's what the bottom of this does. It will prevent the quilt from actually rising up as the needle is coming up. So we also have the square feet. Now, if you are doing uh, ruler work with straight edges and you have these square feet on, you're gonna have two flat edges riding against each other. So you will have very nice uh, perpendicular lines. And if you wanted to add binding onto your quilt on the long arm before you pull it off, you could do it with this and you would have a beautiful quarter inch seam allowance or there's also a, a half inch marking which might not be great for binding but if you wanted to do some piecing on the long arm you can do some quilt as you go uh, piecing on the long arm all you'd have to do is load your backing fabric load your batting and as you start uh, piecing your quilt you could use this and again, if you were doing something you want to use a half inch seam allowance, you got it in there. Um, we also have the echo feet and there's a three eighths of an inch, half inch and three quarter of an inch echo. Now, the beauty of these things, if you are learning to free motion quilt and you are struggling with your spacing inconsistency, like just say you're doing a stipple and you wanted your spacing to be very consistent with the uh, closed toe foot that comes with the machine, that'll give you a quarter inch spacing from the needle to the edge. So that's very small for a stipple. If you swap that out for this three quarter inch echo foot, the edge of the foot will be three quarters of an inch away from the needle. And as you are stippling, you'll always be able to tell, okay, that's three quarters of an inch away from the edge of where I just stitched. That's gonna be very consistent and nice. So those are the echo feet. And I know yesterday, uh, or sorry, I should say on Tuesday, 
people were so excited to see Shauna do some couching on her shamrock quilt. And I finally got to see it in the afternoon. And those were done with the echo feet. And again, I have a, an older set here where the inserts are color coded. I think the new, the new models are just clear plastic, but uh, they are three different sizes for different sizes of yarn or fibers that you would want to be couching onto your, um, onto your quilt or table runner or quilted coat or jacket or anything. Um, I'm actually gonna grab, normally in my studio, I'm wearing this quilted coat because it is chilly and cold. And I thought I was so nervous. I didn't want to sweat through my dress shirt, but you know, this was quilted out of one piece or this was made out of one piece of quilted fabric that I did up. And I'd actually quilted this with Pro Stitcher doing just a big overall leafy design on there. And again, I don't know if you'll be able to see that well on camera, but uh, you know, you can do more than just quilts. You can do bags on the long arm. You can do coats, jackets. You can quilt any type of material and then cut it up and use it for any type of project you want. So really, this is a tool. And just like every other tool, the more you use it, the more imagination you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So you got to start somewhere. And I would suggest, you know, start here. <laughs> get the machine, learn the basics, and then your imagination can soar and you can do just about anything you can imagine. <laughs> Some, they want the jacket, somebody wants it. Well, sorry, you're gonna have to come to Vancouver and get it. So, excellent. Well, I think my time is up here. That was half an hour there. So I don't know if Blaine is ready to take it back and tell everyone all the, the deals that they're gonna get. Uh, for the MR20 during SMP Live here. I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what the, the pricing was. I listened to it the other day, but I, I got numbers in my head and it's still, it's early, you know, so I'm only on my second cup of coffee. Uh-oh. Well, we yeah. can't have that. So, hey, great job, Nicholas. Uh, as usual, uh, you make it look so easy and and uh, so great to have you on the show. And I know we're going to see you uh, back. Is it this afternoon or tomorrow? I'll be back this afternoon with Pro Stitcher Premium. That's right, this afternoon. So, all right, well, great Excellent. job. And I'm going to tell everybody how they can get this. And we'll see you this afternoon. Excellent. Thank you so much. And we'll see you this afternoon. Okay, Nicholas, thank you. All right, everyone, that was the Amaro 20-inch long arm. Now, we have a price on this of $10,995, and that's going to include the long arm you see on the screen plus the little foot frame, which is a five-foot frame. Now, if you do want to get a 10 or 12-foot frame, we're gonna there, it's going to be the exact same price, the 10 or 12-foot, but it's about a $2,000 upgrade to get that, or a little less than $2,000, actually, uh, but it's going to be under $13,000 to get the 20-inch Amara with a... Uh, 10 or 12 foot frame. And that's about a $2,000 discount off the normal price. So we've got a great price on this right now. We do offer some financing available and we're going to ship this nationwide absolutely free. So great package to gather for you today, but give us a call. It's actually a call in special so they can kind of work with you on which frame combination you want and all those different things. And then they can talk to you about some of the special financing available. But guys, this is, you know, I tell everybody uh, about this Amaro, it is bulletproof. It is just a giant straight stitch sewing machine and there is little that can go wrong with this thing. It is a rock star and it has been for a long, long time. We absolutely love this thing. Again, you're getting that 20 inch throat space, seven inch color touchscreen uh, uh, monitor there for it. 2,500 stitches per minute, which is extremely fast. And again, it has all the, the special things, you know, the uh, bobbin uh, estimator, all those different things built right in. And it's extremely intuitive on that screen to, to, for all the functions. So if you are interested in getting yourself uh, a handy quilter, a Mara 20 inch, give us a call right now at 800-401-8151. All right, so let's bring Jane back in. Hey, Blaine. 
Hey, Jane. So again, another great uh, demonstration. He's and so we love good. having Nicholas on the show. You know, he's Nicholas, up in Canada. <laughs> he is good. He's oh my smooth. Gosh. He's calm. And by the way, I want that jacket too. So everyone was like, oh, that was hello. a cool jacket, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's so fun. All right. So we're got we we're gonna continue on the show. I'm gonna let you take it over and I'll I'll see you back here in a little while. Okay, sounds great. Thanks, Blaine. Hi, everybody. Let's keep this going on day four of Quilt Fest. Happy to be here with you. Uh, and I am happy to welcome back our guest again today from RNK Distributors. She's been here with us all week, and I know you love her. Nicole Gilbert. She has really done a lot of work over the last 10 years. She's led quilt alongs and taught classes and demonstrated sewing machines. And she, of course, has quilted an insane amount of quilts. Her first love is sharing quilting with new sewers. And by the way, she says there's nothing better than that aha moment. I wonder what the aha moment will be today. Yesterday, our aha moment was thread and colored thread. What's it going to be today, Nicole? Oh my gosh, Jane. I think that today's aha moment is going to be about not reversing our applique templates. Okay, what? Because yes, you're going to do tips and tricks with applique, right? Yes, I okay. am. And it is going to take the fear out of applique for all of you out there. This is going to be the moment where you're like, okay, I'm tackling it. I'm doing it. I'm so excited. I love it. Okay, good. Take the fear away. Give us that aha moment and do what you do best, Nicole. And that is tell us what you got. Yes. Thank you so much, Jane. I am so excited to be here with all of you guys today. I have had an absolute blast this week getting to spend each and every afternoon with all of you out there. I do have to say I love coming in after the Handy Quilter peeps. Um, his jacket was so on point today. I'm so jealous. I was looking down at like my lame mustard sweater and I was like, oh, I wish. But yes, before I go too far down that rabbit hole, today we are talking about applique tips and tricks and specifically how we can get the right tools to take the fear out of applique for us, okay? Now, sometimes you are going to see me face camera like this, and then sometimes you're just going to be seeing my work desk. So if you see that, that's what's going on. You'll still hear my voice being way too excited about all of this, but that's who I am. And I hope that each and every one of you is just as excited about all the applique goodness as I am. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So you see, I told you, we're going to see work desks. We're going to see all the things. So let's talk about applique. I feel like we all want to be doing gorgeous, big, fun, beautiful applique pieces. If not similar to this, just with this level of complexity, lots of pieces, lots of different colors, showing stitches, disappearing stitches, all the things. Okay. Right. This is where we want to go. But we look at these templates and we're like, how do I get this drawing on this plain piece of paper to turn into something like this? Don't worry, folks. I've got you covered. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is like when you have motifs and they're supposed to be very specific shapes, like let's say... I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. Let's talk about our friend John Deere here. Okay. So he's like, how I called him John Deere. This is, this is one of those motifs where you're like, okay, how do I get this onto my project? And I don't have to do all of this reversing and math and confusion. My favorite tip for you guys is instead of trying to take your image from the pattern or the magazine or wherever you found your template instead of taking it straight from there onto the fabric and knowing that you're going to have to reverse it in order to then flip it back over to get it right on your on your finished project let's start with some quilter select fabric prep okay that's what we're using here 
Quilter Select Fabric Prep. Do you see this beautiful, stretchy, gauzy material that I'm playing with right now? It is super soft, super light. Uh, it's movable. But what I love about this stuff is, so this side right here is super smooth. But this other side, it's got a very light texture to it. It's really hard to show on, on camera, but it's this like scratchy bumpiness. This scratchy bumpiness is actually fusible, okay? So what I do, and I wanna pull this out so you can see, I'm gonna use it right over this Quilter Select logo right here on my cutting mat so you can see just how sheer this stuff is. Let's move the camera over a little for you. Do you see how sheer this is? Yes. So you're going to take your, your Quilter Select Fabric Prep. That's what this material is called. Quilter Select Fabric Prep. You're going to spread it out over your template, smooth side up, and you're going to trace your template. Okay? You're going to trace your template right on here. And remember, I said smooth side up. Okay? This is now going to become the foundation for your applique piece work. And what's so important about using a quality product like Quilter Select Fabric Prep is do you see how light it is? Do you see how airy it is? Do you see how it stretches and it moves and it's got all of this uh, beautiful body to it? What is great is that it is not going to add any weight to the hand of your fabric. Okay, your fabric is still going to move exactly the same way as it did before you use this project, this product, which is really, really important. So we're going to take our fabric prep, okay, and we're going to draw our template on it. You're going to end up with a piece like this, okay? So one side is super smooth, and this is the side that we've drawn on, okay? This is the side that has our boy John Deere on it, right? The other side has that wonderful fusible stuff, okay? Then we are going to take our fabric and we are going to apply Quilter Select Apple Web Plus. Quilter Select Apple Web Plus. And let's see if I can get, here we go. Quilter Select, so this is what the tubes look like. This is a fusible web. Okay. It's paper backed. It's super light, super sheer. I'm going to bring in a piece of fabric. Okay. This has, and you can see the webbing around the back of it. This has fusible web on it. Do you see how this fabric is still moving? It's still grooving. You can still kind of scrunch it and bunch it. It's got all that same qualities of the fabric with this fusible web on the back. What is wonderful about that fusible web? Here's the deal. It is gonna turn any of your fabrics into a sticker, basically. So like, see, this is the little heart that I cut out of here. It's gonna turn your fabric basically into a fusible sticker. It cannot be overheated, okay? So that's one of the things that has always driven me nuts with some of the fusible webs that are out in the market right now is that you heat it up, you press it on, and then you're like, mm, this piece is a little loose or that piece is a little loose. Let me heat it up again. And instead of getting a better connection, you're getting a worse connection. And that is because our those fusible webs lose it, their uh, fusible nature. The, it breaks down in the heating process. Like it's got a great heat, great heat, great heat, great bond. And then as soon as the heat goes over that edge, the bond breaks down. That does not happen with Apple Web Plus. I want you to see this piece. All of these individual pieces have Apple Web Plus on the back. This was fused many moons ago. I can scrunch it, I can bunch it, nothing's lifting on me, nothing is coming off. It's just, I mean, the nature of this stuff is just fan 
fantastic. Okay. Again, we are not adding any weight or hand to our product. So what do we do now? Our fabric has Apple Web Plus on the back, right? We have drawn our template on our fabric prep, okay? Then what we do is we actually fuse the fabric to the template, okay? And you end up with a guy like this. And then you can cut anything out of it. You can cut your template out. I happen to kind of show that the template was on here, but I actually cut out this little heart because nobody wants to wait for me to cut out that whole deer out. But that's what you do. And now this piece, okay, didn't need to be reversed, is totally as soft as it was when the fabric came off my, my shelf. It's got the fusible of the fabric prep on the back. And now I can go ahead and put it on any piece that I want. Okay, guys, it's that simple. Now you've got all of these little pieces. What are you going to do with them? We're going to put them on our projects, right? We want to make this. All of this is to turn into this, correct? That's what we're doing. We're turning this into this great mo mosaic. So how do we do that? I want you to see these guys. This is another applique block that I'm working on. I have not stitched this down yet, okay? I want to show you the properties of that fabric prep and that Apple Web Plus with this piece because each of these pieces, this is one, two, three petals. We've got the center, another three petals. We've got the stems, we've got the vase and so on and so forth. I put each of these pieces down and ironed it, fused it into place following the instructions on my Fabric Prep and, Fa and Apple Web Plus, okay? So it got, this particular floral got fused one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Seven times heat was applied to just this section alone. Nothing's coming off. Nothing has changed in the movement. You can see there's nothing on this foundation fabric. It's not moving any differently than the Apple Web piece, the applique piece itself. Okay. And that's because the products, the fabric and the Apple Web Plus has not changed the hand of that fabric. But what's most important is it's not going anywhere, guys. The heat. It didn't break down. The fusible didn't break down from all of that heat. It's amazing. That gives me the time to really plan and adjust and really make sure everything is fixed down because there's nothing worse than putting this level of design work into a piece, having to walk away because you have to wash the dishes because your husband is gonna freak out if one more day you didn't wash the dishes. Um, that just might be happening in my house, but I'd rather be sewing than cleaning. But either way, we have to walk away from our project sometimes. And we want to make sure when we come back to our sewing space, things haven't raveled, things haven't puckered, things haven't shriveled. And that's not going to happen when you use these products. That's amazing. Okay. But now next step, we've done this. How are we going to take it from this level to this fully stitched. And this is where my absolute game changer thread, I know Jane mentioned it earlier in this uh, conversation when I first popped on, because I'm talking about this pretty much all week because this thread is everything to me right now. This is the Quilter Select 60 weight thread. And you'll know it's the 60 weight because it's got that cool green bar right across it. If you're looking at Quilter Select Thread, you'll notice that some of them have an orange bar. That orange bar means 80 weight thread. You heard me, 60 and 80 weight thread. Hallelujah. That makes me so excited, you guys. All right. So 
Yesterday, if you were here with me, I was talking about getting the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And I talked about how using 60 weight thread in the needle and 80 weight thread in the bobbin is going to help you get that perfect quarter inch seam allowance without having to measure a scant. Today, I want to talk about how using the same 60 weight thread. So do you hear me? We can have the same thread for our piecing that we use for our top stitching and our applique. That's amazing. We're not getting a million different specialty threads. We're just getting the right thread for the job. This thread is amazing in applique. Okay. This actual spool right here is what I did the blanket stitch around the green. Um, I'm going to show my 90s kid uh, Nis right now in the uh, Nickelodeon GAC shape. That's what I think of every time I see this this green blob um but this is the exact thread i used it's got a beautiful color to it it's bright it's vibrant um i'm here representing rnk distributing which is the parent company of both floriani embroidery and coulter select and i will tell you our sisters over at floriani would not allow us to not have just the most beautiful colors in stock in our quilting thread. So our 60 weight thread comes in 60 different vibrant, beautiful colors. And our 80 weight thread comes in 40 different colors. Um, amazing. That makes it everybody's dream, everybody's go-to for fantastic applique top stitching and blanket stitching and also satin stitching, okay? I know. Who would have thought using a thread that you could piece with for satin stitch? But I'm going to show you. It's amazing. It's totally doable. And you're going to absolutely adore the results. Now, what I love about the 60 weight thread is that it is thin enough that like, do you see right here around the edge? It's that straight line, the running line of a blanket stitch is just disappearing right into the edge of this uh, applique piece. But then at the same time, these bright colors are still showing up similarly to that heavier 50 weight that you're so used to using. So you're getting a little bit of both worlds. You're getting a slightly lighter thread that disappears or melts into your piece while still getting that bold contrast that that 50 weight will get you. Now, Alternatively, if you are somebody who wants this to disappear altogether, we really, really, really light, I suggest going for our uh, sister line, the 80 weight Coulter Select thread. And you'll see all of my threads have this popped little hole in it because I use this stuff all the time. I absolutely adore it. Uh, but the 80 weight will have an orange line through it. Okay. So I love using these threads. Now, this is getting the blanket stitch. How do we get this level of blanket stitch? Um, I personally love this hand look of blanket stitch here. Um, and so what you need to do is when you're aligning your machine up, you want to make sure that your needle is aligned with the edge of your applique piece, okay? Because that's where you're going to get your running line. And you need to really take a moment. I'm always um, telling my classes, take a moment, check in with your body when we're sitting at our sewing machine, making sure that we've got the correct posture, that we're comfortable, that things are great, snacks are in the right distance for our hands to pick up. All of these things are important, but we also want to be making sure we're checking in with our body. What is the more comfortable way for us to turn our applique pieces? That's important because with a blanket stitch, those what I like to refer to as the bites in, those, those hop stitches that hop over to the side, they're going to go one way or the other depending on how you have the stitch set up in your machine. If you're moving your hands this way, you're going to want to go have the bites going in one direction. If you're moving your hands this way, you're going to be wanting the bites to go in the other direction. You know what I mean? Because you're going to want them going on the piece properly. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If not, please drop any questions about anything that I've said so far in the comments. I want to address any of them with 
uh, Jane after this. Um, but we're going to want to keep that keep that in mind. When it comes to blanket stitches, I don't really find that um, I want to use a lot of different sizes. I like uh, a pretty standardized size of blanket stitch. I don't get too big. I don't get too small. I like it my way. And that's just a personal preference. Um, I've said it before in this, um, and I'll say it again. There are two types of quilters, those who test and those who wish they tested. This is one of those times where you just have to test and see what strikes your fancy. Now, blanket stitch is not the only way to stitch down your applique motifs. You can also use a satin stitch. Now, if I'm pulling out a satin stitch, let me get, grab that over here. Now, this is an exaggerated satin stitch because I wanted to make sure you can clearly see this on camera. Um, I would not probably do this heavy of a satin stitch um, regularly. But uh, if you're doing a satin stitch, you want to make sure that your stitch density and width, so the density is coming from the length of the satin stitch you choose, and then the width is just how wide that stitch is going to end up being, is proportionate to the sizes of the piece. Now, this satin stitch, I personally, and again, this is personal preference. This is why quilting is an art and everyone has their own preferences, okay? But personally, this size satin stitch, I would use it to outline this entire piece, but I think it's a little large for outlining all of these interior tiny pieces. I probably would go a little bit thinner and a little bit less dense. And quite frankly, I would definitely go with a less aggressive shade of red for these blues. But again, this is an art form. This is about what you like. So we're going to, what did I just say? We're going to test because there would be nothing worse than putting all of this time and effort into these amazing pieces. Can you imagine all of the time and effort that goes into a block like this and then you use the wrong size satin stitch and it's just all to mess and it's only because you didn't test. So we are going to test, okay? We're gonna test. But we're gonna use, we can go ahead and use a satin stitch. Also, if you want to be even less, what I like to say, I'm saying aggressive here because I felt like that satin stitch was very aggressive for that, that motif. You can also use the, in the exact same motif, you can use a straight line stitch to tack that applique piece down. Now, what I love here is I used a contrasting thread so that you could see where my stitch line was. But with this motif, this style of stitching it down, I would probably pick a color that just absolutely disappears on my fabric. So I would probably be changing my, my thread quite a bit. I'd be going with the navy, with the cornflower, with the baby blue uh, to go ahead and switch from piece to piece so you don't see my stitches at all, which is why it is so wonderful that these Quilter Select threads come in so many colors uh, because you really can change and you can differentiate what you're doing very easily. Um, these sessions go by so stinking fast and I want to share so much information with you guys, uh, but I just looked at the clock and I've only got a couple minutes left with you. So I want to go ahead and recap what my favorite, absolute favorite tools are uh, for making applique so much easier. I like to start by using Quilters Select Fabric Prep. It is light, it is gauzy, it can create a template for you so you do not have to flip your designs when you're appliquing. One more time for the people in the back. You do not have to flip your designs if you start here. It's Yes, it's adding an additional layer, but it's so light, it's so airy, it's so gauzy and delightful that it does not affect your applique piece. So first we're starting with Quilter Select Fabric Prep. And that's for this stage when you're actually drawing out your templates, okay? Then after our fabric prep, we're taking AppleWeb Plus, which is a paper-backed fusible web that turns any piece of fabric into a heat 
sticker, basically. And it is phenomenal. This is what you're going to put on the back of your fabric to attach it to that fabric prep. Okay. And then we are going to fuse our pieces to our backgrounds so that we get this. And again, I just want to show these complex motifs so you can see how many layers are going on, how much heat was used to affix these applique pieces to the background, and how much everything is still in place. Nothing is breaking down. That fusible is just as strong today as it was the first time it was placed on there. It's stinking amazing, guys. Okay. And then once everything's in place, we're top stitching it down. And you can top stitch in a myriad of ways. You can use a blanket stitch. You can use a satin stitch. You can use a straight stitch. But either way any of these above stitches are used, I highly suggest looking into Quilter Select 60 weight thread. I spoke about it yesterday when we were talking about piecing. I'm talking about it today. This 60 weight thread has so many uses and it is phenomenal because it comes in 60, 60 different colors. So you are going to find the color you need for your top stitching. Um, in this piece alone, I believe I have five different thread colors and I'm able to make them blend in like the lavender here or really stand out like this red in here and everything in between. So I'm sure you guys have had some questions. I'm gonna go ahead and um, change the camera over. You're gonna see my lovely face again. I'm speaking totally on my own. And Jane, is there any questions that popped up while I was rambling on and on about applique? Because I love it so much. There are questions. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, no. I can hear you. I can't see you, though. I know. I'm frozen, but I have questions. Okay, bring it. Okay, as long as you can hear me, I think that's what matters. We can just <laughs> keep looking at you. Sorry, okay. guys. I didn't realize I was frozen. So tell me when you can't hear me. Um, By the way, let's see. What color do you use in the bobbin? So I like to use, I go both ways. Sometimes I like to use our Nimbus, which is a really nice pearly antique gray. It kind of works as like a grayish, if you will. I really like to use that in the bobbin. Otherwise, I match my 60 weight and 80 weight threads. That's the wonderful thing about having so many colors. So many of them overlap and have complementary colors in each line that you can match the top and the bottom. But because they are different weights, you can go ahead and just put a lighter color in the bobbin and go to town. Perfect. And then let's see, Sandra wanted to know the name of the thread and that's Quilter Select. Yes, it is the Quilter Select Perfect Cotton Plus 60 weight thread. And Anita asked, could you just use the fusible web? I think she's talking about the Apple Web Plus. Yes. So Apple Web Plus is the fusible web. Now, the reason why I bring up the fabric prep is so that you don't have to reverse your applique piece. But if you're using an applique piece that it really doesn't matter to you what direction it goes, you can go ahead and trace your 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 template right onto that paper backing that's on the Apple web, affix your, fuse your fabric right to it and cut from there. So you don't need the fabric prep. It's just an added step that doesn't add anything to your fabric, but will allow you to do your applique without having to do that reverse math in your head. Well, hey, hey, Nicole. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm <laughs> good. I thought I'd better you. slip in here and let Jane reboot her computer since she was yes. frozen. And, <laughs> uh, but hey, great job. And uh, man, we love the R&K products. And uh, I'm gonna tell everybody how they can get it. Okay, now we'll see you again tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me today. I'll see you. Okay, Nicole. Thank you. All right, everyone. Give us a call right now. All the Quilter Select, all the R&K products. We have a call-in special on them, but you do have to call in to get the Quilt Show pricing. Uh, so just give us a call at 800-401-8151.
to get that price. And, and what you could do right now is just, you can either go to smplive.tv, uh, scroll down to day three, or I'm sorry, day four, and just arrow over and you'll see all the products that we're gonna have on the show today. You can click on the products from there, or if you want to just go to sewingmachinesplus.com in the search bar, you can type in quilters select, and it's gonna take you to all those products. And you can just kind of go down through there, pick the ones you want out, give us a call, tell them these are the products I'm interested in, and then they're going to give you the pricing that we have for Quilt Fest. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and you can actually go ahead and put things in your cart if you're wanting to shop that way. And then when you call in, you can just read all the things that you have in your cart. So let's bring Jane back. I think she's unfrozen now. And, I don't know uh, what happened. <laughs> I love that. I was going to go for it. I was just like hoping that you guys would just keep putting up full screens of the, the things and the other presenters. Like I was ready to go as long as you can hear me. I do want to remind some people this because I was writing questions, Blaine, and you can add to it. If, if you know, like, well, I can't find it on the website. If you can't find it on your own on the website, call in because yeah. the folks there at SMP are ready to help you and they'll find it. If it was something that you're looking for, I'm sure it's there. Yeah. And they're going to navigate with you too. They're going to you know, just say, hey, here, go to this page, click here. They're going to kind of tell you, walk you through there so you can see yeah. what you're they're talking about as well. So that they're trained to do that and they can help you out. So, well, hey, Jane, we're ready for our educational session today. So I'm going to let you take it away. Right. And I'll see you back here in a little while. Okay. Thanks, Lane. All right, everybody. I know I wrote down questions for you. I didn't get to them all, but we're going to see Nicole again. So I will be sure to get your questions in as she is so good at answering them. Like Lane said, it is our education session of the day. And Kimberly Imo is here to teach us all about ruler work. Now, Kimberly is an international award-winning quilter, fabric designer, and has been a quilt judge for more than 20 years. Kimberly has developed a signature line of precision rulers, and she is featured, she is a featured artist for the Electric Quilt Company. Put your hands together and a warm welcome for Kimberly Imo. Hi, Kimberly. Hey, hi everyone, how are you doing? Oh my hey, God. You forgot one big thing. I am Janome's national spokesperson. So that is my highest honor. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to miss that. I love this little kitty that's right here in the screen. <laughs> Is it that's Cheeto? He's he's actually probably more famous than I am. He's got his own Instagram account as Janome Cat, and he's kind of the unofficial mascot for Janome. So we have three kitties in the studio today. We've got Toby over here, Remy's running around, and it is a snowy, snowy day here in Colorado. We have two feet of snow on the ground since last night. Oh my it's goodness so gracious, that's crazy. I'm glad <laughs> I don't have snow here. Well, um, Kimberly, I'm going to let you take it away so you can educate us. Okay, yes. Um, we're going to be talking today about fly and heat units and have square triangles because so many of my designs have flying geese units in them and have square triangles. I use them a lot. And I've got Mr. Kim in the studio with me today. He's my husband. He's gonna come around because we're gonna start with a fun little, really quick trunk show that some of the quotes that are in my book, Jelly Roll Qu uh, Quote Magic. This is my best selling book. It has been uh, sold out and out of print for a while, but I opened the vault and pulled some out just for you all. And there's going to be a way to get the book and the ruler if you want. Um, we're going to talk about some of the quilts and how I made these amazing flying geese units and half square triangles with no math, no wasted fabric, and no stress. So how does that sound? Good? <laughs> so come on in, Mr. Kim. Oh, here's Toby. He's, he's on the quilts because you know whenever there's a quilt around, there's going to be a cat on it. So anyway, he, we're going to do a quick little trunk show. Thought it'd be fun to show you some of the quilts in the book. And this one is in there. This is, um, I did a little, let's quilt the seasons with jelly rolls. Everyone has jelly rolls or two and a half inch strips. So this is one, and it is made with all half square triangles and flying geese. So we'll put that away and then we'll do a couple more for the seasons here. And this one, oh, it's Christmas again. Well, it's snowing outside. Yeah, it's kind of appropriate. Again, lots and lots of half square triangles and flying geese and some extra units up here to make these 
really cute trees. This is a very fun and easy project. If you're a skilled beginner, you can handle this. Now we're gonna do autumn. We've got some falling leaves, and these are just uh, traditional leaf blocks in a unique setting. There we go. And see, this is a lot of half square triangles and squares. This one, I would call it basically skilled beginner. Pretty fun. Again, uh, if you can make your half square triangles and your flying geese from your jelly roll strips, all the better, and that's what I love to do. And then this one is called Summer Sparklers and would be great for the summer, a picnic quilt, even a quilt for um, Quilts of Valor because of the red, white, and blue theme. Again, um, oh, let's just show this border. These are actually flying geese units, and I'm gonna show you how to make those chevrons later on. And one more here. So I know a lot of quilters actually shy away from making flying geese. This is all flying geese. And again, just a fun way to use up a jelly roll and in a more modern setting. So we're all done with that one. And we'll put Mr. Kim, you wanna say hi to everyone? <laughs> we're gonna put it back behind the camera. Also, this one is also all flying geese. And it, I call this fractured flying geese. But again, it's just a modern take on flying geese units that are traditionally made. So come around. We're going to talk about the ruler here. How many of you have ever gone to a show or a demonstration at your guild and somebody's demoing a ruler? And you think, oh my gosh, this looks awesome. You buy the ruler, you get home, you get busy with life. Three months go by, you pull it out and you have no idea how to use it. <laughs> I hate that. So when I was coming up with the, the, the whole concept of the ruler, and it's called my precision flying geese and half square triangle ruler. And I know that's a mouthful, but it does so much. And I've got one here out of the package. And I just hated it that you couldn't remember how to use the ruler or you lost the packaging with it. Well, here's the thing. It does come with a little, a little piece of paper that explains how to use the ruler. But the great thing is with this, everything you need to use the ruler is on the ruler. So if you lose the little insert, forget it. Everything is here. It's very self-explanatory. Let's talk about it. Side A is in magenta pink. And you can see I actually wore a sweater, so you can kind of see here, um, it, we've got side A. It says side A right on the ruler, and it has a little diagram on it showing the flying geese unit. The center triangle is colored in magenta pink, so you know when you're using side A of the ruler that you are cutting those center triangles. Now, this is a two-sided ruler. If you flip it over, <laughs> now you have side B. And side B is in mint green. Now, you can see the little um, half square triangle there. And you can also see the flying geese unit with the little side triangles colored in mint green. That means when you're using side B of the ruler that you'll be cutting those units. Everything, when you're using side A of the ruler, everything is right side up, but side B is all upside down. So you can keep yourself straight really easily by just looking at what can I read <laughs> when you're using side B of the ruler. Now everything on side A is upside down. What's really great about this is when if you've made flying geese units in the past, you had to cut a rectangle and two squares and draw the diagonal lines and sew on the diagonal lines and then cut a quarter inch away from the, the sewn lines, but you waste those corners. With this method, there is no waste. You cut everything from strips. Now let's go back to the ruler here. And Mr. Kim, if you'll come around, and maybe you can kind of zoom in. We'll put it on the white so it really shows up. You can see here at the top, it says finish size of your flying geese unit. And then if you go down the ruler, there's all these different sizes. So if you're using any commercial pattern, it should tell you what the finished size of your flying geese unit should be. Or you can simply make one and figure out what the finished size is. Once you've gotten the finished size, you look down on the ruler, you slide your finger over, 
and there's a little numbers with arrows. So let's say, for instance, we want to make three by six inch flying geese. That's our finished size. You slide your finger over, and that means you cut three and a half inch strips. That's all the math you have to remember. I'm using three and a half inch strips, and my sizes will turn out, my flying geese will turn out the perfect size. So you would cut all your strips three and a half inches. Now, I've even taken it one step further, and I've done all the math for you. So here's your little chart. This is not only in the book, this is a free download on my website at www.kimberlyimo.com, but it's also in the book. So if you have a pattern that says you need 66 three by six inch finished sized flying geese, that chart has already everything you need that you can figure out exactly how many strips of fabric you need to cut to get those flying geese units. So the math is done. The only thing you have to put in your mind is I'm cutting three and a half inch strips. Now the ruler covers 10 different sizes, way down to a one and a half by three inch flying geese unit, which is wee little, <laughs> all the way up to a six by 12 inch flying geese unit. And that's a big honking geese unit. <laughs> honking? So, and it goes every half inch increment in between. So you get 10 sizes of flying geese and you, the biggest size strip you would cut is six and a half inches. Now for our side triangles, remember we talked about how we would use side A to cut the center triangle. You would flip it over and you would cut a different strip of a different color, but still the same three and a half inches or whatever size it is that you're trying to make. So let's talk about that. I'm going to demo that right here, right now. I've got some strips cut, and we're going to actually show you. Now, this works for right or left-handed quilters. If you're right-handed, your strips lay from left to right. You're going to start on the left side and work your way down the strip, and you can use almost every inch of that strip to get all of the geese units or the, I call it the goose unit, which is the center and the wings because the side triangles are like wings to a goose. So goose has one body and two wings. <laughs> so I kind of have nicknamed them the goose or the geese unit and the wing unit. But you're gonna cut from left to right if you're a right-hander. If you're a left-hander, you would just cut from right to left or you could even put the strips out in front of you, but it works just the same way. So let's go ahead and cut some of those center units here. I've got lots of good step outs to show you. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lay this down and I've cut my strips three and a half inches. And you can see here that it's very easy to line up the little three and a half inch mark on the ruler. I'm gonna let Mr. Kim get in there close so you can see. Remember, we're making three by six inch flying geese units. So my, my strip is three and a half inches wide. And you'll see that there's a little flat top on the top of the ruler, a little flat edge that aligns right on the edge of the fabric. There you go. It kind of finally auto focused, focus. auto focus. There you go. So now your first cut, you're just going to cut up one side, hold the ruler in place, and down the other side. All right. Oops, didn't quite get all the way through. I have multiple layers here. I recommend that you cut two units at a time or even four units at a time. Now, you could go six units at a time if you have a really sharp blade in your rotary cutter, but four is pretty much optimum and you can really cut a lot at one time by cutting four layers. So here's my units right here, these beautiful units, and you see there's a little flat edge at the top, and these are gonna be our centers or our goose units. And now all you would need to do is rotate the ruler. This is where people tend to wanna to flip it over, uh-uh, because that gets you on side B. Remember, we wanna stay on side A for our goose units or our center triangles. So we're going to rotate the ruler, line it up with the last diagonal edge 
and then the flat top is now at the bottom of the strip, but we still have the three and a half inch uh, markings on the ruler pointing to the top of the strip. Hold it in place and go ahead and cut just like that. There you go, I've got four more. And then you just keep rotating your way down the strip. All right, and we're gonna line it up again. Always line it up on the last diagonal edge. This means you'll never have to waste any more fabric because once you sew these triangles together, your unit comes out perfectly. So now we have enough of our goose units for our centers. Let's try the wings, the side units. So we're gonna flip the ruler over to side B. I still have three and a half inch strips here. And if you have um, a strip, you're gonna wanna fold it right sides or wrong sides together. It doesn't matter. I'm using solid fabric today so you can see easily. But any strip that you have, just fold it in half because you want a mirror image side triangle. So here we go. Mr. Kim, can you see this? We're gonna line this up, side B. Always cut off your selvage edges. I've got the three and a half inch mark right here at the bottom of my strip. I think you can see that the top is a flat top here and we're gonna go ahead and line this up. I'm gonna ask him to move over a little bit so I can, there we go. And we're gonna hold that in place and cut our side triangles. Here's what they look like. One side has a point, one side has a flat edge. This is so you will never have to cut seven, eight inch measurements ever again. The only thing you're gonna cut from now on are half or whole size strips. You would rotate the ruler, line it back up with the diagonal edge that we just cut, and cut some more. There we go. So you can work your way all the way down. And on this chart that I've already done the math for you, it tells you how many of your side A triangles you can get out of each width strip. So that's how it's so easy to figure. And this is based on 40 inch strips. Um, it's just so easy to figure how many you need to cut. So let's go to my step outs here and let's, I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can all see. Once you get your flying beach units, you're going to lay them out so that they are flat top to flat top and match point to point. Can you get in there and see that? There we go. We have flat top here, flat tops, point to point. All right, the next thing you're going to want to do is take one goose unit, I'm sorry, one wing unit or one side triangle and you line it up right sides together. All right, and so the little flat edges align, the points align, the raw edges align. The next thing you're going to do is stitch. You're going to, and I've used blue thread here so you can see, we're going to start right here at the corner, uh, right at that corner, and we're going to stitch with our perfect scant quarter inch seam down the right side. Then you would stop and you would press this open. It's very important that you press it open before you add the other side triangle. So you could chain piece these. You could chain a whole bunch of them. Fun fact here, one time I challenged myself to see how many I could make within 26 minutes, and I made 66 flying geese from cutting to sewing to pressing in 26 minutes. In 26 minutes is an episode of Frasier. <laughs> so I timed myself, just something fun. All right, let's come back in here. Once you have pressed that, and you always want to press the, the uh, seam allowance out towards the wings or out towards the side triangles because we don't want bulk at our points. Now what we're going to do Here's what we're gonna do next. Here's that same unit. We're going to put this next side triangle on and line it up raw edge to raw edge. And you can see right here that it aligns right across the top. And that's where we're going to stitch from bottom to top. We're gonna to stitch starting right down here all the way up and come out right at that corner. When you stop and you press this side triangle open, you have two little dog ears left, and that's the only thing you have to trim up. You just trim those dog ears because here's what I like to say about, oh my goodness, we lost the camera. Are we back? We're back. <laughs> 
So here's something fun. And this, this is my own quote. Feel free to use it. <laughs> Dog ears are the cellulite of quilting. <laughs> they, they leave lumps and bumps in your seams where you don't want them. So dog ears have to go. So here is what it will look like when it's all trimmed up. And this is a beautiful three by six inch uh, finished flying geese. Now, right now, if we measure it, it's three and a half by six and a half because it will finish at three by six. So that's the mechanics of how you make them. But I've got some more to show you here that I want to go over. Let's talk about the placement. I've got all kinds of step outs for you. Let's talk about the placement of uh, our colors. Oh, okay. We only have a little bit of time left. I got a lot to cover. Let's talk about the placement here. Here I have a background fabric for my center flying geese unit. And I've used a color for the side triangles, all right? So here you can see what it will look like when you assemble it. And you've got your background fabric in the middle and colors on the side. So it gives you a completely different look. Here's what it looks like. And I'm keeping Cheeto out of the screen here. Come on, Cheeto buff. And we've got the fabric or the printed fabric or the colored fabric in your center triangle with background colors uh, or background fabric on the sides. When you put it together, this is what it looks like. Now, remember that summer sparklers that I showed you? The summer sparklers quilt had a chevron border effect. When you do alternating units like this, look what happens here. And I'm gonna move this so he can see real good, real clearly what can happen with a chevron effect. They're the same flying geese units, but now we have like a white chevron, a yellow chevron, a white chevron again. So by alternating how we put the placement of our fabrics, we can get all new effects, all new looks. <laughs> Gio just wants to be part of it. He is very photogenic. All right, so you can see that this can open up a whole new arsenal for your quilting um, war room and my husband's military. So <laughs> we like to use those terms. But here's one more, a little tip I want to share with you here. When you're sewing, people tend to, when they make these, they tend to sew along and they tend to veer off when they get to the end. And then their flying geese units aren't perfect. You need to make sure that you keep going straight all the way down. That quarter inch does not veer off too soon. Can you see that? Now, don't move, Mr. Kim. I'm going to put this under here. Here's another another uh, instance where it might not, people might veer off. They might start sewing down here at the bottom, stitch all the way up, but then they get up here and they veer off. Don't do that. Go straight to the corner with your stitching so that you're left with the perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And then you will never cut off their little flying geese heads ever again. <laughs> okay, we have just a few more minutes, but I want to cover half square triangles because they are also very important. And I know people don't really like to make half square triangles, especially when it comes to um, cutting anything with that seven eighths inch increment. Anytime you have a commercial pattern that calls for a three inch finished half square triangle, all you need to do to incorporate this ruler is to cut your strips three and a half inches. Now what you can do is stack your strips right sides together. So here what I've done is I've put my yellow and white together, and I actually just folded the whole thing in half, so I'm gonna be cutting two units at a time. So I have a layer of white, then yellow, then yellow, then white. Now we're gonna use side B of the ruler. Remember, there's a little half square triangle um, little icon there. Side B makes perfect half square triangles. So we're going to lay this down on top of our units. Remember, they're layered white, yellow, white, yellow, and we're going to cut 
just like that. It's the same thing as cutting those side triangles. And now we have units already ready to sew. So what that looks like is, if you'll come right here, we have these units. This is exactly what it looks like. They're just layered. We're going to stitch from one side to the other, press open, probably to the darker side fabric, and you have one dog ear to trim. And the magic number is remembering if you know the finished size, you cut your strips a half inch larger. So that would be a three and a half inch unfinished half square triangle, but it will finish three inches. Again, you have 10 sizes there from really little up to a six inch finished half square triangle. So I think we've covered a lot of ground today. I'm going to throw it back to you all. Is there any questions? Well, hello, Kimberly. Yes, I do have some questions. Nice work. Everybody is loving your demo. Um, let's see. Karen Marie says, what about stretching because of sewing on the bias? Actually, I don't, I don't worry about that so much because you, you want to let the feed dogs and your machine do the work of pulling the fabric through. I really have never had a problem with it. If you're using good quilt shop quality cotton, some of the lesser qualities, maybe you'd want to starch them or use some sizing. You could always do that with any of your fabrics that gives it extra stability, extra body. But to me, I don't have the problem with stretching and I'd rather not waste fabric. So this is a really good method. But that was a great question. And here's another great question from Kathleen, except that I wrote it down wrong. <laughs> That's okay. You're a busy lady. It doesn't actually really, I know, trying to follow up with the chat. I'm like, ah, I'm writing as fast as I can. Uh, do you sew side first? I'm guessing do you sew right side first? Oh, that's a great question. Wonderful, Kathleen. So it works either way. The construction works either way. But let me just show you real quick why I like to uh, do it um, here on this one. I can show that. That's a great question. It would work whether or not you put the right side down or the left side first. But why I like this is because, um, and Mr. Kim, if you'll get in here, when you sew the right side down first, press it open, and then you add the left side. Then when you feed this under your um, needle to add the left side, you're sewing from bottom, because you're going to turn it this way. You're sewing from bottom to top, and it, it allows you to see exactly where you want to end. And that's so you can keep from veering off at the end so you get your perfect point every time. If you did it the other way, it's a little bit harder. I just find it easier to add the right side first. But if you happen to do all the left sides, don't rip them out. Just be more careful how you end. That was a good question. So many good questions, and I'm trying to get them all at once. Um, going to go through them. Uh, the other, uh, the quote of the day, of course, is uh, dog ears are like the cellulite of quilting. <laughs> Everybody love that one. Can we get that printed out and put it behind us, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> I think you should make a poster I and put it in the middle of it and then around it. I bet you people would buy that. Oh, you know what? That would be a great panel. Uh, seriously, <laughs> cellulite. Our dog ears are the cellulite of quilting. It's true. <laughs> they provide so many lumps and bumps, so always trim your dog ears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and everyone's going to be rewatching this. Do you have your book there? Can you hold that up one yes, more time? Yes. Yeah. This is my best-selling book. I had um, six books published by the American Culture Society. This was uh, really the bestseller. It sold out. Unfortunately, AQS is no longer publishing. I have a little a treasure trove of them, and I opened them up. I signed them all that I sent, and um, if they want one that's signed, be sure to get them from you because these are not available anymore. And there are so many beautiful quilts all made from pre-cuts. And remember, you don't have to buy pre-cuts. Your stash, you can make your own pre-cuts with your stash or your scraps or whatever, but this is really good for using with, um, you know, charm squares, layer cakes, and those wonderful jelly roll strips. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, I love using the stash. What a great. Yeah. What a great, that's cut, so cut up your own stash. Exactly. Well, you're yeah. so good, Kimberly. Thank you so much. I am. I know that we have these rulers at SMP, so yes. people can get them there. They've been asking that as well. Yes. So that's and I think you, you all are doing some sort of bundle. 
a, a really nice little bundle. So, and we'll put that up on the screen. I'm just trying to see. Oh, and if they, and beyond that, if they want to get a hold of you, do you have a website they can find you at? Yes, it's just kimberlyinmo.com. Kimberlyinmo.com. That is wonderful. E I N M O. Yep. E I N M O. Pattern, the name of the pattern of the quilt on the back of the wall. Oh, that's fractured flying geese. And that one is not in the book, unfortunately, but I wanted to hang it up because it, people just really love that. It's very modern. And that one is a pattern on my website. Wonderful. Kimberly, thank you. Thank you to your thank husband. You. Thank you to the cats. Uh, Everything yeah, worked out perfectly. Thank you to Mr. Kim. He loves being here. Thank you, Mr. Kim. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank, thank you for you. me. She's so great. Oh my gosh. That was so much fun. Um, all right. So listen, we do have the rulers, of course, at smplive.tv. And um, here comes my friend. Oh, here we go. We're, there you go. So when you go to the website, pop in the search box, Kimberly Imo, and then you can find her products there. Of course, the Jelly Roll Quilt Magic Book that she held up and showed you. I believe they're signed. She said she only did a few of those, but that is something that you absolutely want to have. If, you're, if you want this book, I know a lot of you were commenting, I have the book, I have the book. If you don't have it, get it because it will go away um, because everybody wants it obviously. And then um, we also have the bundles. There you go. There are the flying geese and the HST ruler that she showed us as well. So again, go to smplive.tv, put in the search box, Kimberly Einmo, and you'll be able to find her products there. Of course, if you have any questions at all, you can certainly give a call 800-401-8151. And I know the folks at SMP will help you out. <laughs> well, hey, Jane, I wanted to add too, on uh, Kimberly's book, they are, we only have 10 copies available right now and they're autographed. I told so, you they're going to run out. <laughs> so yeah, when those 10 are gone, they're gone. The autographed versions are. Uh, so if anybody wants one of those, jump on the, the phones and order them today. Great. I like it. Thanks, Blaine. All right. Well, hey, we're going to continue on and we're going to let you take a little break and we'll be back in, uh, well, you'll be back in just a few minutes. Yeah, I will. All right. Thanks, Jane. All right, we are going to continue on, and guys, we got a treat for you up. We are going to talk all about Laura Star Ironing Systems, and we got two brand new products we're going to talk about. And we have Emily Dunlap, and Emily, she's an expert in pressing and ironing technology, and enjoys sharing her knowledge with sewists around the world. I got the the fortunate uh, honor to meet Emily. Oh my gosh, man, it's probably been three or four years ago when she first started uh with uh laura star and uh she uh actually i think she started her career path with bernina she's a really expert sewer as well and then she got into the ironing side of the thing and uh she's been really good so we are going to let her come in so y'all welcome to the show emily dunlap Hi, Blaine. Good morning. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you for having me as part of Quilt Fest with Sewing Machines Plus. My name is Emily Dunlap and I am the Laura Star Expert and I've got some pretty exciting things to share with you today. So Laura Star creates a really premium ironing system. We've got a powerful dry microfine steam and we've got that found on full systems as well as portable options. So check out this steam, Blaine. That same dry steam is found throughout all of our product lines, but what's unique about it is that it's the twice heated steam. It's not going to spit or drip on my fabric. It's not going to shrink or distort my quilt blocks. It's not going to burn my hand. Don't do this with any other iron or steamer because it will hurt quite a bit. Um, but Laura Star creates this dry, powerful steam that can really enhance our quilting, our sewing, our embroidery, our crafting, and our garments, if that's your thing, okay? So Laura Star is a Swiss engineered and designed company. We have been making ironing systems for over 40 years. All of our products are made in Europe. Something that else that's unique about Laura Star is unlike other irons that break, go in the trash, Laura Star is going to last a long time because we are committed to making the parts needed to repair, replace maintenance for at least 10 years. So that's a little bit about the background of Laura Star. There's a lot that I can share, but I really wanna share 
what this is gonna do for your everyday garment pressing or steaming, but more importantly, how this is gonna help you out with your quilting, sewing, and embroidery. So again, this is my full system. I also have my Lift Extra here uh, as part of a portable option. I'm gonna talk about these a little bit, um, but I'm gonna put this aside for just a moment because what I've got here is my brand new SPR Extra from Laura Star. This debuted in November and it's been extremely popular. If you're familiar with Laura Star at all, you know that we've got top of the line systems and there's a fan built into the board. So my new SPR Extra has that same technology built in. And this is pretty nice because when I release the steam on my SPR Extra, that fan is going to activate. So it's gonna pull the air down or it's gonna blow the air up. And this can give us a ton of advantages. So I promise I am gonna show you some quilting things, but I have to show you how powerful the steam is first. Okay, so I've got a silk blouse right here. And I bet most of you would probably not put an iron directly on silk because it's gonna be too damaging. It's, that silk is too delicate. But my powerful steam is going to be able to remove these wrinkles really quickly. As soon as I release that steam, that fan is gonna draw the air down. But pretty handy here, I've got a button on the front of my iron. I can change the direction of the fan and now I've got this cushion of air created. So this is actually going to help me prevent making more wrinkles into my garment, especially something fine and delicate like the silk. So I'm going to hover that steam over the silk. And in just a couple seconds there, those wrinkles are completely removed. I don't have any water spitting or dripping on the garment and those wrinkles are gone. That sleeve is going to be really easy for me as well. So that really is the power of the steam. It removes those wrinkles, it doesn't spit or drip because it's that twice heated steam. I've got a large capacity removable water tank. That water heats in the boiler, it creates a really fine steam. It travels up through the hose and it actually heats a second time as it exits the iron. That's why our molecule of steam is so fine and dry. It's much more like a gas than a steam and that's why it's not gonna have that moisture like we're used to with a traditional steam. So Blaine, I know that we've got a lot of sewists and quilters in the audience, but I do wanna share a couple more things because I know people always struggle with the button area, okay? So I can actually put those buttons just face down like this. And even though this is silk, I can still press and steam the back of those buttons. I am gonna change the direction of the fan and have that pull the air down to hold my garment in place. And I get just tremendously great results with that steam, with the back of the buttons, just like that. Okay, so Laura Star also has a hygienic steam. Our steam kills 99.9% .9 of germs, bacteria, dust mites, fungi, bed bugs, all kinds of gross stuff I don't really like to think about. But it also kills odor causing bacteria. So I can refresh a garment in between wearing, washing, or dry cleaning and really extend the life of the garment. Okay. So again, quilters, stick with me because I've got some really cool stuff to show you. But what about a cotton shirt? Okay, because most, most shirts, we're gonna steam those and we remove the wrinkles, we put them back on and it's a little damp. So it wrinkles immediately, okay? Cotton is one of the most absorbent fabrics. So it definitely is going to need a nice press and the shape of my board and that fan that channels throughout the whole board is gonna help me press this linen shirt really nicely. So I'm gonna change the direction of the fan again to give me that nice cushion of air here. And I'm just gonna steam and press. And again, that fan is preventing me from putting more wrinkles into my garment. So I've really overdone it, but I like to illustrate that because all of that powerful steam removes those wrinkles, but my shirt is dry. Okay. If I want to do the point to my collar, I'm going to change the direction of the fan again. And I don't have any of that distortion or that pushing of the fabric that we sometimes see. Okay. Even if I am pressing a sleeve, right? Because I'm not going to do the cool trick 
that I use with the silk because I do need to press this garment. But I can press this really quickly and I can really keep that nice crisp crease that we get in the shirt right here, okay? So the Laura Star does a phenomenal job for our pressing and our steaming of garments and it's also hygienic so it can help me refresh those things really nicely. Uh, let's skip to some quilting stuff. So with my full system, I have that fan built into the board and this is gonna help me for quilting too. So here I've got four layers of quilting cotton full of wrinkles, okay? And what I used to have to do was get my whole gown on a best press, soak one layer of fabric at a time, hopefully get my iron, remove those wrinkles, but then find somewhere in my really clean, tidy sewing room to let that fabric dry because it's always wet, it's always damp, okay? But here I've got four layers and I'm gonna make sure that my fan is having that air pull down. And without using any spray or starch or flatter or any kind of product, even through multiple layers of fabric here, I am able to really quickly remove those wrinkles, even throughout all of the layers. So this is a pretty nice time-saving result that I get with the Laura Star. And I can get the wrinkles removed with my portable options as well, but because I have that fan built in, it's pulling the air through the board. It's really penetrating the layers of my fabric. And the other thing it's doing is it's cooling and drying my fabric because I do have that dry, powerful steam, but there is still just a little bit of humidity to it because it is still a steam. It's just much more like a gas. So that fan is gonna pull the air through. It's gonna cool and dry my fabric. So this fabric is ready to go. I can reposition and quickly get through lots of yardage with my Laura Star boards. This is a great way for me to remove wrinkles from my fabric before I'm starting my quilt. Um, but if you are somebody who likes to starch because you want your fabric to be stiff, then you can absolutely still do that. I have just eliminated a best press or a starch or a spray or anything like that from prepping my fabric um, because my powerful steam can remove those wrinkles really quickly. So by all means, if you're a starcher, if you want your fabric to be stiff, you can still use that. Something that I hear a lot is that people want a big board. So if you're somebody at home that you've got a nice big ironing station and that you've got a big board, you can use our portable options to remove these wrinkles just as easily. However, I'm a pretty big fan of these systems because the fan makes things a lot easier for me. Okay, it's pulling that air through or blowing the air up and I can get results really quick because I just showed you removing those wrinkles in multiple yardage of fabric with multiple layers. And I'm just using this portion of my board. Because if you think about it, if you've got a big board, you're probably taking the time to smooth out large pieces of fabric or maybe your quilt top uh, so that you can hit it with the iron. But I can do this really quickly and I can save real estate in my sewing room for other things that are gonna be able to help me out. Uh, but again, if you've got a station that you already enjoy, then the portable Laura Star lifts are going to still be able to get you those really great results, okay? Um, that fan's really nice too, because if it's blowing up in that position, let's see here, my fabric isn't gonna get caught on the edge of my board in the same way. So if I do have a large quilt top that I might be hoping that I've got a big board for, my quilt top's not going to get stuck on the edge of my board because that fan is allowing that to hover up for me, okay? So other fun things that I've got for quilters, you know, I've been showing you this really powerful steam and you might be wondering, you know, Emily, I'm a quilter and I don't use steam to press my blocks because it shrinks and distorts the fabric. A traditional wet steam will do that, which is why you might be a starcher as well to pre-shrink. But with my powerful steam from Laura Star, I'm gonna change the direction of that fan to pull that air down. And I get a really fast, flat press. And I'm not gonna have any shrinking or distortion in my fabric. I'm not going to have any of that pulling or pushing. So it's a pretty nice result with the Laura Star. That fan is in the board pulling the air down. So it's holding my fabric in place. It's cooling and drying my fabric. So my seam is pressed and set 
all at once. I'm not going to be turning every single block in my stack over and also ironing the other half because it's already done. The other thing that I think is pretty phenomenal with the full system is that I can keep really close control over what I'm doing, whether I'm pressing a seam open or if I'm pressing a binding. And that steam is going to be pulled away from my fingers with that band. So again, I can keep really close control. I can keep my fingers close and any kind of project that I'm doing. And that fan's actually pulling that steam away from me and it's not extra hot. Okay. So I'm going to show you a little bit more quilting here in just a minute, Blaine, but uh, I'm kind of going to just go with my routine here because this is my brand new s -Pure Extra, and I've got a really nicely designed iron. I've got a steam cord holder here that's going to keep my cord out of the way, but I've also got this centrally located handle. It's about a 2.2 pound iron. I'm never putting pressure forward or backward or even putting pressure down. The weight of the iron is going to be doing all the work for me. That's another reason when I'm pressing my blocks, I'm not you know, putting a lot of pressure down and really distorting that fabric because the weight of the iron just glides over the surface of that fabric. But usually I am working a little bit harder when I've got a fusible, okay? I've got a steam -a seam applique here. And with that powerful steam, in just a quick moment, that steam -a seam applique piece is totally set. It doesn't matter what kind of fusible I'm using, the Laura Star is going to tackle it and make it really fast. So any kind of embroidery stabilizer, any kind of construction or garment interfacing or bag making double-sided fusible or foam, the Laura Star is going to make that really easy for us. Okay. So again, I'm going to show you uh, some more quilting things, but I'm really going to just show you this in a more extended version because I do have the ability to control my steam with my steam controls here, right or left hand side. But let's pretend for a moment this is just a regular iron because when I'm doing my binding, unless I hold that iron in place, that fabric is just gonna pop right back up. I know we're all used to waiting and holding and counting for our iron to actually press what we are doing. But I can spend the same time, I can use that powerful steam from Larissa, and I get just a super crisp crease really quickly. I don't have to hold that iron in place. My work is done, okay? So again, more things that I've got with pressing and piecing because most quilters aren't using their steam to press their blocks because most steam is gonna shrink and distort the fabric. But here I've got quite a few pieces and I've got to press this last seam here. And I do really enjoy pressing my seams open because I get a little bit more accuracy in my piecing. And sometimes the pattern just calls for that. Um, but again, a lot of you are probably like, oh, I burn my fingers all the time when I have to press my seams open. But because I've got that sand built into the board, it's gonna hold everything in place for me. That iron is just gonna glide over that seam and it presses over that really quickly while drawing that heat and that steam away from my fingers. So I get really nice results even when I've got more intricate piecing such as this, okay? And if you are somebody who presses curves, you probably are using a wool pressing mat or a tailor's clapper because that's the only way we can really get our curves to set and stay flat. So with the Laura Star, with that powerful steam, I can press my curves. I'm not gonna get shrinking or distortion and it makes it so much faster. So there's a couple times I will turn my fabric over such as the curve, but with that powerful dry steam, I don't have that shrinking or distortion that we're used to. I don't have to hold a tailor's clapper in place to set this because that fan's pulling the air through. It's cooling and drying my fabric. So that press is going to stay press. And again, the way of the iron isn't pulling or pushing that fabric because it's a really nice weight to it. I've also got my heat resistant silicone mat here. So I'm never doing this motion with my iron either. I can simply rest it here and it's gonna be perfectly safe. Because I do have that powerful steam and I also have a hot iron, okay? So it still heats up just like a durational iron. The difference is I've got that really powerful steam. So I showed you small scale binding. Let's look at this a little bit bigger because again, I know we're all used to 
holding our iron in place, counting a few seconds, repositioning our iron to get that to press. And what typically happens, it's not actually pressed nicely, okay? So my fan's gonna hold that fabric in place and that powerful steam means that I can get a crisp crease really fast. So my binding is gonna be fast, my piecing is gonna be really fast, all of my pressing for that piecing, and the Laura store just does a phenomenal job. Okay, I've got a couple more things here that I think you're gonna like to see. So we'll just get my basket up here. There are a couple times where I'm not gonna use that steam, okay? I've got a dry microfine steam. It's a twice heated steam. It's not gonna spit or drip on my fabric. It's not gonna burn my hand. It's not gonna shrink. Well, it looks like we the gremlins got Emily. <laughs> so she or it looks like her internet froze up. Uh, man, it's it's been kind of a week, hasn't it? Uh, but anyway, let's talk a little bit about these two products, and uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about them. Now, these uh, are are products that got launched right at the end of the year in twenty three, and uh, we've got them in our systems. But I don't even think we have them on our website yet. But we're gonna show you. Uh, the products, and I've got pictures of them. We're going to show you the products, and we'll talk a little bit about the price. Now, one of the things I really like is about this first product. Kyle, can we pull that up? Okay. I think we have it where Kyle can pull that up. Okay. All right, Kyle's pulling up. There you go. So, uh, so as y'all can see, this is the Larstar uh, S-Pure Extra Irons. Now, this system, uh, what's nice about this, this is just like their top-of-the-line system, but it's almost about $1,000 cheaper. It's a $900 cheaper, a little over $900 cheaper. So this is $1,899, uh, whereas the other ones are just right at $2,800. So uh, really good I mean, a great value for what you're getting with this. You know, this is also, it's that active board with the vacuum fan system, which you saw Emily demonstrating that. Uh, it sucks your garment down, or you can reverse the fan and make it blow it up and kind of make it almost float in the air when you're steaming delicate things and it's going to take the wrinkles out. Uh, quilters absolutely love this system uh, for doing all their ironing work and things. Uh, it is such a good system. I think you're going to find, and I remember if you were here uh, the last couple of days, I think uh, I did a little poll and said, how many of y'all steam your clothes or iron your clothes? And it was overwhelmingly the number twos ironing their clothes. Got it, didn't they, Kyle? Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, all you ironers out there, this is the best of the best. You're getting steam and ironing. And uh, I tell you what, this thing is awesome. So if you are interested in this, uh, this is the Laura Star S Pure X. Uh, actually call the call center and tell them you're interested in this. $18.99. We do have a call-in special on it. Give us a call right now at 800-401-8151. Uh, this thing is absolutely fantastic. And then Kyle, do you have the other product? Yes. All right, let's show the other product. This is the, they call it the Zizzy. Izzy. Izzy, I mean, Izzy. And um, again, uh, the price on this is $8.99. Uh, great price on this. You saw all the things, and I'm sorry that she didn't get a chance to finish um, her demonstration on this. But again, another great product from Laura Star. Uh, and so either one of these products, if you are interested in, and then, you know, we actually did give away some of those handheld steamers they had. And so, any of the Laura Star systems, if you are interested in it right now, just get on the phone and give us a call and inquire about it. Uh, we do have some special financing available, and naturally, we're going to ship all their products uh, absolutely free nationwide. So give us a call right now at 800-401-8151. And again, for you ironing people out there, this is an unbelievable ironing system for the price. I'm ta You're talking about it has some of the same technologies that are top of the line is when you're getting a vacuum ironing board for this price, $18.99. Uh, 
uh, for that price of that ironing board. That is an incredible price. It's, uh, you know, $1,000 cheaper than the top of the line they've had. So uh, this is a great addition to the Lara Star lineup. All right, so we're going to continue on. Let's bring my co-host back in, Miss Jane Klaus. I love my Laura Star iron. It's amazing. I tell you what, you know, I've used this thing quite a bit. And, you know, if I was back into, you know, ironing a lot, I, I would definitely have one of these. It's because, you know, I told you I, I invested in one of the, the uh, Rowenta steam generator irons, of, right. you know, years ago with one of those nice, uh, you know, uh, wide ironing boards. And, you know, that it's a steam generator, but it is nothing like this. With that vacuum board, it pulls the steam through right. the garment. It's so much easier. And then with delicate stuff with the air blowing up, it, it makes it rise off of it and you can just steam above it and get it out. So uh, I would definitely have one of these. If I, I, you know, now Jane, I take things either to dry cleaners or I just use the, the garment steamers on them to, to do things. And but if you're doing a lot of ironing, I would highly recommend one of these. These are well, so awesome. The text messages keep coming through. <laughs> I do. I'm an I iron. I'm I'm an ironer. I'm not a steamer. Although I do <laughs> have my Laura Star Iron steamer that I love, and I actually got it a long time ago, like four years ago. So I can't remember the exact model name, but I got it during the pandemic, and it was like. Of, it was about um, sort of cleaning our masks or I can't re really remember the, the sticking point was like getting rid of like. Uh, yeah, germs. we actually talked about that on one of our shows about you could use the steam to disinfect that's as well. It, disinfect. It, it, yeah. Yeah. It disinfects yeah. all the germs and things. And, and that's one good thing about steam. Steam is really great for cleaning uh, and disinfecting. So, uh, you know, that's the great thing about it when you're using steam and iron uh, in accommodation like that. Not only are you getting your wrinkles out, but you're disinfecting that garment as well. So it it's, serves a purpose. And I know people love the these systems. And, you know, we have them in our stores and I've actually used them in there. And and they are the Cadillac of, of ironing. They really are. They're just so nice. Yeah, I mean, and, they're really, know. they really are. I got to tell you what. So my husband, thankfully, loves to iron his own shirts. And he always <laughs> has a nice collared shirt. And they're always, he's, he gets, he just gets there with the ironing board and he just starts ironing a pile of shirts. Thank God he likes to iron because I'm not doing it. But every time I bring home a new iron, like the Laura Star iron, I have a couple other irons. He's like, oh, this is, a, this is a great iron. And he gets in there. So I always test my irons based on if my husband likes it, because I mostly iron when I'm sewing and I'm doing, doing it to my fabrics and, and working out, you know, my seams and stuff. He's the one that's ironing his clothes. So if I need a tester, I just ask Kurt Klaus and he tells me what's up. <laughs> well, you know, there, and, and actually Jane, there's an art form to, to being a good ironer, you know, like using to ironing shirts and things. Uh, it takes a little practice and, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't know how to do it. And, uh, I tell you, it, it is. And you know, I remember, you know, it's like, you know, when I used to travel a lot, you know, you always, you know, you fold your shirts up and put them in your suitcase. Well, when you get to wherever you're right. at, they're always wrinkled. I know. And, you know, I would spend, you know, every night at the hotel ironing my shirts and getting things ready and your pants. And, and the uh, irons in the hotels are never that great. Oh, they're terrible. I the know. They have. <laughs> So that was actually what forced me to buy a, a hand steamer is because the irons that the, the, you never know what's going to be on them as well. And, you know, I made that mistake one time. Some, it was some grease or something was on the iron yeah. and here I go to iron my shirt and it got it all over the shirt and ruined the shirt. And that was the, you know, what I was going to wear the next day. And so know. you know, I had to rush around and go out and buy a new shirt. So that's the kind of things that, you know, you, you know, and they usually buy the cheapest one. So uh, that's why it's always nice to have a really good handheld steamer. And if you're at home and you're an ironer, have a really nice ironing system uh, because it's going to make your life a whole lot easier when you're doing ironing. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of having a big iron, a medium size iron, and a little tiny iron. I like them all over. <laughs> In fact, I have an iron. It was my mother's. I don't, I don't even know when she got it. What? So if somebody could tell me the decade, I, I don't know. I'll give you a price of something. Uh, but it's a little stick and it's got a little sort of like um, small piece of metal that's in a in a triangle shape and you press it and it just presses right into the little corners. It's this tiny little iron. Well, you know, I uh, use the little irons like that for in my airplane hobby and we use heat shrink uh, covering 
to cover the airplanes and we use those little irons they're uh, like this big yeah it's a little bitty and it has a heat adjustment right on the the yeah. sole plate with a wooden handle and uh you iron the the and shrink that heat shrink covering on there so you know that we use those all the time but you know i don't we had a show with uh ring wilcoxon here a couple weeks ago on our regular live thursday show and she had one of those uh little uh what was the brand uh, a liso oh, yeah she had one of those little small liso irons I love and, those too. and the, what she liked about it is because it she does uh you know in the hoop uh projects and they're small enough you to can, get in there yeah it will go fit right yep. in your embroidery hoop. i love it so, yeah, Mine's so like we right have those, here. and she loves those as well. So <laughs> I, lo I love those too. Uh, everyone's saying that those little tiny irons are, are from Clover, and they are from the early '90s. Um, but that could be true. Although I feel like my mom's was a little older. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I know exactly what you're talking oh, and about. And for but... and for applique, which uh, applique iron by Clover? Okay. Mini iron by Clover. Yeah. I don't know. I'll find it in our next break and I'll show it to you next time. Right. It's like this tiny little thing. I'm like, what am I doing with this? <laughs> All right. Well, Jane, we're going to continue on the show. I know you've got yeah. a great uh, session coming up next. So I'll yeah. let you get take that and I'll all see right. y'all back here in a little while. Oh, thank you, Blaine. We could talk about, couldn't we all talk about ironing and steaming all day long? I feel like we can because we've just spent maybe two days talking about ironing and steaming. Okay, let's talk about our next guest because she is our great friend, Colleen Sweatman from Brother. In the mid-1990s, she became fascinated with machine embroidery and it was love at first sight. She loves every aspect of embroidery from digitizing to seeing the design completely stitched out. And then um, she started with the earliest version of embroidery software and enjoys all the new technology and innovation and advancements in their features and the ease of use that are available in software today. I couldn't agree more. And if an item can be embroidered on, she's probably embroidered on it. She showed us yesterday. It was a very thick computer cover. She can do it all. It's Colleen Sweatman. Hi, Colleen. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. We have actual sunshine here this morning. That's a rarity. So we're enjoying it. Oh, that's so good. I love the sun. It makes me happy. It was sogging raining here and now it's sunny. I have a question for you. I saw that you, you embroidered on that really thick uh, computer cover, like the computer bag. Yeah. I think it was computer bag. What is the thickest thing you've ever embroidered on? Is that it? No. I think I know it is definitely not it. The thickest thing you you may not even know what this is because you're in a warmer climate. Do you know what a Carhartt jacket is? Uh, I don't. It's a, okay, it's a brand of work jackets, and this particular one, if I had time, I'd run and get it and show it to you. But it, it I stepped on the scale with it because I wanted to know. It oh weighs three and a half pounds. Wow. Okay. For a jacket. And it, so it's really, really heavy, but the, the stitch work was just gorgeous on it. So I love that. You're just like, you have no fear. You just throw it in there. Let it go. Well, somebody's going to ask, can you do it? And I want to be able to say yes. So I love it. I love it. You're a girl after my own heart. I'll, I'll do it. I'm going to work on something now and put something as thick as I can in my machine. Okay. So you're going to talk to us. This is my, I love the PR 680 W. This yep. is one of my faves. Well, you know, the, the 600 model was the first one of the multi-needles introduced into the lineup. And when I first saw it, it, it was love at first sight, but they wouldn't let the educators touch it. Only a sales rep could touch it. So <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, go figure. Uh, so it wasn't long before one came to, I bought one so I could have one because they were kind of hard to come by. Right. And that was a long time ago. But let me tell you what, this guy has some amazing, amazing features on him that just blow your mind. Because, you know, have you ever hoped something crooked or stupid? Yeah, and I hate it when I do that. Okay, but it doesn't matter. I actually hooped crooked and stupid. <laughs> and my design is going to come out perfectly. I know this is the feature that I love because you can, you can, you can hook, hoop it on crooked and stupid and it comes out straight. And that is my dream. So Colleen, I'm going to let you take it away and tell everybody okay. about this fabulous machine so we can all get one today. 
Okay. Well, one more thing about crooked and stupid, and I'll tell you that, is sometimes it's not crooked and stupid. Sometimes you're trying to avoid the sleeve or the collar or the, or the pocket, and you just can't get it hooped straight. So that's where this really comes to save you. So let's take a quick look. We're going to start with the screen, and I'm supposed to stand here so I'm not blocking the screen. There we go. So I want to take you someplace really special first, which is the the working screen. So you're going to go, yeah, I really care a lot about those, but you will in a minute because this is the only machine that I know of that has, where is it? There we go. This guy has a lock on it. So if you have a family at home or you're taking it to, sto to a store to work on, uh, you have the ability to lock it out. So no one can touch it, but you yourself, you can put an admin lock on it. Or if you have some trusted employees, you can give them addition, you can give them access to it with an operator lock. Uh, the um, admin lock also allows me to lock out certain things so they can only use designs that I let them use. Can you even see that in a home setting where you've got a bunch of kids that want to do what they want to do? Uh, but I love, love, love that feature. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can do all kinds of things with these and you can have multiple machines and have them all work the same way. But to me, that was like, hmm, what owner of a business thought of that? Because this six needle is an ideal business machine. Now let's take a look at some of our designs that we have in here. Of course, the ever always exciting jumbo designs. And so these guys are about I'm just going to touch one. I'll touch that guy right there and I'll touch a B so you can see him. He's up almost six inches. So these are really the bold and powerful ones so that you can show these on, um, you know, anything uh, uh, that you want a really big logo on. I do a lot of times for blankets because just an initial is really a good thing to put on there. But those are kind of exciting. Then we're going to come over here to our fonts. No, I love, love, love the fonts. So I'm going to pick one and I'm just going to type in the word mine because that's what we're going to embroider today on my bag. Now, I'm not, I'm not as in love with that font as I thought I was. So I'm going to come right down here to where I, I see the three letters and I'm going to touch it. And look, my fonts popped up. So... Maybe I'd like that one better. No, oh, I really don't. Um, how about that one? No, that's not me either. But the point of it is that I have all of these fonts. I have 38 built-in fonts to choose from. They're all uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, everything you need to write a prayer, a poem, a dedication, whatever you want to do. So I have all of these to choose from. Now I actually, oh, and these little guys right here, they're all about a quarter of an inch tall. So what are those good for? Well, backs of quilt labels, all kinds of things that those little tiny fonts are nice for. So those are fun, fun, fun to have. Now I'm going to go back to this guy and I'm just going to audition another one that I think I'd rather do. Let's see. Okay. That's my new best friend. I love that one. Don't know why, but I do. But you, like I said, you have the lowercase, you have the numbers, you have the symbols, you have all of the things that you need. So I'm going to just leave him there for a while. And I'm going to set him into place. And now I have all of these things on my screen that I can do with him. I can resize him. Now my letters have a secret thing. I can resize a letter without worrying about it. If it's a letter that's built in, it'll resize with recalculation of stitches. So that's pretty cool. And I'll show you recalculation in a little bit because that's exciting. Rotating, flipping, you can't flip letters because they'd read backwards. Density, colors. This is, is uh, icon as if I needed a whole bunch of them. So let's just say that I had um, patches. Okay, I can put a whole bunch of patches in here and it will just line them up nice and straight. This one is copy paste in case I needed another copy. This is one of my favorites. It is applique. And what this guy can do is it can choose any of these 20, I think it's 26 different shapes. So I'm going to just choose the flower. And now I can turn that into an applique patch. 
which is really nice for children's clothes or um, just to be able to remove it and put it back onto something else. But I don't want to applique that right now, so I'm going to cancel it and it's going to go away. But isn't that an exciting feature to have? Um, I remember when I taught first grade and oh my goodness, the first grade clothing bins would just get so full because kids didn't have their names in their jackets. And it's such a nice way to do that with that cute little patch. This will quilt around your thing for you in whatever hoop you have on. So that one is the outline and that one is the stippling. So you have all those at just a quick touch. I don't, I don't want those in there because I have other things that I can do, but I don't want those in there right now. And then the texting, of course, I showed you where we can go through and change all of our different fonts. Let's do this. I, what I didn't show you is sizing. So that's the big size. That's the middle size. That's the little bitty size. And let's go back to big. So it's nice the way that you can just quickly go through and get what you want and use it. So let's see, what else do I need to show you here? Oh, a little on-screen help. So we do have videos with the operation guide. We have videos that you can actually just watch. They're all less than four minutes. They run about two to three minutes. There are, there are no words because the machine is sold in so many countries. The words would take up a lot of space, but they're very clearly written are very clearly taped. So you can actually see the hands move and you can actually see the icons touched and they are pause and play. So this is what I always tell customers because they'll ask me, they'll say, well, what if I need help and it's the middle of the night? I said, well, don't call me, just to go to your videos and your videos will walk you through all of the crucial things that the machine can do. So I think that's just really great. And again, that's right here under that video icon. So let's see, what else do I need to show you here that we didn't do this? Of course, moves the hoop in and out. And I've already touched my letters in. Oh, after I've stitched this, I'll come back and show you some of the designs. Or do you want to see them now? You want to see them now? I know you all. You're that kind. I can put that back in. So this is five categories of designs. This is your color bar, so you can test it and make sure that all five needles or six needles are working perfectly before you start on a project. Uh, sometimes you'll have a color that misbehaves. I've had a couple of bad spools of thread lately. Um, so this is a category and there's just a bunch of different designs in here to work with. And there's a bunch of designs in here to work with and I'm gonna pick on the bird. I told you I'd come back to him later, but I'm gonna go ahead and do them right now. So this is a hummingbird and I like it, but it's actually a little bit too big and too bold for what I want it to do. And I told you about resizing, but I have another trick that I can do. I can set it and then I can come to, let's see, it's the next page edit. And there's a little icon that looks like this. It looks like two spools of thread. And I think that's supposed to be a hoop. So I'm going to touch it. And now I get a list of my colors. So I'm going to just scroll through my colors really quickly and they show right here what color I'm using, what it's going to do, where it's going to stitch. And I'm going to scroll this down a little bit. Oh, let's, I, got, I went a little too fast. So here's the magic that I can do. I'm going to touch this guy and right over here where it says don't sew it, I'm going to touch don't sew it. And I'm going to, I'm going to, Touch all these as don't sew. Can you see what's happening to my hummingbird? I deleted an entire segment of my design just by deleting the color. Can you do that with every design? No, because it depends on how they're digitized. But this was designed and digitized with the birds being two separate elements. So it's very easy for me to go through and delete something. I know that you've always, all of you have at one point or another run into something and wished it wasn't there. If it's the letters on the bottom or if it's whatever it is, now you do have a way to delete them. And I love this feature. I just think this is the greatest. So when I tell it, okay, there's my design and it's ready to go. So kind of exciting. 
Now we're going to go back and I'm going to put my letters in. And actually I cheated and they're in mem, whoops, those are straight. I don't want to use straight one. I mean, I don't want to use crooked ones. I want to show you that trick in a minute. So I'll just add them again. I'm going to choose that fellow right there. And there he is. Now, we talked about resizing and changing the text and cutting them and copying and pasting them. Whoops. Why does it? Oh, there we go. Rotating it, this puts a basting line around it. Why would I use a basting line? Well, we were actually kind of talking about that earlier. If I have something really heavy or really delicate, I've done, um, I've done actual three millimeter leather on this machine with no issues at all, but I don't want to hoop the leather. So I will put stabilizer in and I'll sticky stabilizer and I'll stick it to that. And then it will stay in place and I can do my embroidery without losing any of my leather. So I really like that piece. Um, so I don't have to baste. I showed you that one to get rid of it. This is a guy you haven't seen yet. And he is actually my best friend. And the reason is because I don't hoop things very straight. Um, not because I don't try, but because I just don't do it. So what I'm going to have him do is I'm going to have him fix this, this problem. So when I was hoping, I hadn't had quite enough coffee. So you can see that's really, really, really crooked and bad. And when I go to stitch my letters on there, they're just not going to look good at all. And I'm sorry, but that's okay. I don't care because I'm using the 680W and it has a secret wonderful tool. And I'm going to step aside just a minute so that you can see my hoop. And I'm going to try to stand out of the way. Can you still see my hoop? Yes. Okay. Look what I turned on. I remember I turned that laser on. Boom. So now when I touch the next thing, I am going to go to the screen because when I touch the next screen, I can decide where I want this to be aligned by. So that crosshair is going to help me be perfect, but I have to be perfect here. So this would be the center of the design. That doesn't really help me at all. This would be the top of the design. That doesn't help me at all. This is the bottom left corner. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to touch next. And it shows me what it's going to do. And I'm going to touch next. And now I'm going to move my laser. i got to stand out of the way. Nope, I can stand where I am. I have a cameraman helping me today. And he didn't help me yesterday, so I don't. Okay, so I'm going to just move my laser with the arrow keys and I can go slow, medium or fast. I'm in medium mode right now. And the laser is going to show up. He's trying to move me out of the way. The laser is going to show up in the upper corner because it's right where that uh, bottom corner of that is. Cool, huh? Now I'm going to go to the next one because one crosshair doesn't help me. So I'm going to go to next. Now this time I'm going to align just across the bottom because that's what I told it I wanted it to do earlier. And I'm going to just touch the down arrow. And now that I've adjusted that into position, I want you to look at the screen. So there's my positioning. I've done my positioning and I'm going to set it. Uh-oh, what happened to my word? My word rotated exactly, exactly perfect to align with my design. So if you've had something that was hard and impossible to hoop because of its size or buttons or zippers or decor that was already on it, you can so quickly and easily fix it with this powerful tool. To me, this is the most amazing thing in the world. And then I'm going to touch embroidery and I'm going to let it stitch. And while it's stitching, I want to show you some samples that this guy has done and it's going to stitch pretty quickly. So let's let it go here. So I'm going to come over here and do show and tell. So first of all, I hope that you can still hear me. If you can't, then I want um, to let me know. But these hoops are included, the little bitty 
the little bitty. He is, let's see, 2.4 by 1.6. The 4 by 4 that I'm using, the 5 by 7, and the 8 by 12. So nice, nice set of included hoops. Are there extra hoops you can get? Absolutely, yes. Brother has a whole assortment of hoops. This is a table that is my friend because sometimes you're embroidering on something that's really heavy, like that Carhartt jacket that Jane and I were talking about. And I want a little extra support. I don't want it to pull down on that hoop. I need the free arm, but I don't want it to pull down on that hoop. So this guy just, i to turn him around so I can do it, just pops open and slides over your free arm on your machine. And then I can pull it out. I can pull it out if I'm strong enough. When it's attached, it comes out to a 14 inches, which is the same width as a table. Can you pull that out for me? I'm not quite strong enough to do it in. You may have to release it. You may have to release the release right here. Oh. That's the problem. It locks into place, and I don't have enough hands to do it. When it's on the machine, it's easy peasy. Just release this lock. Oh, come on, baby. Well, of course, because I'm pulling on it, it won't do it, but it does it, and it goes out to 14 inches. So it's about the same width, uh, depth of a table. Love, love that piece. Here we go. He got it. Here we go. So you can see now how long that is. This part is attaching to the arm and then this is the extension. It's great for sleeves and pant legs and things like that. Now, let me show you this guy because I talked about resizing with recalculation of stitch. And you're gonna laugh and you're gonna laugh really hard and that's okay. Because the last little flower is upside down Oh, pointing at the right camera. So this is, the middle one is the size that was on the machine. And when I reduced it down to the little one, it became 50% smaller. And when I took it up to the big one, it became 200% larger. So that is a huge, I know we've all bought designs and then it was like too big and you're so aggravated. But this machine, because it has a recalculation with the changing of stitches, really, really makes a big difference. So I love that. Oh my gosh, it stopped. Well, do you want to see the rest of show and tell or stop? No, you want to see what's the rest of them, don't you? Okay, let me just pull this out of the hoop. And, oh, I'm, I'm perfect, thank you. Isn't that great? So even though I had to hoop, stupid crooked, I still have a perfect design that looks really, really cute on my bag. So I think that's a fun thing to be able to do. Now let me show you a few others. This is one of the first things I did when I got the machine because if you can't embroider on a stripe and have the tracks of the caterpillar be perfectly straight, you're not good enough, right? But look at that. That fun? Right on the stripe. Here's another one. And this is a little more important. Kids might be able to live without the pe perfectness, but adults can't. So this is a doing above a pocket. You're always going to go about a quarter to three eighths of an inch above a pocket because you want to allow clearance for if the pocket uh, leans forward and covers a portion of the design. But isn't that beautiful? It just is so crisp and clean. Uh, this is a fun one. Just this is one that's on the machine. A lot of times people are afraid, and as you already know, that's not me. I'm going to test it. So this is a leather bag. It's a fairly heavy, heavy. well, it's a nice quality bag, so it's a fairly heavy leather bag. And you can see it did there right on the, on the bag. Hot mitts. Um, we have a little place that people sometimes borrow and use, and... Uh, things that are just generic seem to get misplaced. But if it has one of my beautiful embroideries on it, it stays right where it's supposed to be. Isn't that special? And this little fella right here is showing you how to take a design and put it on a patch. And I learned to do this when I, 
when our grandson was young and he wanted to wear the same shirt every day. So I made patches and put them on all of his shirts. Otherwise he would have driven me crazy. Uh, this was another one that I did as a, when our little grandkiddo was visiting us, we were taking him with us on a little vacation and I was worried about losing him. So the three of us, my husband, my grandson and I had matching shirts. And let me just say that that was really a gigantic help because he was easy to spot wherever we were, we were matching. So there's all kinds of fun things that you can do with this. It's easy to use. It's um, very, very, very fun. Has nice assortment of hoops. There are additional hoops that I've, uh, that I've purchased for mine that are available if you wanted one. Um, I'll tell you one of my favorites because what brother does is they sell hoops and they sell them by what they made it to do and they, they have a sleeve hoop and they sell that. Well, I use it for sleeves and pant legs and the long front of a shirt, you know, that's really in style right now. So take a look, see those things. I know that you're going to be able to get some good pricing on the machines and accessories right now if you're buying uh, while this event is going on. And please, please do take advantage of what they are offering you because you'll probably never find a better deal anywhere. Have a great day. And Jane, are you there with me? I think she's going to come back and take over. I am always here with where? you, Colleen. I'm just right you here. Where? I didn't right think you'd be I'd be in your room if I could be there right now. Well, come on. I <laughs> just hang out all day and just embroider things with you. Um, so okay. I'll tell you one thing to laugh about. Right yeah. now, the, the, the door to my room has a block on it, a door lock on it. And the yeah. reason is because yeah. the cat will come in and help. Ah, oh, I love the cat. What's the cat's name? Uh, Gracie. And Gracie likes to come in and, and hang out in here and supervise, but I didn't want to step on her. Well, and sometimes like, they, like, they like to be the celebrity. They like to be the star. So those cats get right in the middle and they just start posing. And like, how do you know the camera's on you, cat? It's crazy. Because she's that important. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I love the secret wonderful tool, the laser. Yes. I love it. Um, it's magic. It's it's magic. It's totally yeah. magic. Secret wonderful is what you called it. Um, review yeah. the, the hoops included and then show us the largest hoop. That's what Barbara was asking. Oh, the largest hoop is 8 by 12. But it's actually technically, I'm going to hold it up here. It's, technically, the translation is 7 and 7 eighths by 11 and 3 quarters or something, but 8 by 12. 8 by 12 is the largest for you, Barbara. And then just review the other ones. I love that long skinny one. Somebody was asking, oh, that's amazing for the long slender items. Like you said, and I even love that for down the front of a shirt. Oh, yeah. The sleeve hoop does not come with it. These That was not an included one. That's the one you can get. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Can you just review the ones that you can't, that come with it? This guy. <laughs> the four by four. Yep. The five by seven. And the last guy is my little guy. And he is 2.4 by 1.6. Oh, tiny little guy. So, exactly. So where would you use him? Well, I used to have this brother that liked his cuffs. He always wanted embroidered cuffs. And this is just perfect for that task. Yep. It'll do a lot of other things too, but it is perfect for that. And children's designs, you don't want a great big design on a onesie. So this is perfect. I know those guys that want it right there on the sleeve. I know them. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you may have to run into a few, huh? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. Yeah. I've seen, and sometimes when you're out and you see them, you're like, I know exactly how that's done. But you don't yeah. say anything. You just look at no. it. Oh, I know how that's done. Um, well, that's amazing, Colleen. I, everyone's like, I need this machine right now. I need to have it now. So uh, I know you're petting it just like your cat. You love it. <laughs> I do. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful machine. And it's, it's, is it heavy? Somebody was asking how heavy it is. I don't know how heavy it is. My husband and I can lift it easily. Right, so it's a two people lift. 
Yeah. Oh, I well, I probably could lift it by myself, but I don't. He's there. Why would why would you not use the <laughs> husband? That's what they're there for to help us lift things and get stuff from high places. Exactly. That's why we have them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. Kelly. You're great. Thank you so much for that great demo. I love seeing Thank all you. of the samples. It makes gets me inspired to go uh make something right now. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Colleen. Everyone say thanks to Colleen. And let me show you how you can get your own PR680W because you can get it today. Yes. From our friends at Brother. It is the entrepreneur PR680W six needle multi embroidery machine. I love uh, this machine. I know everyone says that, but PR680W six needle multi embroidery machine, just like Colleen. She was like, I just have to have it. So you see your quilt fest pricing right there, $11.99.99.99. But guess what? Because it is quilt fest, you got to call for more information. You got to call for info, 800-401-8151 on this brilliant machine. If you're thinking about it, I don't know. I think, I think this is the week. This is it. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. PR680W. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Are you guys having a good time? Shake your head. Yes. You look great today. I know you do. Um, all right. We're going to move things along with our next presenter. She is back with us again from Butler Robotics. It is the lovely Aubrey Hartman. And let me tell you a little bit about Aubrey. She's a sales manager with Butler Robotics, and she's got a long history with thread, fabric, and a sewing needle. I bet she knows a few jokes, too. She's been sewing since she was five years old when she took a kid's quilting class, and she's never looked back, really and truly, because she now has a degree in theatrical costume designing, and she loves to make her own clothes. She loves to make quilts, and she really loves to make her annual Halloween costume, and we love having her here. Let's say hi to Aubrey Hartman. Hi, Aubrey. Hi, Jane. Hi, S&P Nation. How are you doing today? Well, I'm great. How are you doing today? I'm just doing so good. I love like just hanging out with everybody and just, yeah, I feel like we're all in the same room together. I don't even feel like I'm hosting a show. It's just so much fun. I know. It's like <laughs> a big group party of everybody who loves to do the same thing. So are we going to go into the design today where you did the... Um, the like newspaper print stitching? I restitched that last night just so that people could see it again after it. we're done. I also restitched the little cotton candy puffs and the design that we did at the end of yesterday. So I have all those things stitched out. When we're finished with today's demo, I can show you all of those on fabric where you can actually see it real uh, well. Okay. So I wanted everybody to see everything since today's my last day. Everybody see everything. Oh my God, it's your last day. Don't say that, Aubrey. I know, but tomorrow I get to watch everything. So I'm really excited okay. so that I can I spend time seeing everything. Too. That's okay. We still, it's not, we still have 30 more minutes with you. So I'm going to let you take it away so we can get all of the information that you have for us and enjoy your company. Sounds great. Thanks, Jane. Hi, S&P Nation. It's so great to be back with everybody today again. Um, if you haven't been with me all week. My name's Aubrey and I am with Butler Robotics. And this is my Butler system here. This is our professional system. It is a 12 inch tablet and it comes loaded with 500 designs and all of the bells and whistles that our automation system has. This might be a little too much for you. So we have two other systems available. There is our eight inch basic system and that comes with 150 designs. And we have a 10 inch system that is called the Deluxe and that comes with 250 designs. As you go up in systems, you go up in features so we can figure out what's best for you. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I have the number of patterns wrong. It's 160 patterns on the basic and 260 on the deluxe. So there's 10 more on each of those, what I said. All right, so let's get started. Now I'm working with a King Quilter 2 here, but our system is universal. So whether you've got a Gamel at home, whether you've got an APQS at home, maybe you're shopping during Quilt Fest and purchasing a long arm this week, you can put a Butler Robotics system on it. 
So let's follow along here. Now, yesterday I showed you how to use free motion to maybe sign your name or draw a design and save that and turn it into a design that you could use over and over again. Today, I'm going to use our free motion feature to actually record around what would be maybe an applique or an embroidery that you might have on your quilt top so that you can quilt around it, but not actually on top of that design. So that free motion feature does two different things. So let me bring my screen up to you so you can see where that free motion button is. That's over here on the right hand side of our display. It looks like a little video camera. And when I engage that, my screen changes and I've got a couple buttons over here. So this one up here is gonna be our record button. And when we engage that, it turns orange. And when we disengage it, it goes back to white. And then the button we're gonna use today is the applique button that's down here on the bottom. So I'm gonna come over to the square that I've got and it might be cut off a little bit by the bar that runs across the bottom of your screen, but I'll let you look at that later so you can actually see what I was working on. The first thing we're gonna do is um, go into our layout screen that we've been using all week long and we're gonna create a layout box around our green polka dotted fabric here. I'm going to have my layout and I'm going to hit the plus sign that's on the right hand side of my display to create my box. My Butler Robotics is telling me to set the first point in my pattern box. I'm going to hover my needle over the top left hand corner of my little green polka dot square and I'm going to hit my plus sign. I'm going to come down to the bottom left of my green polka dot square, hover that needle over that corner and hit my plus sign again. I'm going to move over to the bottom right of that green polka dot square, hover that needle over the corner, hit my plus sign again, and then I am going to move up to that top right corner and I'm going to hit my check mark to tell the robotic system that I'm all done making that layout box. So what I've got here on my screen, I'm going to bring this over to you, the orange dotted line and that box represents my green polka dot fabric. I'm gonna go into my pattern files, this little button over here that looks like a file folder. And I've got all of my patterns in here that are available on my system. And there are lots and lots of those because I've got the professional system here. But I'm gonna choose one that I know I like and that we've used before on here because I'm trying to keep things a little cohesive. So I'm gonna hit that white tab here and bring up my keyboard and I'm gonna type bubble. And we're going to find those cute little bubbles that we've been using throughout this quilt. So I'm going to highlight that orange and let me bring this back into screen for you. We've got our green check mark over here on the right hand side. So when I hit that green check mark, it brings our design into our layout square, but we need to fill it. We've only got a couple bubbles over here. So we're going to use our repeat button up here at the top of our screen and I've got my repeats, both horizontal and vertical, so we're gonna add some more. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this horizontally three times and vertically three times so that I get a good fill of those bubbles. But if you can see, I've got a lot of bubbles outside of my little layout space, so we need to go to our scale feature and resize this so all those bubbles fit into my square. So I'm gonna go to my scale feature and I've got my slider bars and my plus and minus buttons that are gonna allow me to change the size. So I'm just gonna shrink this down by hitting my minus button. And I'm changing that vertically right now to get those bubbles inside my square. And then I'm gonna use the minus over here and I'm gonna change that horizontally and pull those bubbles inside that square. All right, so now all of my bubbles fit in that square. So that's my first step. Now I'm going to go to that free motion button next and I'm going to record around the circle or my applique that I've got here on my quilt. So I'm going to hit my free motion and I've got my blank screen. I'm not going to turn on record yet because I have to move into place. So I'm going to come over to my orange dot that I've got in the middle of my green dotted fabric. And I'm going to get myself into place and I'm using, there's a little tiny um, hole that's in the middle of this foot. And I'm going to use that as a guide to kind of make myself consistent around this. I'm not great at free motion. We've all talked about this this week, 
I'm getting better, but I'm going to use that as a guide so that I try to stay in even width around this little circle that I've got here. I'm going to turn on my record feature and I'm just going to slowly use my machine and trace around my little circle here. Just trying to stay equal distance all the way around. It's gonna be a little bit wobbly. I know it's gonna be a little bit wobbly. I feel under pressure. And when I get back up to the top, I'm gonna to make sure my green start dot and my red uh, square for stop kind of land on top of each other. And then I'm gonna turn off my record button and I've got a big wibbly wobbly circle here. It doesn't look as wibbly wobbly from your point of view, but believe me, it is it is not very circular. I'm going to hit my applique button now. And when I do that, my little circle turns yellow and I can guarantee you guys probably can't see that through the camera, but it is yellow. It's very bright yellow. That means that it is now turned into an applique. So I'm going to go back to my layout screen and now my little wibbly wobbly circle is very big and it says three of three. So I know that it's there and my applique is ready to be used. But I wanna go back and I'm gonna use my back arrow down here to number two of three, which is my layout box with the bubbles that we've already used. If I go back one more time, you see my big red box, which is my whole safe area that I set when I first turned my robotic system on. We want to use number 203, which is our green dotted fabric that we filled in with the circles. I'm now going to go to my edit feature, which is up here on the left hand side of the screen. And I'm going to use my crop feature. So my crop feature is down here on the right hand side of the screen. And when I hit that, I get some options across the bottom. I'm going to use one of my crop buttons and it is now removed that applique worth of design area from my whole layout square. So now when I stitch this design out, it's gonna stitch out all my bubbles, except the area where we took out that applique area, because I don't want my bubbles stitching over my cute little design. So this is really great feature to have if you're someone who likes to do a lot of applique work and you wanna do background fill quilting around your applique work with your long arm. Or if you're someone who has one of those wonderful embroidery machines and you like to do embroidery work on your quilt tops, you can fill in around those too. I just love this feature. It's really convenient to have. So that was a lot of fun and I will stitch this out later, but we're gonna move on because these bubbles do take a long time. The next thing I wanna show you is we've been working square after square after square. I'm gonna do some triangles. So we're gonna do this little block that I've got over here. It's a four patch, but I'm just gonna divide these into half square triangles using my robotic system. So I'm only gonna stitch out a triangle worth instead of a whole square worth. I'm gonna go back to my layout and we're gonna start a new layout. So I'm gonna hit my plus sign to create a new layout box. And my robotic system is telling me to set the first point in my pattern box. I'll be using that little plus sign down here to do that. I'm gonna come over to my little squares here, and I'm gonna start in the top corner of this big green bubbly fabric here. I don't know if you guys can tell based on my fabric choices, but I really love polka dots, and I'm pretty sure polka dots end up in every single quilt that I make. Okay, I'm hovering over the top left-hand corner of this little square here, and I'm gonna hit my plus sign. I'm now going to move to the right and hit the other corner that's at the top of this square. I'm gonna hover my needle over that and hit my plus sign again. And then I'm gonna come down to the bottom right corner, hover my needle over that and hit the check mark this time. So I've only marked three points and in marking three points, I get a triangle. So now I want to fill that in and find my patterns. I'm going to go ahead and open my patterns and we were in bubbles last, but I'm going to hit filter to go back to my full list of patterns available. I am going to scroll down and find the pattern that I was using. 
you can see there are tons and tons of patterns available. I have yet to purchase a pattern and load on my system because there are so many options, but you can purchase designs and import them onto your robotic system just in case you can't find something that is perfect for the quilt you're working on. Um, you can import something that you've purchased off a design website. I'm going to go to recents because I know I've used it recently. Um, you just need to make sure you're using the correct file type when you purchase. You'll need to purchase with a QLI, a QCC, or a DXF pattern file if you're buying something to import onto your robotic system. Okay, here's the little pattern that I was using last time. So I've got it here and I'm gonna hit my check mark to load it into the system. Now you can see this is very large and I've got a very small triangle here and it's not in the correct orientation. So we're gonna have to rotate it and then we're gonna have to scale it into our triangle. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rotate it and my rotate uh, button is right here. It's a little square on point with little swishy arrows on it. So we'll touch that. And I've got my options to rotate here. So I've got 45 degree angle rotations where it'll quickly rotate. But you have plus and minus signs where you can rotate those just one degree at a time if you're trying to really specially place something and then get it at a perfect angle. You can also open a touch keypad here if you know the angle that you want something at. You could type that in exactly and get it set into place. But I'm going to go ahead and use my 45 degree rotate. Um, if you wanted to rotate by using your uh, touch screen, you can also highlight this. And there's a red node that appears at the bottom of your design and you can rotate it with your finger on your screen in both directions. I'm just gonna hit my 45 degree rotate one time and it's gonna rotate for me. So now I'm in the right orientation to get into my triangle. The next thing I need to do is actually get it into that triangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my scale feature. And I know that I can very easily just size it down with my buttons and sliders, or I'm gonna go ahead and use my auto scale. Um, I love using this button because it does all of the hard work for me. So when I hit my auto scale, it perfectly places my design into my triangle for me. So now that that's all set, we're ready to stitch out. So when we stitch out, we go to home, and we make sure our needle is engaged. So my needle's highlighted white with uh, an orange needle and orange thread. That means it is engaged and ready to be used. If it's not highlighted, you're in trace mode. So you can use trace mode if you wanna make sure something's in the right place. If you start with trace mode, your machine is gonna trace around the design but not actually stitch. So it's a great way for you to double check that things are where you want them to be. But if you want it to stitch, you need to engage your needle and then we're ready to go so we can hit start. Our machine's always gonna give us our directions, so you just follow along with what your robotic system is telling you. It's telling us that our machine is going to go to the start of the pattern block, and then the pattern's gonna start, and we need to verify that our needle is up. We never ever wanna start with our needle down in our fabric or hovering right over the top of our fabric. We don't wanna risk tearing our fabric or pulling or running our fabric. That would ruin our whole quilt top, and We've spent so much time working on this, it would be a shame to do that. So my needle's up. So we're gonna go ahead and hit our check mark. And our robot's gonna take a second to think about that and then take control over our machine and move into position. I'm gonna grab my little scissors here. And then we're just gonna follow along with the prompts. So my robotic system is telling me to do a single stitch with my quilting machine. So I'm gonna bring my needle up and down and hit my green check mark. My next direction is to pull up my bobbin thread and then press okay. So I'm just gonna shift my machine out of the way for a second, grab my bobbin thread, and then pull it back close by. I'll hit my green check mark. My machine shifts back into place and it says to cycle my needles to lock my stitches. I'm a three cycler. I like three locking stitches, but that is all preference. You might be a four or five locker, um, but I like to do three tie off stitches or three locking stitches at the beginning and the end of a design. I'll hit my green check mark. And now my robotic system is telling me to turn the stitching on and then press the check mark and my machine will begin to move. So I'm gonna turn my stitching on on my handlebars and I'm gonna hit my green check mark and off it goes. 
just going to clip my little tail thread off here. And that's just going to take a few minutes to stitch out. And when it's done, it will go ahead and stop. We do have speed control here on the side of our display screen. I'm running at a 30 right now, which I find pretty average for how my machine runs. I can go faster if it's a loose design that doesn't have a lot of points or curves to it. Um, and I can go slower if I have a very dense design that has a lot of stitching in it. That way I know everything comes out crisp and clean and I can follow along. The other thing that I have here on my screen are some blue crosshairs and they are following along with my design as I go. Yes, Lindsay. Does, does yes, everybody. Lindsay had a great question. It was, does the display come with the robot? So yes, when you purchase your Butler robotic system, the display does come with your system. And like I said earlier, if you purchase the basic, it comes with an eight inch display. The deluxe comes with a 10 inch display and the professional, which is what I have here, comes with a 12 inch display. You also get your motor box, which I happen to have one here. You get your motor box with it. And then all of the cables and belts that you need to get this onto your long arm system. When you purchase, you will probably have to send in some information about your particular machine and frame and maybe some pictures so that we can get you the right kit to go with your machine and frame at home. But you get all of this when you do purchase. So no need to go out and buy a tablet or anything like that. You get this full color EPC display touchscreen with your purchase. Okay, it is telling me to turn the stitching off on my long arm. So I just turn that off and I'm gonna hit my check mark. We're gonna cycle our needle again. So these are my locking stitches and I'm gonna hit my check mark. And now I can go ahead and pull my bobbin thread up to the surface so that I have that ready to go for my next design. Now from here, we could go ahead and do our modify that we did the other day and move on to the next triangle. So I'm gonna bring this back over to you guys. So we can go back to layout to do the next triangle and I can use my modify, which was my little wrench over here on the right hand side of my screen. So I can hit my wrench and then go to the next triangle and hit my, four, my three corners. So I'll add my plus sign at my top corner, my bottom corner, and then on my third corner, I'll have to hit my check mark. Now let me show you what happens when you do that. Because my triangles are all facing different directions because I'm doing the outside of those squares, my design popped into place, but it's in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna have to rotate it. So I'm gonna go to edit. I'm going to go to get my buttons in screen. I'm going to go back to my rotate and I'm going to hit my 45 degree angle button to rotate that in the correct direction. Hit my scale button and hit my auto scale and it is back in place just the way we need it to be to start the next stitch out. So it's pretty simple to go ahead and fill in your quilt top when you're doing custom designs by using different techniques like this. But all you really need are two points to start a square. You can use four points for a square or a rectangle. You can do three points for your triangle. You can do hexagons. You can do circles. You can hit points all the way around and do a circle. That's how I put the little um, design in the circle that I've got here on my quilt that I will show you when we are almost done. Um, it is a quilting design. I just threw a little circle of fabric on here and put a quilting design in it. So you can actually do a circle and stitch that. And I know a lot of us love putting circles on our quilts because they make fun polka dot designs for baby quilts and things like that, the center of Dresden's. So you can do circles with your robotic system. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're getting close to the end. So I want to show you really quick how you can do an edge to edge layout for the full top of your quilt, just so you can see that it only takes a few seconds to get that done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to layout and hit my plus sign for a new layout. And I am going to go to the top left hand corner of my quilt top. 
to hit my plus sign. And I'm gonna just go slightly over the outside edge and hit my plus. And then I'm gonna come to the bottom front right corner of my quilt top and go slightly over and hit my check mark. And now I've got a big giant layout box, which is the whole quilt top here. So if I were doing an edge to edge design, that's what I would wanna do. I can easily go into my patterns and choose a pattern. Let's choose our little cotton candy and hit my check mark. So that's got it mostly filled in, but there's a little bit down on the bottom that's not filled in. And then we have to fill in across here. I can go, let me make sure you're in screen. I can go to my repeat function, hit my autofill, and now I am completely filled in and ready to start stitching out the first full pass of an edge to edge design. What's really great is that once this is stitched out, there is a nesting feature on your Butler robotic system that will help you perfectly line up and nest your subsequent rows as you quilt down your entire quilt top, gives you directions on where to mark your quilt, where to roll your quilt and get everything lined up perfectly. So there's no guesswork. And I use that nesting feature all the time and it makes quick work of an edge to edge project. So I really love it. And it is that simple to do kind of an edge to edge design. Um, I mean, I, I click the button just a few times. Oh, Lindsay has another question. I mark slightly off the side of the quilt just in case my quilt top is not on my frame completely square. That way, as I'm nesting down, I've got a little wiggle room on each side that my design's going to quilt off a little bit. That's just a personal preference thing. Everybody quilts different. That's just the way I mark slightly off my quilt top so that I have wiggle room because I might be a little bit off with my quilt. Another oh, question. another question. Can you upgrade between, like if you get one, can you upgrade to the other? Okay, so the question was, can you upgrade if you start out with one system and then decide you want to go to another system? Yes, yes, you can upgrade. So if you get a little nervous about buying the professional, maybe you want to start a little bit smaller, see how you like it, and then yes, you can upgrade when you're ready. All right, guys, I want to... Oh, Lindsay has one more question before I take you down. Uh, they, there was asked, someone asked a question about if you would just start off with the professional first, or would it be better to start with one of like the lowers and move up? What are your thoughts on that? So thoughts, thoughts on whether you start out with the basic first and then move up to the professional or whether you would just start with the professional. That's really um, what's going to be best for you. I, I can't tell you to do one thing over the other. I started out with a professional. Um, I'm kind of an all or nothing girl. So I said, let's do the top of the line. Let me learn everything it has to offer because if it's there, then I will learn to use it. Um, so I wanted to start out with the top of the line, but you start out with what you feel comfortable with and you can know that you can upgrade if you don't go top of the line first. I also kind of need the large screen um, because of my glasses. So um, it really helped me having the larger screen with it. And I like that I had over 500 patterns available to me. I have yet to buy anything and I've had my system for over a year. So there were a lot of factors that made me want to stay with the top of the line. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys down so you can see what we've quilted since we're getting to the end of our session today. So yesterday we used multiple designs and created this design. And so I stitched this out on this row for you. So you could see we had this little design and we resized it and we rotated it. And then we put this design in the center and then we combined them all and saved it. So because we saved it, I was able to use it again today. And then over here, I redid the little cotton candy puffs in this border. So you could see it because there's orange stitching on yellow polka dots instead of orange stitching on orange. So I hope you guys 
can see that a little bit better. And then this is the little circle that we applicate around today. And you might be able to see it, but there's actually a swirl quilting in this. And that is actually how I applicate this down. I actually just quilted that down. And then this is our little triangle that we did today. So you can see the design runs from corner to corner. And I filled in the corner. I filled in this corner too earlier today. So I'm gonna fill in these other corners down here and then probably do something different in the middle. And then as Jane wanted, I stitched out the word retro, which we did at the end of yesterday as well in here. And I think you can see it a little bit better on this one with the orange thread on kind of the white polka dot fabric instead of the orange thread on the green. So, and then I did get that design stitched out on this one as well. All right, let me get you guys set back up here. I really appreciate you guys going on this quilting journey with me. It's always fun to try new techniques and try something different on a quilt. And these live shows are so much fun because I get feedback from all of you and I get to be a little bit more creative. So I think it's time to go back to Jane so she can tell you how to get one of our three Butler Robotics systems. You got that right, Aubrey. Great presentation. We love seeing you work. It's so much fun because you're like demonstrating and talking, but you're also like totally into it. Like we're not even there. <laughs> you're I know. It's so, Nesker. it's so much fun when your hobby and your job are the same thing. I know it. It's amazing. That's how I live my life, friend. <laughs> Well, we are just so appreciative that you've been here with us all week. I know tomorrow you'll be watching and we'll be missing you. Can people get a hold of you if they just want to like pop in and say hi? Um, they can always check in on Quilters Easy Corner. We do a Facebook um, presentation that we put out every Friday at 11. And so I can um, do... Uh, fe it's called Feature Friday. So right. I always record those and put them out. So you can always see me there and comment and we can always get back to you on that if you have any questions. Well, and I just want to make sure because now you're leaving us. We're not, we need to get a hold of you, Aubrey. People are like, like I could listen to her all day. So they need to know where to find you to listen to you again. So we appreciate your time and your talents and everything. Thank you. Oh, Thank you, Jane. You bet. I'm going to tell everybody how they can get their hands on one of these amazing machines from Butler Robotics. You've got that Butler Robotic Long Arm Quilting Robotics. This is the basic edition. I know Aubrey went through all of these. This is the eight inch display. You see your pricing there, 4359. Of course, there is a call in special with this one, 800 401 8151. Now, this one, you're getting. 160 free patterns, but wait, but wait, there's more. If you get the deluxe edition, there it is right there. That is the 10 inch display. So a little bit bigger and the price there, $5,949. Again, there's a call in special on this one. So you're getting everything from basic plus you're getting 260 free patterns and a couple more things here in the deluxe version. But wait, but wait, there's more. The professional edition with the 12 inch display. And I know I've been talking about this it's the same price as the deluxe. I think it's like $50 difference. $5,999. Again, call in special there, 800 401 8151. And you're getting 500 free patterns with this one. So everything from basic, everything from deluxe. And then you're getting the plus, which is more fonts, the point to point channel locks, and the 500 free patterns. And again, you're getting that 12 inch display. And I know Aubrey said, I love the 12 inch display. I think we all kind of agree that we like it too. And then Blaine and I talked this week always, if you're going to go deluxe, you might as well go professional because it's the same price. Yes, Blaine is winking at you right now. 800-401-8151 with that call in special. That's the famous Blaine wink. Blaine, are you winking at us right now? <laughs> I am, Jane. So <laughs> wink, wink, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All we right. Remember, well, hey, you remember every word you say to us, Blaine. I know. So, hey, Jane, I'm going to bring you back pretty quick. Cool. Uh, actually, our next presenter, Kelly Latre from Juki, 
uh, couldn't be here today. So she did a little quick video for us. That's only about uh, how long? Nine minutes, nine, ten minutes long. Oh. And uh, we're going to show that video and then I'm going to tell everybody how they can get the product that she's showing. And then I'll bring you back at about 1245, hopefully, and we will do some giveaways. What do you think? Yay! Finally, giveaways. What do you think, everybody? <laughs> They're like, hurry it up. Let's get to All the right. giveaways. I'll see you All right. then. All right. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, guys. Uh, like I said, Kelly is not able to be here live, but she did shoot a video uh, on, on the product. And we're actually going to talk about that Joe, uh, Ajiki Maobi. Uh, J350 with the frame. And again, if you've not seen this, this is the 18 inch long arm. We're going to talk about the one that's on the frame and a sit down version of it as well. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you can get either one of them. But so Kennedy, roll that video. Hi, my name is Kelly with Juki America. And today we're going to explore the wonderful world of the Juki long arm, the Miyabi. Today, we have it mounted in a frame. This is a five foot frame. You can also opt for a 10 foot frame and both of those frames can be expanded two feet. So you could work with a seven foot frame or a 12 foot frame. It really is dependent on the space you have because you'll wanna have room behind the frame and in front of the frame to maneuver the machine. But let me show you how it works in the frame. I'm just going to start the machine and run it with the handlebars. It's so fun and easy to quilt on the Miyabi and do free form quilting because it has a stitch regulator built in. It is an easy system to use and the machine itself is an industrial machine. So that means for you, less maintenance. So let's go explore the Miyabi as a sit down. The Miyabi long arm by Juki is technically an industrial machine. As you may know, Juki is the largest industrial machine in the world, and yet we're small in the home industry. But what this means to you for the long arm to be industrial is that the motor is sealed. So you won't have to bring the long arm in for service on an annual basis. What's important is that you oil the shuttle and de-lint the machine as you're quilting. So let's take a closer look at some of the features. This is the long arm. And one thing I love that we have is an auxiliary hand wheel in the front. So you can raise and lower your needle real close. You don't have to come all the way back to the machine to get to the hand wheel. Another wonderful feature is that we have a separate motor for bobbin winding. It takes an M class bobbin and you can wind a bobbin as you quilt if you so choose. The threading's relatively straightforward on the Miyabi and it's easy to do. You're going to want to use a, a 16 or 18 size needle when quilting on the Miyabi. And let's take a look at the options on the screen. On the screen, there are four options to choose from. I can select cruise, precise, basting stitch or manual. Manual will turn off the stitch regulation. Now going back to cruise, cruise is nice when you're cruising along during cur doing curves and free form stippling. Precise is wonderful for straight lines and for ruler work. So that is the nice thing about the Miyabi. You can customize it to what you are quilting. I also have a built-in thread cutter, which is really convenient for just a clean finish on your quilt. You can choose to turn that on and off. I also can set my stitches per inch. I have a needle up down function and I can adjust the speed to what I want when I'm sewing so that my speed interacts with how I move the fabric. 
In settings, I can adjust the light and uh, turn on and off the foot control so I can use it or not use it when I'm in the cruise function. So I'm gonna go back to the main menu and we'll talk about stitch regulation. The stitch regulation is located here. The laser lights will come on while you're sewing and regulate your movement and the stitch so that you get a beautiful stitch while you freeform quilt on the Miyabi. I'm using this stitch regulator on the Miyabi. If you go too fast, it'll begin to beep. So that's a nice reminder that I'm going a little too fast for the system. Let's take a look at the threading because although it looks complicated, it's very easy. For threading, I'm gonna start with my cone on the cone holder and then go through one of the thread guides at the top. To form an S-curve, I'm gonna start with my thread in the hole and then bring it through again from the back. Then I'm gonna to proceed to the pre-tension and take that thread over between the discs. I'm also gonna put the thread in this thread guide and then down to the main tension. There we go. So now I'm gonna go through the discs of the tension under this hook. I'm gonna take it up through this thread guide and then the eyelet of the take-up level. There we go. There's a thread guide right under that take-up lever. And then I'm gonna to proceed to the thread guides above the needle. There are two. I'm just gonna thread it through this guide. And then through the thread guide above the needle. I've lowered the presser foot to give me enough room to thread the needle. And remember that eye is big because generally speaking, you're using a size 16 or 18 needle when doing long arming. Let's take a look at the bobbin threading. To thread the bobbin case, I'm just gonna drop the bobbin thread in it and then go through the guide on the side so that it comes out smooth and easy. I then take the lever on the bobbin case so I can just simply put it in the machine and I'm ready to go. For maintenance on the long arm, what you'll wanna do is delint the machine and oil it about every eight hours of sewing, but that will vary. What I generally do is do it after each project. I take my lint brush, delint the shuttle area and the needle area, and then after that, I will oil the shuttle with one drop of oil. I'm going to place a drop of oil right inside that shuttle, and Juki makes a fantastic oiling pen that'll dispense only a drop of oil at a time. So it's easy to lubricate the long arm. You can spend hours freeform quilting on the Miyabe as a sit down. And remember, it's versatile enough that you can put the same machine in a frame, whether it's five feet, 10 feet, or with an extension of seven or 12 feet. You can then add robotics so you can create personalized quilting for anyone. 
However, I'm a learning quilting, as you know, so I love the sit down because I can freeform quilt like a pro. Juki has made this ring that I love to use, or you can use our paddles to guide the fabric. Many quilters also love the quilt gloves. So whatever way you freeform with the built-in laser stitch regulator on our long arm, second to none in quality of stitching. So when you get your long arm home, enjoy it, practice, and have a lot of fun. All righty. Well, thanks, Kennedy, for playing that video. And yeah, thank you all for watching that. Um, wish uh, Kelly could have been with us, but she couldn't be here today. So we actually had to uh, get her to show a, do a little quick video for us. Uh, but anyway, I uh, hope you all got a little bit of an overview on that. It, it's uh, She didn't get to go in real lot of depth. She didn't have a lot of time. However, we can tell you all about it. So what you're seeing on the screen now is the one that's the stand up. And again, it's you can get it a five foot frame with a two foot extension to make it seven feet. Or you can do a 10 foot frame. And if you wanted to get it bigger, you can uh, add a two foot extension and make it a 12 foot. Uh, the price on this one. Uh, is $10,999. We do have a call-in special on it, uh, and we have some special financing available. So give us a call at 800-401-8151. Uh, all of our people on the phones can tell you all about it. Now, it is, uh, you know, it's an 18-inch uh, throat space. It's 10 inches high on the up to the harp. Uh, it has that big, large LCD color screen on it. it has the built-in bobbin winder. It uh, has that really ergonomically positioned auxiliary hand wheel. So if y'all saw how she showed y'all that, that's midway. So it's really easy to get to, to put your needle up and needle down if you need it. It has the ruler compa compatible standard uh, presser foot, uh, has the bobbin estimator on it. So you can make sure you don't run out of your bobbins, has that automatic thread trimmer. Uh, the push button controls are on the handlebar. The handlebars are all fully adjustable has that laser light guide and it has that directional bright LED lighting on it. Uh, this is a really, really nice quilting machine. Now the sit down version uh, you saw is $64.99, <coughs> excuse me. And so you're getting the same head as we just talked about, but you're getting that table. And again, uh, you're going to be able to do your free motion. It has the, uh, the, uh, stitch regulation eyes are built into the table on each side of the pressure plate. And do, can we pull up the dimensions anywhere, Kyle, on the table? That's what I was wanting to see um, so I could give everybody the dimensions. There we go, right there, I think it is. Yeah, the main table size on this, just to kind of give you some examples, uh, it's 35.4 inches wide and it's 33.7 inches deep. So y'all can, that's gonna be the footprint for it. You're gonna need, if you're limited on space, again, 35. So let's just say 36 inches wide by 34 inches deep. That'll give you a really good, uh, you know, kind of estimate where you can go in and measure for to make sure you're gonna need it. So anyway, it has that uh, M style uh, bobbin for it as well. So if y'all are interested in either one of these, the sit down or the stand up, we have them, and just to let you know, if you buy the sit down and you eventually want to convert it to a stand up, you can convert it by putting handlebars and buying a frame. So there is a conversion there. So anyway, uh, give us a call right now for either one of these, 800-401-8151. We're fr sh free shipping nationwide for both, and we have some special financing for both of them as well. All right, we're going to continue on. So let's bring uh, my co-host back in, Jane Klaus. Hello, Ooh. hello. So I said 12.45 our time, it's 12.46 our time. So I was a minute late. So we're gonna give some stuff away extra special since I was late. You got to get maybe <laughs> extra, extra, extra special because you are a minute late. Am I, am I watch or two minutes late? Okay, <laughs> all right. It's fashionable. Or I'm fast, fashionable I'm not sure. Late. Yeah. All right, so um, what I think we ought to give away, Kennedy has been uh, rummaging around in that prize closet over there. And we're going to start out and we're going to give away some of our famous event bags. Yes. And these are, there comes in eight different colors. They all have unique sayings on one side of them. And it has the SMP logo and our information on the other side. 
for the pr uh, pack of eight, these are $49.99 on our website, or you can buy them for $9.99 each. So we're going to give two viewers a set of bags. So Kennedy, yes. spin that wheel. This is the first spin of the day? Yes. I think it is. Oh, my goodness. What is happening? I don't know. We're kind of dropping the ball. On the... We're busy. We're busy. Oh, Kelly Nation. Oh, Chiefs. Chiefs. <laughs> oh, Chiefs. All yeah. right, Jane. Kelly Nation watching from Facebook. So let her know how she can get or he <laughs> can get their bags. Kelly Nation, you need to go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize, the prize of the bags. Amazing. Scroll to the bottom, fill out all the information. And uh, so we know where to send those to you. Congrat congratulations, Kelly Nation, watching us on Facebook. There we go. All what right, a great Kennedy, name, Kelly Nation. Let's yeah. give us another bag winner. So spin that wheel. Woo. It gets so nerve wracking when it gets close to the end. <laughs> Virginia Fuchs, congratulations! You are a winner of the set of bags. Watching us on YouTube, Virginia. Thank you so much for joining us today and all of this week. Uh, go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize. You've got 30 days to redeem those set of bags. But what you need to do is go there and fill out all the information so we know where to send them. That is correct. Hey, Blaine, right. I have an idea. What's Maybe that? when you start, when you order new bags, Maybe one of the bags should have some of our jokes on them. <laughs> Could. Say it. Might be an idea. We could do, we could do a Jane bag. Jane bag. Could do, yeah, yeah, we could. We could do it. Uh, the yellow one. Put yeah. Jane Klaus close. Or uh, uh, Jane Klaus quotes. Yes. Yeah, that would be fun. More is more and less is a bore and it's yellow. <laughs> All righty. So. Next it. up is we're going to give away a couple so mats. Okay. The world famous so mats. And uh, these come in uh, 13 different colors, four different sizes. So, Kennedy, yes. spin that wheel. You got it. It's so tense, the, the tension. No. <laughs> Margo Gutierrez. Margot Gutier? Margot, that's what I think. I think so too. Blaine? I'm not even going to attempt it. Gutier, Gutier. Margot, you are the winner of a so mad watching us on YouTube today. So go to smplive.tv to redeem you your better. so mad. Fill out all the information. The most important thing, Margot, is you need to tell us what color you Got need it. and you want and what size, right, Blaine? Size. Margo, I would pronounce it gutter. Gutter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like Gutier. Gutier. Yes. She to Jean Paul. <laughs> Don't you know? But that is correct, Jane. She needs to let us know what size, what color, and yeah. we'll get that chipped out to her. All right. Perfect. So let's get us another uh, winner of the mat. So okay. Kennedy. Spin that wheel. Because you don't want to do your machine a disservice without a uh, mat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I almost said without a bag. <laughs> Debbie Dunn. So Debbie Dunn's watching today from YouTube. So congratulations, Debbie. Jane, let her know how she can get that. Prize. Oh, Debbie Dunn. What you need to do is go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize and scroll to the bottom, fill out all the information. The most important thing you need to do really and truly is to tell us what size you want and what color so that you get the right one to your door and then you will no longer be doing your machine a disservice. That is correct. All right, one more giveaway. And oh uh, we're going to give away a sewing machine. Okay. And uh, let's give away that Janome So It's $725, $399 value, Jane. So let you, let you do the honors, Jane. Kennedy. Yes. Spin that wheel. Okay. <laughs> I was trying, I was doing sort of like Blaine, like real fast. Yeah. Linda Guest. So congratulations, Linda. You're watching today from YouTube. So Jane, let her know how she can claim that prize. Oh, Linda, go to smplive.tv, scroll to the bottom, figure out, figure out, no, 
fill out all the information. Tell us your name, your address, where we're sending your sewing machine to. And then we will get that out to you ASAP because SMP has got all the people ready to fulfill not only the orders, but also the prizes. Very good. Thank you. Hey, Jane, have you heard any good jokes lately? <laughs> well, I got one. All right. Uh, gosh, I can't remember which ones I've told you guys already, but if I've said this one, stop me. Why was the fabric always so calm? Why was the fabric always so calm? Mm -hmm. Because it was held together by strong stitches and it never split under pressure. Oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. She's we here still, all day, folks. I'm here all week. We got one. We got the rest of today and tomorrow so we can finish out all the jokes. And I have six more between. Oh, my two. gosh. Oh, yeah. I got them. I got them. Well, I think and you then, better tell another one then. Oh, geez. Um, I'm looking over here. Well, um, okay. Why was the quilter a great comedian? Did I tell you this one yet? Why was the quil quilter a great comedian? I have no idea. Because she had perfect timing and her punchlines were always on the bias. <laughs> yeah, that's good. James, James. All right, folks, she's here all with all the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jane. Well, hey, we're going to continue on and uh, we'll bring you back in here in just a few minutes. But we're going to go all the way over to Florida. And we got a special uh, presenter coming up next. She is going to talk all about the Baby Lock Altair 2. And we have Melinda Stevenson coming in. And Melinda, you know, throughout her time at ba as a Baby Lock educator, she's made an important discovery. She's learned to learn that people who sew tend to be smart, creative, and determined. These are the people who make the world a better place. They are givers. The majority of their sewing tends to be for other people. And their generous spirit is contagious. And that brings her so much joy, she says. And she loves connecting with those people. It is her favorite part of teaching with her. Healthier when our, it's, she says, we are healthier when we are a, in a community. And teaching engages me in the fabulous community of men and women who love and learn to love to sew. And what a great saying that is. And she is just as sweet, y'all, in person as she is on TV. So y'all make welcome Melinda Stevenson. Thank you so much, Flynn. You are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you for your kind <laughs> words. I really I'm not the sweet that. one here. You are. And, you know, you really are. And everybody that meets you says the same thing, Melinda. And uh, you just bring joy to everybody. And we're so excited that you're on our show. So I'm going to let you take it away because I know this is one of your favorite machines. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for, this is one of the quilters favorite machines mm -hmm. because it does so many things and in broadries. That's the That's cool right. thing about it. It's a, so it's a we'll take it away. Two for one. Thank you so much, Blaine. I'm really happy to be here. And I wish I had three hours um, to show you all the really cool things that the Altier 2 does. I'm going to just spend some time showing you some of my very favorite things, some of the things that I just like to do on the Altier. OK, so I'm going to switch cameras now and um, move us over to the Altier. OK, let me get this light off. There we go. Okay, so you can see when you open the machine, whoop, when you open the machine, you're going to get this screen. And this screen enables you to both embroider, as you can see, and sew. Very easy to navigate the screen. If you've done any uh, stitching on our um, baby lock machines, you're going to be familiar with this screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with sewing. OK, because those of you who are quilters are going to want to use some sewing. We have some really new fun things that this um, Altair 2 does. 
and a couple of just basic things. Um, for those of you who are quilters, you can see right here that, that there's a Q and that's for quilting stitches, okay? These are specifically designed for um, quilters. You can see that you can change your width and length, but one of the things that happens, uh, the quilting stitch defaults to a two millimeter length rather than the 2.5 millimeter length on the utility stitch or the sewing side. So that quilters prefer that um, two millimeter length. And so all of the stitches sort of adjust to the quilter's favorite stitches. So that's a really, I, I love that. Um, you know, of course, you've got all of your fun decorative stitches. You can do fancy stitches. These are really fun. Some of these are really fun to put at the bottom of your, you know, around your quilt or anywhere, really. You can see all the pretty flowers. Um, but one of the fun things, one of the new things that we have on the Altair 2 is something called stitch tapering. OK, so this enables you to taper your stitch and you can make that stitch do all sorts of things. You can whenever you choose your selection at the beginning of the stitch, you can make it go, you know, sort of wide or sort of skinny or to the side. And it's really nice if you're doing if you're trying to do um, a 45 degree angle and and um, make your stitches make a perfect square. So that's really fun. But I want to show you something fun that um, I've done with these tapering stitches that that is that kind of like turns it into a little bit of a decorative stitch. OK, mm -hmm. so I'm going to move you over here. I hope I don't make you sick on this. But you can see this right here. This is a little Christmas tree that I've made using the tapering stitches. And it's so much fun because you can count how many stitches you want at the beginning and how many stitches you want at the end and then make those stitches taper. So that's just a little easy, quick and easy, fun thing that you can do um, with the sewing side. Um, the other thing that this that the machine does, of course, um, let me go back to our, I'll close this off and I'll go back to our directional stitching is really cool. If you make bags, this machine will enable you to stitch backwards, forwards, right, left, up and down. And that is incredibly helpful whenever you are on those tricky corners um, and you're trying to put your um, bag handles on, right? And you're trying to sometimes get it, you're trying to squeeze into a place that your machine really, it's, it doesn't fit. Well, the machine will do it for you. It will enable you to stitch forward, backward, and sideways. Okay, so that is um, that is just, ugh, just a couple of things in the sewing side of the machine. But I also want to show you the embroidery side. So I'm going to go right here to my home screen. I'm going to touch OK. And then again, I have a choice between sewing, embroidery and IQ designer. So I'm going to go into the embroidery section and I want to show you another really fun new thing that we've started um, that we have now in our um, aside from all these gorgeous designs that we have that are built into the machine and all of the wonderful lettering, you can see we've got so many different scripts. Um, we have these giant big scripts that are really beautiful. Um, we have this, um, the you, you can make uh, all sorts of decorative um, items. You can put people's initials in this, and this is just sort of standard. You can also create buttonholes on your machine or eyelets. And this is done on the embroidery side. So it's really nice because you can get an absolutely perfect buttonhole and line them up accordingly. All right, so let's go back. I'm going to, and you can see, this is one of my favorite sections, which is really funny. People don't think about this, but these are these are actually sewing stitches so that you can make these go around your um, embroidery field. And it makes some really fun stitches. It kind of makes it look like handmade uh, um, designs. All right, but here's the really fun one, okay? And this is, you know, we've always had sort of the yarn couching, but now we have the yarn alphabet couching. And that is so much fun to play with. I have to show you a couple of things that I've done to play with with the, with the, um, with the yarn couching. You can see right here, and this is going to be a little bit difficult to see, but let me pull your, pull the camera back over here. You can see this is done with the yarn couching with just a basic yarn. Um, and you've got, I've got, I used a little sparkly yarn there. And so that was kind of fun. But look at the other things that you can do with this yarn couching. Let me pull this this pillow up 
this is all done with the yarn couching. Now, I'm sorry, the lights are not so great, but you can take those. This is just done with um, commas and uh, I've, I've used U's and upside down V's. And you can just do some really fun, creative stuff with that yarn couching. All right. So that again, that's a new um, feature on our Altair 2 that has been really fun to play with. OK, so let me tell you about another really fun thing that I love to do. And that is I love to go into IQ Design. Let me pull this back so you can see this. There we go. OK, I love going into IQ Designer. Let me go home and touch my home key and I'm going to go into IQ Designer and I'm going to show you how easy it is to create your own designs in IQ Designer. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is this is fun, like if you, any of you have ever been on um, Adobe, the Adobe website and seen all the thousands of designs that you can get in Adobe Illustrator or for that matter, any coloring um, pages that you can get on the internet. All of those can be used and pulled into your IQ designer in order to create some really lovely designs. OK, so let me show you. And I really love doing this. This is sort of like um, coloring fun. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch line design. And I'm going to import an image file. Now, these um, designs I have simply taken pictures of and I've did um their PNG files okay and I have pulled them from my computer directly into my um a flat I used a flash drive for this but you can there are other ways that you can do it also um, so you can see here's some cute little designs I've got some daisies and some irises um poppies wildflower bouquet and I want to show you what these look like um, and how easy it is to transform these very simple designs into an actual picture. So I'm going to go to set and I'm going to touch OK. OK, and then I'm going to touch set again. All right. And then what I'm going to do is blow this up a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. But I want to show you how easy it is to turn these lines into pictures. OK, so I'm just going to go into my these are my region property settings. And this is super easy. We have a lot of books to show you how to do this. OK. All right. So I'm going to touch um, just the regular fill stitch and I'm going to touch. OK, and let's let's make a I'll make some purple flowers. OK, so I'm going to touch purple. I'm going to touch OK, touch my paint can. And then I'm just going to touch the inside of that flower. OK, can you see how easy that is? Now, if I want to do a little, um, you know, some sort of artistic work, I can go back into my colors and I can do I can put like a kind of a light purple. OK, so let me pull a light purple in and or a pink and I'm going to touch OK and I'm going to go right here and I'm going to touch my the bottom of that flower and then I'm going to touch the top of the flower. Um, maybe I want to touch the top of the flower and I want to make it into the purple like that one. So I'm going to touch that again and touch purple. What if I want to have some green leaves? Well, all I have to do is touch, go back to my region property settings, get some green, touch my OK, go in and touch my green leaves. OK, and now I can just go in and make all my leaves green. You see how easy that is? It's like coloring. All right. Oops, I don't want to do that. So when you mess up, it's super easy to fix it. I'm just going to touch my undo button. OK, so now I don't have that in there anymore um, and I want to make the rest of my um, flowers purple. So let me go in here and touch my little purple. Oh, I don't want to do that. Let me undo that. OK, so I'm going to touch this. See how easy it is. You make a mistake and it doesn't really matter. You can you can fix your mistakes very easily. OK, so I've just changed the color to purple. And now I'm going to touch my purple flowers and then I'm going to go under there and I'm going to touch, make, make the rest of them pink. So I'm going to touch this, touch my pink and then go in here and touch all my pinks. And that's so easy. OK, let's go right there. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like when you finish, which is pretty cool. OK, let's go in there. OK, so now. I'm going to touch my next key 
and I can see what all of my flowers look like, okay? And I can go in here and I can change some things. I can change the density and I can change the stitch direction and I can put some understitching on. And I do like to put understitching on. I think that makes it look a little bit fuller, more full. And I'm going to touch set. And then I'm going to touch preview. And I'm going to touch OK. And suddenly I have an embroidery design, okay? So, here we go. Look at that. It is ready to embroider. So I can blow that up a little bit. All right. And I can see what it looks like. I can see that you know, I might want to go in and, um, you know, do some things here to some of these, to some of these. I might want to increase the density a little bit. And IQ Designer allows me to increase the density. And that's super fun. But let me show you what this bag looks like when you finish. And I just used IQ Designer on the bag. And I did exactly what we've just done. And then look at this. This is a design made all in the hoop. I designed it in the hoop. It is stitched on leather. Okay. Has a little zipper in it. And it was all done using a design that I brought in, black and white line drawing that I brought in. And then I just used like the coloring book and colored it. All right. So it's just, it's so easy and so much fun to create those designs. Let me show you another way that you're able to use um, IQ Designer um, with your quilting. Okay. So that's what I think that most people who are watching this show are most interested in right now. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's say that, um, let's get back here. Let me back up a little bit. All right. So let's say I go over to my embroidery. So I'm just going to touch home, I'm going to erase all that, get rid of all that. And then I'm going to touch embroidery. OK, and then I'm just going to choose one of these gorgeous Asian designs. OK, I really I love these flowers. So I'm going to um, I'm going to consider that I might do a quilt and this might be my theme. OK, um, these the the Japanese flowers are going to actually be my theme and I'm going to probably do one of each of these now on the um, on this machine. <clears throat> excuse me. On the Altair 2 you have a, a hoop, a nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop that comes with a machine that is absolutely fantastic for creating quilt squares. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in this little flower right here and I'm going to touch set and then I'm going to touch my edit screen and I'm going to tell my machine that I want to do an outline of this so that when I go into my IQ designer, I can create a design around a stippling stitch that's really a beautiful stippling stitch around my flower. So I'm going to touch this little flower. And so you can see that it's going to outline around the flower. And then I'm going to touch memory. OK, I'm going to touch. OK, see, it's telling me right there that in order to get it out of IQ, all I have to do is go to IQ Designer and then find the shapes key and then go to the shapes key and then I'll find this little flower, this little flower design again. So I'm going to follow those instructions. I'm going to go to IQ Designer. I'm going to go into shapes and then I'm going to look for this little flower icon. So I'm going to touch OK and I'm going to touch add. And then this is going to take me out into IQ Designer. So I'm going to go into IQ Designer and then I'm going to touch my shapes key. OK, and then you see, I'm going to look all over the place and see if I can. Oh, there's my little flower. All right. So I'm going to touch the flower. And then I can see there's my flower. And here's some of the other little shapes that I that I have um, played with. There's my flower. I'm going to touch OK. Now, I have a couple of choices here, OK? The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I'm going to select the size hoop that I want to use. So I'm going to go back into my shapes and I'm going to go into hoops and I'm going to choose my 240 by 240 hoop. And that's my nine and a half inch by nine and a half inch. You can also get an eight by eight. You can see all these different hoops that you can use. But I'm going to choose my nine and a half by nine and a half and I'm going to touch OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to choose that nine and a half by nine and a half hoop in my settings. There we go. OK, so I'm going to touch OK. All right. And now I've got that big hoop selected 
And so I'm going to, I want to do some, a really pretty design around this flower. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my region properties, which is where we were before. And I'm going to go into my, um, this is the region properties. It gives me a drop down menu. You can see there's a little drop down icon right there. So I'm going to touch select. I'm going to go into my drop down menu. And then I'm going to look at all these really cool designs, all these choices that I have. And I'm going to audition them. Okay. So let's see. Um, Maybe because I have a flower, um, maybe I want to put something other than a flower around it, okay? So maybe I just want to do something like, I don't know, let's try that. Let's try 16, okay? We're going to touch OK. And then I get to choose what color. Now, of course, I can use whatever color thread I want, but to get a, to choose a color is going to give me an idea of what this will look like around my design, okay? So I'm going to touch OK. And then I'm going to go into my, uh -oh, let's touch, let's go back in there. I accidentally touched something I did not really mean to touch. Okay, I went to my line properties. Okay, yes, I touched line properties. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to touch my paint can. And then, now I have two choices here. I can touch inside my flower and create a region fill for inside my flower. But I don't really want to do that because I want to embroider that beautiful flower. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to touch my back key and I'm going to touch outside the flower. Okay. So now I have a lot of design around that flower. I'm not sure I like that. So I'm going to go back into my region fills and I'm going to audition a different one. So let's go in here and let's see if we can find something. I want something that's a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more swirly. I wish you could talk to me so that you could tell me which one you like. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, um, let's just, let's do like a, a, a flower also. Let's see if that, that might be too much flower, but let's try it. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to touch OK. And this time I'm going to go with a really light pink. OK. OK. So I'm going to touch OK. And then I'm going to touch the outside. Oh, yeah, I think I like that a lot better. That's much better. Now, the dark pink background is not going to show up. OK, that's not going to be part of it. So let me show you when I take it to the embroidery screen what that's actually going to look like. All right. So I'm going to touch next. And then there's my preview. OK, and I can change the angle of those flowers if I want to right here. Um, so if I if I if I think that I want the flowers to go in a different a different angle, I can change it there. I can also change the size of my flowers so I can make them go a lot bigger. OK, or I can make them go a lot smaller. Now, of course, this is very dependent upon, um, let's say you're in a hurry and you don't have a lot of time for stitching. And so you're going to make those flowers pretty big. All right. So I'm going to make I'm going to go all the way up 160. And then in the preview screen, you're going to be able to see what that's going to look like. OK, now it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see that those flowers are much bigger. Now, I'm going to return because I want to I want to choose a different color because you're not going to be able to see that color. So I'm going to go right back here. and You can see that I've got a light blue and I just touch the flower because I just want to um, touch the color because I want to change the color on it. So it, OK, so now you can see that a little bit better. So now I'm going to touch preview. And that's something important to remember when you're choosing colors. You want to choose a color that's sort of dark so that you'll actually be able to see it. OK, so now that's what it's going to look like in my embroidery. So I like that. That's kind of nice. OK, although it, it kind of overwhelms the flower. So let's let's take this. Let's touch set and let's touch OK. And yeah, that's not bad. OK, that, that's not that's not too bad. So then I would just simply touch embroidery. And what it's going to do is it's going to stitch out my um, the, the flowers first, the, the colors of the flower first. And then the last thing it's going to do is it's going to stitch out the background. You can see on our embroidery screen, you can see a couple of things that um, your machine is going to be able to show you. OK, one of the things that it's going to show you is that you can look at this in your hoop. So that's what it looks like in your nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. But you can also take it into, I'm sorry, that, that's what it's going to look like in your nine and a half by 14 inch hoop. But here you are with your nine and a half by nine and a half inch hoop. So you can see that looks, that looks, that looks pretty nice. 
So I'm going to touch. Um, and now if you want to, you know, go in, enlarge it just a little bit so that you can see what those stitches look like, you've got the ability to do that right there. OK, so I'm going to touch OK. The next thing that you can do up here, this icon, and this is just a reminder, you have a... Um, an app on your phone and it's a really cool app okay and the app is called iq positioning and iq monitoring okay so the iq monitoring app what that does is that enables you to watch your machine and see um, what, what, when your machine when your machine is stitching now my machine isn't stitching so it's not going to connect here so like you can walk around the house and um, you know, do something else while your machine is stitching and your IQ monitoring will tell you whether or not you're finished, what, you know, whether you need to change colors. Um, if you happen to have a broken thread, it's going to tell you all of those things. But the IQ positioning app on this machine is really cool because if you take a picture, so it says take a photo for easy positioning. If you take a picture of your fabric in the hoop, it will send it directly. You can send it directly to your machine. OK, and it goes. You can take a photo for design creation. OK, so we're going to select the image. OK, so you can't. It's not going to read right now. But all you have to do is what you're going to do is you're going to hold this above your. Um, and you're not going to be able to see it through here. But all you have to do is if you can take a picture with your iPhone or with your any camera, your smart device, then you can use this. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture and then you're going, it'll come, you can import it into your um, machine. And when it imports, you'll be able to see if you need to move your design up or down or across in order to make sure that it's centered exactly where you want it to center. And that's really fabulous for whenever you're trying to center something above a pocket or you're trying to get something um, initials on a cuff. You can take a picture. You can import that picture into your machine. You can move your design around. It is fantastic. OK, it is just a, an easy way to make sure that you are getting absolutely perfect placement and perfect positioning. OK. All right, so let's go back to this screen and let's talk about the other things that this screen shows you. Um, this right here is your W plus foot. And what that does is it puts a little um, red beam exactly where your machine is stitching. OK, so that makes it easy um, to uh, catch up, you know, if you if you should make a mistake and you want to pull back out and then put it back in the machine. That little red dot's going to tell you exactly where your machine is going to stitch right here. This tells you how many stitches um, that this particular design is made up of. This tells you how long it's going to take you to create that design. This is going to tell you how many color changes that you have, how many how many colors that you're using. OK. Now, um, this tells you which hoops this design is going to fit into. And then this tells you the width and the, the, the height and the length of the height and the width or the width, the horizontal and the vertical um, axis. So one of the things and also right here, this is going to tell you um, what degree angle that you have this uh, that the, the uh, design is on. Now, one of the things that you can do in your machine, of course, is if you don't like to use millimeters, you can go in and you can change the millimeters into um inches. So all you have to do is just go to page eight, change unit to inches. And there's all sorts of things that you can do on these pages. As you can see, um, this enables you to have automatic foot up and down, which is very handy um, so that whenever you start your machine, you don't have to lower your presser foot. You can just press start and it'll just automatically start. There are just all sorts of um, things that you can control on here. OK, so let me go back. I'm going to close this and then I'm going to go right back into this and show you some more things that this shows. Um, this right here um, it shall, it enables you to change the tension. Um, it enables you to turn on or off your color trim and your jumps 
jump stitch trim. Now this is very handy um, for quilters. You can decide whether or not you want to have trims at the end, how you want to do that, what, your what you want your trims to look like. And this helps you control what the back of your quilt is going to look like. Okay, This right here is enables you to um, go back or forward a color so that um, if you want to skip a color, for example, you can just skip the color right here. It'll, it'll take you to the next color. Okay, or it'll take you back a color. Okay, um, this um, and then this right here is going to allow you to touch return here. This right here is going to show you the upper left corner, the upper right corner. Okay, the bottom, the top, all of those things. Okay, so that you can see exactly where that um, design is going to go. All right, so in your layout screen, you also have some other um, things that you can do. If you decide that you want to make the colors, um, let me see right here. Let me back up my machine a little bit so I don't hit the wall. Okay, um, in most designs, if you're not overlapping, and this is this, because you have these two designs in here, it doesn't work so well. But one of the things that you can do when you pull in a design is you can um, change the color order. So if you've got several different um, colors, uh, uh, several different steps with the same color, you can actually change it so that those colors are you don't have to change your spool. They'll 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 um, stitch one right after the other. Right here, if you want, if you decide that you want the entire design to stitch out in the same color, then you're going to touch this. Okay. All right. So you've got, you know, this is another, this is another centering, your ability to center your design. Um, this is if you want to base. Now, a lot of quilters do not like to hoop their design. What they prefer to do is to um put the design in, float the fabric, and then baste their fabric into their hoop. And that way you don't get any of those ugly um, burn marks from your, from your hoop, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna touch return, okay? And I'm gonna go back out because there's another screen that I wanna show you. So I'm gonna go to the home screen, but I did wanna show you um, what this looks like kind of whenever you stitch out the um those designs but get, let, let's go to the home screen for just a second i hate running out of time i'm going to run out of time in just a second okay all right so what i'm going to do i want to show you another really cool screen if you go into embroidery and let's just choose one of these beautiful designs okay here's a stained glass design i love these designs i'm going to touch now this first screen before you ever pull it into your embroidery screen it tells you all sorts of things okay one of the things that it tells you is exactly how big this design is so it's 4.77 and this is i haven't pulled it into my embroidery screen this is sort of like i'm auditioning the design okay all right, let me make sure I've got this here. Okay, so this shows me how many stitches, how long it's going to take, how many colors it's going to take. It shows me exactly the colors that I'm going to use and exactly how many minutes it's going to spend on each of those colors. One of the things that I can do is if I decide that I want to use a black background, I can change my background so that it is a black background so I can see exactly what that's going to look like on a black background. Okay, so I'm going to touch cancel on that. Another thing that you're able to do with this um, with this opening screen and let me go back to another design. Um, let's go to some of these kids corner designs. These are super cute. All right. So you've got this guy who's, you know, let me go back to the white background. So he's doing some some skiing, I guess snowboarding, maybe. Yeah, snowboarding. So, so if you decide though that you want to see what it looks like mirrored, you can just mirror it right here on this screen, and it kind of gives you a sense of what this design is going to look like. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to touch cancel, and I'm going to just scroll through a couple of these cute designs. All right. And then I want to show you if we have. We have a couple of minutes. Okay, we have one more minute, Blaine. I'm going to, let me, let me do one more thing. Okay. All right. So we have a couple of, um, some of the wonderful things that you can do is you can write out your name. Okay. So let's say you're writing out the name D and then you can audition the script. Okay. So let's see. I, let me get, let me get back. Ah, let's go back, 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 back. 
I'm going to go back again. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to touch OK. I'm going to touch Set. And then I'm going to touch my Edit screen. I'm going to touch Text Edit. And now I'm going to do it again. Now this time, you see how it auditions all of my text? I can see exactly what this would look like in every single one of my scripts. So that, that gives you a visual of what exactly. And remember, whenever you take a picture of your design using your phone and bring it in, bringing into your machine, then you were able very easily to see exactly what that script is going to look like on your design. OK, I think I've run out of time, Blaine. Thank you so much. I'm going to take it back to Blaine so that he can tell you all the beautiful and wonderful um, uh, deals he has on this machine. So let me change cameras and there we go. Okay. All right. All right, Blaine, you ready? I am ready. Great <laughs> job, Melinda. Hey, and you didn't have much time either. <laughs> I love this machine too. There's just so much it will do. And I mean, I could spend three days showing you all the cool things. So thank you. Well, you know, I can't take credit for what I stated earlier. I said, this is the best machine for quilting that also embroideries. Somebody told me that and they said, this is just right. an awesome machine because they're a big quilter, but it has so many features on both sides of the embroidery and in sewing. It's just crazy. But it uh, does. It oh does. Thank you so much, Melinda. Awesome as usual. And uh, I'm going to tell everybody how they can get it and we'll see you later. Sounds great. Thank you, Blaine. All righty. Okay, everybody, this is the Baby Lock Altair 2. Now, this is like we said, it is a sewing and embroidery machine, uh, but you're also going to get a free bundle with purchase and you see it there it's you're getting a foot set you're getting that uh, roller bag that holds the machine and everything but we do have a call-in special on this again uh, our regular price on this is $94.99 go ahead and give us a call if you're interested in this uh wink wink it's going to be you're going to be happy uh 800-401-8151 free shipping nationwide and we do have some special financing available if you need some help on that but again, guys, this thing is loaded. When I say loaded, I don't even have enough time to talk about all the features uh, this machine has because there's so many that you have to go into. But what I would recommend you to do right now to go to smplive.tv, go down to day four, scroll on that scroll bar across the page so you see the Altair 2, click on it, takes you to the product page. You can read all about it. Or if you just want to go to sewingmachinesplus.com, go up in that search bar and just type in Altair 2. Same thing, it'll take you to the product page and you can read all about it. We have some videos on the page you can look at, but it has so many features. Uh, and I'm telling you, Melinda did a fantastic job on that. However, uh, it, like she said, you could probably talk three hours on all the different things that you can do with this. Um, it is just incredible. All the, the, the technology is built into this thing and you can pretty much do just about anything you want to do sewing wise with this. It's pretty awesome. So, all right, guys, we are going to continue on and let's bring my co-host back in, Jane. Hey, Blaine. Hi, everybody. Hey, Jane. Hey, well, Melinda. We're, we're, just, she's so nice. Oh, she is such a it. sweetheart and uh, we love working with Melinda and, you know, and she's just so talented too. Not only you know, does she know uh, these type of machines? She knows the, the multi-needle uh, embroidery machines. She's great with sergers uh, as well. So very talented lady. And and we always love having her on our show. I know. I could just like sit again. It's the everybody. It's just so fun to be together, Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, hey, we're right on schedule. So I'm going to let you take it away. I know we got another dynamic duo coming up next so we'll let we you take it away we sure do okay thanks Wayne. hi everybody all right let's keep it going uh joining us uh, for wait uh, well i gotta tell you who's joining us it's jarek airs nasnik and laurel daniels from the grace company i'm super excited for these guys to be here jarek initially started as the quality control and repair for grace machines and now he works as an account executive for the company outside of work this is what we really all want to know he enjoys spending time painting being creative and loves spending time with his labrador retriever eva 
And Laurel is an AE for the Grace Company. And she's had the opportunity to build out the Ambassador and Influencers Program. And she's excited for the opportunity to continue to grow the company and herself because she loves learning and improving her knowledge of the quilting world. Uh, Laurel has done this by attending several quilting shows and working with the education team on different projects. Put your hands together. Say hi to Jarek and Laurel. Hey, Hello. how's it going? Hey, yes, we're excited to be Dua. here. How are you? <laughs> Good. Doing well. <laughs> yeah, we are a dynamic duo. I don't know if everyone knows, but she's my sister and I'm her brother. So yes. if you're wondering what the relation is, there you go. Boom. <laughs> we are quite the dynamic duo. Yeah, and what's the age difference? Who's older? Uh, I'm two years older two than years? her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But but she's still in charge, right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. People always think she's <laughs> older course. for a good reason. So <laughs> Okay. Well, we're not gonna we're not gonna base our opinions on the next segment on who's older or not because I know that you're both amazing at what you do. Uh, actually, LJ, I'm better because I'm older. So oh, everyone, right. don't I'm ignore, sorry. don't, don't pay attention to her. <laughs> okay. Jared got it. I'll step out. I'll step out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't need you here. <laughs> no sibling rivalry is happening right no. now, guys. <laughs> no. But... Okay, yeah. wow. I'm going to let you take it away, and then we're going to be tuned in and hear, hear what you have to say. I mean, okay. I mean, so you're talking about the QCT Pro Long Arm Robotics, yes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm watching you two. All okay. right. Yeah. You might have to stop us. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Cut <All> us right. <laughs> off. <laughs> okay, LJ. So yes. since you're the youngest, go ahead and get started. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'll get started here. Cut me off if you feel you need to. I will. Okay. I all will. right. All right. Um, but yeah, super excited. We're going to be talking about QCT6 Pro. Um, now, for those of you that know a little bit about Grace Company, we had an automation system. We kind of just did a little bit of a name change with it. So it used to be called QCT5 Pro um, or QCT5 Beginnings. It's now QCT6 Plus. And then we actually have a new base model as well. So today we'll be spending most of the time talking about the Pro, uh, but of course, between any of those, you can always upgrade between the different uh, versions or different tiers, I should say. Um, yep, right there you can see, so we have that very base tier over on your left-hand side, and then moving to your right, it goes up in the tier, and you can see the different abilities that they have. Um, so really wonderful. Again, we'll kind of be talking about that top QCT6 Pro, not quite with the gold card, but yeah, the Pro Yeah, not quite version. the gold. And also, so yeah, you can see that there's four different tiers. Really, there's three different tiers. Right. And there's that gold extra tier that only works if you already have the QCT6. And we're not really going to be diving into that in this one, but just so you know, there is that extra gold card Correct. you can put on there. So Yes, yeah. So very flexible as far as like, hey, budget, what's going to work for you? Or really, more than anything, hey, what am I wanting it to do for me? But again, before we dive into that, I do want to talk a little bit, and maybe, Jerk, you can show them as well, uh, how if someone pre-existing has the QCT5, how we can get them to the six? Because I know that was a big question. He said, wait, I just bought my software. Do I have to pay to actually go ahead and update it to that? And the answer is no, it is a simple free update. And we'll let Jerk actually go ahead and show you kind of how easy and simple that is to do. Yeah, like you're saying, LJ. So there's like a, a difference between an update and an upgrade, right? right? And also something that's really great about this system is you don't have to pay anything extra for an update and when you do yes. upgrade you're only paying the price difference instead of having right. to pay anything extra so let's go into right. this help right here so we're going to go into this help menu on the top and then we're going to go into software management which is right here so and it's a little bit hard to see because i'm just tapping here so it's going to be i can see where my i'm tapping right here this is where the software management is so we're going to click there and then we're going to go ahead and press this button that says check for updates. And then you can press update now from online files. Just do make sure you are connected to the internet. Otherwise, that won't work very well yes. for you. You need to be connected. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be like, ah, I didn't find any updates. So make sure you're connected. Um, and then you'll go ahead and press that. I'm not going to do that now because um, we already have that <laughs> up, yes. updated to QCT6. But if you have QCT5 right now, you can get QCT6 for free. And right. there's not a whole ton of uh, difference in the five to six. There's a few different pantograph things that we're not gonna be going into detail here, but yeah, you can get the update. And then you can also try out the lowest tier, which is the new edge to edge version, which is really nice. Even those with pro might wanna go back and use that yes. 
a lower version. And the way you do that is in, you know, try other product tiers in the bottom right. That's over here. You press try product tiers and you could, you know, there's, you can see where it says press start below here. Mm -hmm. And you can click on that to go to the QCT6, but we'll stay in the pro. Right. So yeah, super fun. Um, and Jarek, like you said, just to help make sure, I know there was some uh, some questions and confusion when we first came out with it. Um, if you pre-existingly had QCT5 beginnings, it actually is rebranded to QCT6 Plus. Right. So that's where actually, again, very pretty much the same, just name change. It's free to do, right? Jarek just showed us how. And then if you had QCT5 Pro, it gets you all the way up to the QCT6 Right, and so that's what we'll be talking about today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, first, we're going to talk about just some of the basics um, that you can do between the plus and the pro tier, uh, but then we'll go specifically more into hey, actually, this is what you can do just with the pro tier. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with select and sew here. Now, this one, I would say, even though it's, I would say, a pretty simple or basic thing, I personally really love. I love it just because you can come in and alternate every blocks what you're doing saying hey maybe on one I don't necessarily want to do a teddy bear but I want a butterfly right but the next one I want a beach ball you can do that and alternate and really have the freedom to create your own quilt with it you know and your own design even with a pre-existing one so that's why I love this and we're going to show you how easy it is to truly place a pattern and this is whether you are doing the select and sew or the panograph. Now there are a few additional steps when shifting your quilt and working through zones with the panographs, but it is as simple as pick your pattern, they're gonna place it, and then we're gonna quilt it. So literally it takes three steps. That's it. We're <laughs> at three steps and we're gonna go ahead and quilt it out. So starting here, um, we are actually well, going I heard that yes. people here like Ooh. quilting puns. So I just had to say oh, I'm okay, bobbing okay. up and down in excitement for us about to place this pattern and get it because you know quilting bobbins. bobbins. Sorry, okay, let's get into it. <laughs> the select and sew. Ooh, all right, yeah. <laughs> Moving right along from that. <laughs> Yeah, so we got our select and sew here. And this is where I do want to show you guys as well because the first screen that's going to pop up is this. And this is to set your safe area. Now, anytime, let's say you were doing a pattern, you closed out your system and you went out to you know hang out with some friends or you maybe went to a quilt guild. When you come back into it, it is going to ask you to reset your safe area. Now that's to help create accuracy and it just is uh, a nice step so the machine knows, hey, where can I actually go in quilt? So, when doing this, just like it says here on the bottom here, you want to move the machine to the top left. Now this is very important. You have to physically move the machine. Yes, some people will just tap it and tap it. The machine itself needs to be moved to the top left corner of your quilt top. And I would say probably just slightly off. So if you are doing an edge to edge pattern, you can quilt all the way to that point. So just like Jarek has it there, move it off and then tap it. Yep, and you're going to want to go off your quilt a little bit. Um, right. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to place stuff right on the edge, and it's going to say that it's out of the safe area. So make sure you go a little bit off right here. You don't want to be right on, so go a little bit off right here. So then we're going to go ahead and touch the top left, and now it's going to show bottom right. So, LJ, I'll pass this yeah. over to you here. Also, make sure your bobbin thread and stuff is all cut when you're doing this because we did not do that. Yes, yeah, you don't want a long thread across the back of your quilt top that could potentially catch. So great point on that, Jerk. So same thing, we're gonna move to the bottom right now. With this, this is where it's gonna differ slightly depending on the throat space of the machine you have. Now this is a 19, we're just showing you here. So with that, I want to make sure I pull it as far forward as it can go. That way, hey, I can utilize as much throat space as possible. So as far forward, and then again, just like we did before, I'm actually gonna move it slightly off the quilt top as well and then select the bottom right. Now that I've done that, it's actually gonna take me back to a menu where I can choose my pattern. Um, now, super fun, this was just kind of a demo version, so there is even more patterns that you'll get, uh, and you can upload your own patterns as well into the software, which I love. But we're just kind of through, and just so you guys can kind of see again, it's a demo, so it's a little bit more simple on what we have. But let's go ahead. LJ, what are you gonna choose? I don't know. It's so I know, it's <laughs> such a hard decision. It always is. Let's see, should we do, yeah, I'm actually going to do the beach ball. Okay, like the beach I'll, ball. this is such a classic one, you got to do it. There we go. All right, so we got this on there, and this is quite large right now, and you'll see what we mean when I say large. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to physically move this. So we're using our machine as a kind of placement. So when I go yes. into this top left corner, if we go back to the other screen, you'll see I'm going to press 
um, on this top left one right here where I'm tapping, I'm going to press this top left one, and it's going to move that actually this white area is representing that safe area that we set. And so when I just touch that top left node, mm -hmm. it moved our placement to there. And now I'm going to move this to the bottom right. Okay, and yes, physically moving the machine, and you'll use your needle as actually that reference point when placing. And now we're going to take a look here. When I click the bottom right, you can see that fit that into there. Yes, and so now, it automatically sized it for us, right? So like Jerick was saying, it shrunk it down so it's going to perfectly fit within that square um, that we have out here on our quilt top. All right, and let me show you something too, what it would look like if we went a little bit further. We're not going to do this, but if we went like, you know, two blocks and we hit this bottom right, if we click this, this would then expand that right. outwards. And there's a difference between the stretch and the fit, and that is down here. Oop, I accidentally reset it because I was trying to show. Um, it's down here where I'm tapping. You can see there's a stretch or a fit option. So let me go ahead and quickly replace that. I'm going to show you what the stretch versus fit looks like. Yes, and again, this is just showing you how easy it is, right? Like even if you reset, it's super easy to get back to that placement. Yep, so this is the stretch and this is the fit. So the fit will keep it uh, the same exact proportions. Mm -hmm. Stretch will fill it up to fit your block. So I'm going to go right. ahead and put that back to the actual single block placement. Mm -hmm right there. All right, yes. LJ, go ahead and yeah. take it over. Well, I just want to make sure to highlight just, you know, there's a few different things we showed you, but really all we've done so far is yes, we've set our safe area, but we've picked a pattern, we've placed the pattern, and now we're going to quilt it out. So really, again, we've three steps, picked it, placed it, we're now going to quilt it. So we're on our final step. Super simple. You literally hit quilts. You're going to let it, they'll say connecting. It takes just a minute. This is where you're going to actually have the machine engage with that automation system. And then you'll see right up here at the top of the design, there's a green circle and at the bottom there's a red. So green simply indicates where the machine is going to start quilting. Red it is red is where it's going to end. Now, sometimes depending on the pattern you're choosing, you will see them overlap. It's just saying, hey, it's going to start and stop in the same spot. But super simple. Go ahead, pull this out and we're literally going to hit sew. Again, you're going to hear the machine engage, it's going to go move, and it should move right to this top point here because that was the starting point that it had marked for us on that design itself. Boom, there you go. It does a few tie-off stitches. Um, you do have the ability to fully go in and adjust how many tie-off stitches you want it to do, but super simple. And again, it's going to go ahead and go through that whole pattern for us. And then I do, yeah, I do love to show this screen as well because you can see in dark blue, it's actually highlighting what it is currently stitching out, right? So dotted lines is what it still needs to do versus the dark lines is, hey, this is what it has stitched out already for you. I was going to see a few questions here. People are asking, you know, does this work only on the Grace machines? And for the most part, yes. Like, no domestic machine is really going to work with this. There are some other brands that this works with, but, oh no, we ran out of bobbin, LJ. Oh. I told you I was bobbin up and down for an excitement. <laughs> And Tur now we ran out of bobbin. bobbin. Dang it. <laughs> but we can show you guys, it's actually pretty easy to repair a pattern. So yeah, yes. ran out of bobbin here. So I didn't check the bobbin before we, we started. So let me just go ahead. <laughs> I'm switching out my bobbin here real quick. And then I'm just going to pop that right back under there. Super simple to repair a pattern. We're going to go to the repair pattern. And then we're also going to go to our toolbox and I'm going to release the carriage. And so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this right here. Yes. Also, Jerk, I just got to say, someone says you're a bobbin chicken. So uh, bobbin chicken. Bobbin. <laughs> I just think it's cute. Bobbin, you know, <laughs> bobbin, bobbin up chicken. and down. All right. So what we can do here is we're going to move this um, right here towards where this stopped. Right, where, go where the thread ran out, bit, right? Yeah, where the thread ran out. And then I'm going to go ahead and press closest stitch on the screen. There's a button that says yes. closest stitch. You can see there the bottom right-ish. Yes. Now, Jared, maybe on that screen, because I know sometimes when people get home, they say, great, you know, I watched the demo, I understood it, or you go to a show and you see it right, or at an actual location. But then they get home and they said, okay, wait, I thought I knew it, but now that I'm looking at the screen, I see closest stitch and last stitch. Do you know why someone would select the closest stitch versus the last? So the last stitch would be the last stitch it sewed. Right. So I haven't ended up using that one a whole time. I find the most useful one usually is the 
uh, closest stitch because I don't mm -hmm. catch it right away when it breaks. <laughs> Um, yes. But you can also do it to move it over to get closer back to where you were and also know where it was on last. Right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and press, yep, we press that closest stitch, stitch and I'm, you can see I've reset a little bit behind just because I want to kind of overlap that and help lock in some of those stitches because it broke. So I'm going to go ahead and press so now. And you could also move it slightly further or backwards along right. the path, but this one's super simple. You just press right there. Yep. There you go. Oh no, it's still not sewing. Oh, that's okay. Maybe it didn't quite catch the bobbin. It might have not been a long enough tail underneath for it. But this was really just to give you an idea. And again, that is how you repair the pattern. So at any time, if you need to go back in and do so, super easy or maybe if you are trying to do kind of two different sided quilts if you will so you want your thread on your back to be different but for the different patterns you can go out and change it and again repair your pattern or stop so you can have some fun designs there so um, just kind of super simple that was again our select and sew so we picked our pattern we placed it and then we quilted it out. Uh, once it is finished quilting, it does do a few tie off stitches for you. So there is no need to worry about, hey, you know, I gotta, I have to go back and do that myself. That is fully programmed into the system and there is an ability for you to go in and adjust how many tie off stitches it does. So super simple and wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna close this back out. And I wanna go back to this home screen so we can kind of keep going through the features for you guys uh, and get into kind of what separates the pro versus the plus tier that we have. So moving just right next it's to it here. now. Nice, Woo! <laughs> I just had to pull the bobbin thread out. Yes, so there you go. We're <laughs> Thank you, Jared, for helping us replace <laughs> that. Um, but yeah, so coming back to it, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at Panagraph. Now, um, really where the difference comes in is the ability for the pro tier, you can actually do however many rows you want at a time. So looking at all our different tiers here, starting with the most basic tier, so that QCT6, it actually only does one row at a time, edge to edge. Um, so it works really well. It is a more cost-effective way to be able to step into automation. Some people though are like, hey, that's all I'm gonna do with my quilts, but I wanna be able to lay out a 50 by 70 quilt, right? So that's where we have this pro tier available. So again, base tier, you can do one row edge to edge at a time. Moving up to the plus, you can do two rows at a time. And then when you step into the pro tier we're highlighting here, you can do as many rows as you want in a single time. And by that, I mean lay out your entire quilt in this first go instead of having to continue to replace that, you know, single or double row. So go ahead and go back here and I'm gonna show you guys. So it looks like this, you'll see it looks a little different here at the bottom. Um, what we're gonna do though, same thing is we're gonna go ahead and select a pattern. With this though, we are gonna wanna choose a continuous line. So right up here at the top of the patterns, you'll see there's a block and then right next to it, there's a continuous line. Now you do wanna make sure to select this. Um, it just works a bit better with the software system and will help give you a continuous pattern. But Jerick, why don't you pick a pattern? Yeah, and I know exactly which one I'm gonna pick because it's Ooh. obviously like the cutest one. And if anyone else says anything else, maybe they're right. But I like <laughs> the cat one the best because it's just so darn cute. And like, who doesn't love cute cats? You know how many pictures I've seen of cats just like happening to get in the way of someone's quilting? I know. It happens all the time. And we let them do it because we love them. Yes. So, <laughs> all right, LJ, I got this one Perfect. pulled up here. And okay. then you can see our pattern width and our pattern height. Now, right now, we're just looking at one giant cat. And, you know, that's probably about the life size of a cat, but that's not what we want for our <laughs> quilt. We want some small little right. cats. So we're, we can add more patterns and add more rows. And mm -hmm. what I typically like to do for this, LJ, because we have, like, a big quilt, like right now you can see we got a pattern width um, in this kind of like left side over by the select pattern button over here. And the next row there is the, you know, it says the panto mode and then it says row height, pattern width, pattern height, total width, total height. Mm -hmm. What you can do is we can go ahead and I want to put in the dimensions of our quilt. So like, let's say, so where we're at, we're at total height, the total width. So it looks like our safe area is 38, but let's say we've got like a 30 inch quilt um, by a 30 inch. So that way you can actually plan out what this mm -hmm. is going to look like. And you can't do this with the, the base, the plus. Right. This is specifically the pro, right? Mm -hmm. So the pro is where you have this ability to come in and fully again, manipulate and change the design to be exactly what you want for the entire dimensions of your quilt. Yep. 
and there are, you know, we can only do two rows at a time with the plus. Uh, the plus. See, I keep wanting to say beginnings, but we change <laughs> the names. So at this one, you know, we can add more rows until it looks like what you right. want it to look like. And then, you know, this would end up being there'd be little kitties all the way Super down. Cute. And so yeah. that is what it would look like. And we're not actually going to stitch it out here because unfortunately today we don't got the time. Yes. But there you can see that's like the biggest difference. We can plan out our whole quilt at once and we can also plan out uh, specific designs um, with the quilt CAD. Yes. So how we did the block, we can do multiple block placements. So if we go back to like the block, we can go back here and open. We can place in multiple different ones we can go ahead and place pattern in those ones. So it's a little bit different because you're gonna to have to go through and cut them, but you can't do this with the plus version. Right, yep, so this is only with the pro. You have a little bit more freedom if you are doing a block quilt than saying, hey, maybe I only wanna do my borders a certain design, or maybe I want my corners to specifically be something, or hey, like Jared showed, I want to go ahead and alternate what my designs are. That is something you can do with this pro. That's the quilt CAD. I'm highlighting just a few other features before we go ahead and kick it back over to Jane to tell you guys the amazing pricing on this, but it's on this other feature. So it's this very top one. It's called Pattern CAD. Now this is where you can come in and fully design your own your own design <laughs> yeah. super fun you can sign your name um, you can create reflective things with it um, like reflective images I should say um, you also have the ability if you want to come in here and manipulate pre-existing designs as well you can see Jarek's cute little cat <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Everyone loved your cat, by the way, that you oh, chose. Thank so you. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad they liked it. I knew I, knew I would yes. be speaking to them with that. Yeah. <laughs> right on target with that. Um, but yeah, so super cute. Again, if you want a way to kind of sign your quilts, like a literal signature, you can come in here and actually simply like Jarek showed you, drag his finger across the screen, um, but then it have it actually quilted out for you. So super fun, very easy. Again, you can come in here and adjust a lot of different things with it, whether it's creating your own new pattern or um, manipulating an existing one. And then down here at the bottom, the last thing that really um, is different between the Plus and the Pro is this record feature here. So this is a fun one. Um, I am not personally great at freehand. However, there are some people who have done it um, you know, quite often or they're like, hey, you know what? I'm really good at doing a feather, but I don't wanna sit here on a king size quilt and continuously stitch that out. So you can come here and you can actually move the machine itself and it will record that design for you and you can save it. Yeah, you can see it there. And you can see on the screen, it's actually trace. Oh, see? There you go, Jared, you got it. Looking good. There we go. There's a little bit of fluff. Nice. A few little uh, leaves. Super cute. But yeah, see now you have that pattern and you can save it, you can name it whatever you want, but then that way, hey, Jerk doesn't have to come back and actually freehand that out, can come and have the software do that for him. So super neat feature to be able to do. Um, I would say again, it's not necessarily for everybody, but it is a fun thing to be able to have included. So um, just a quick overview again, this was specifically on the Pro. So you have the simple select and sew over on the left. So that allows you to place a single pattern at a time or you can do panographs. Again, as Jarek showed, you can lay out your entire quilt, <laughs> which is super nice with this pro. Or we have those other features, again, pattern CAD with you coming in to create your own designs, quilt CAD, which is giving you a way to lay out block quilts um, in a different way, right? Or a little bit more unique instead of just placing one, stitch it, place one, stitch it, right? You can place out five or six or 10 and not have a problem with having to replace it, uh, or sorry, re-put the pattern in and all that or we have that fun record feature. So this is our new wonderful QCT6 Pro. Yep, so like you said, those mainly the difference is those two rows, and you already went all of them over yeah. here. What <laughs> am I saying? She did a great job. I have to admit, even though she's my sister, she did really yeah. awesome. So <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And uh, there is one <laughs> last question we'll answer here. You don't need internet to do it. You can right. be disconnected from the internet. You only need internet to upgrade. And Update. hello, Jane. Update. <laughs> you guys, you played so nice in the sandbox today together. That's so lovely. I love this lovely <laughs> love. Uh, and I love the LJ. I'm just going to call you LJ. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. That works. Yeah. That's my nickname. So yeah. That's exactly. what I called her growing up. So. <laughs> and I like, I love cats too. So thank you for that. Um, that's one of my faves. And then uh, LJ, the, just explaining the name changer was huge. So thank you. Yes. Right off the bat. 
And then mm -hmm. um, bobbing up and down with excitement. So that was great too. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are fun. Okay. <laughs> anybody, any last questions for anybody? Nope. They love the demo. They love you guys. They love the siblings. Uh, they're gonna. They're just gonna want to know how they can get their hands on it. What do you think? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, tell I them how easy that deal is too. Hold them back, Elsie. I know you want one. <laughs> I'm stopping her. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't wait for you guys to be back. I'm going to have way more sibling questions for you. Okay. 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 What's your favorite memory from when you were both little kids? Yeah, that's a hard one. I don't that's know. That's a good question. Yeah, I was like, oh, come back. Yeah, come back to us. I know there's a lot of them. That's all there is to it. Okay. I'm yeah. going to tell everyone how to get it. We'll talk to you guys in a, a little bit, you know, another time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Thanks. Oh my God. They're so much fun. I wish I was in the room with them. That's great. I love siblings. Okay. So let's talk about it. Let's tell you how you can get your hands on your very own QCT6 Pro. Love it. This is the Quilting Robotic Pro version. Um, love the edge to edge. You guys look at that. Eight, nine. I'm sorry, eight, nine, six, nine, nine, nine. That's your quilt best pricing. But of course, it's a call in special. Blaine is winking at you right now. Different versions are available. You know what to do. 800-401-8151. That's the Quilt Motion Quilters Creative Touch 6. That would be QCT6, Quilting Robotic Pro version. And again, you're going to have some call-in pricing, call-in special when you call in. 800-401-8151. Yes, Penny, we are winking right at you. Pat, I'm winking at you too. Anybody else winking at us? Yes, we are. Okay, great. So let's move things right along. Oh, hey, Blaine. Hey, I'm winking at everybody right now, Jane, because I've got a little special announcement to make. Uh, we just got off the phone with Grace, and uh, they just gave us better cost on all the machines. So the software is the same. The robotics the same as you, you know, it's a call-in special, but we just updated all the pricing. So if you've even got an order in for Grace right now on the show, we're going to honor a new price for you. But if you want to order one, get on the phone right now as we got fantastic new pricing. It's going to save everybody some money. Oh, my gosh, Blaine. That's amazing. So, like, when I'm goofing around with the siblings, you're actually doing the work. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love that about you. Thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to let you get going. So I know we got arrow cabinets coming in the house. We sure do. Aero cabinets coming up right now. You know them. You'll love them. But let me introduce you to Scott Ahert and Valerie Tribble. Scott is the director of sales for Aero Sewing. Uh, he is armed with a sales team of four crafting, quilting, and garment making phenomenal ladies. Scott manages the day-to-day -day sales operations, helping to spread sewing in comfort to sew longer. Uh, to every sewist, Scott just celebrated his one-year anniversary with Arrow. He's completed one queen-size quilt. That's amazing. With three more in the process. And he also won Best Quilted Christmas Stocking in the office in 2023. Wow. Round of applause for Scott there. Valerie. She is the West Coast account manager uh, and Sewing Machines Plus very own rep. And she grew up on a farm and she loves to cook and work outside in her garden. And we love knowing all these little tidbits about you guys. So put your hands together for Valerie and Scott. Hi, Jane. How are you? Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm just We're joking. laughing at Scott's bio. We are just sitting here having some fun. I wrote it myself. <laughs> Valerie said I needed a bio and it's it's unofficial unofficial winner of best quilted christmas stocking. Wait, you, did you name yourself the winner yes yes he did <laughs> i, might I mean he was the only one that did really go above and beyond and did some extra quilting but you were supposed to use these pieces of felt they gave us oh. and he I did he, he did he but he sewed and quilted over the top of them so but uh yes what do you, he's an overachiever Whoa, Scott, don't mess with valerie's chair they're already they're already uh I'm messing with you today uh okay <laughs> world before we jump into it i am guilty of lowering valerie's chair yesterday <laughs> and raising the armrest uh, uh, bringing the armrest arm down, down. Yes. So was like, nice and close. Yeah. you gotta be able to get close just like a sewing chair so it we had me. a great time yesterday jane we had a lot of people commenting it was very interactive we really love that um I just want to ask you one more question. So what kind of cutting table do you currently have, Jane, in your sewing space? 
Really? You're going to ask me that question? Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's absolutely pertinent to today. Yeah. Well, I, I, I need a cutting table because the cutting table I use is um, um, just kind of a, I made, I made one. I made it. Okay. Well, you we're going to show the thing on top of the things and you make the thing and then you make the thing yeah. and then you're like, I'm going to cut, but at least I'm not cutting on the floor. That is true. That is very true. Yeah, so but I need a cutting table. Thank you for least. saying that. <laughs> so we are going to show today some really great um, cabinets that we are going to show that are going to have some ergonomics and storage and space, but also just making sure that you guys understand how to sew in comfort and sew longer. Uh, most of you guys sit there and are at a dining room table on a plastic folding table and your body is getting sore, your neck and your shoulders are strained and everything like that. So we want to make sure that we are getting you guys in a comfortable seating area, whether it's sitting and sewing, whether it's standing and cutting, we're gonna have multiple options today, um, but we just wanna make sure that you guys um, ask questions for us, Scott and I will answer them as best as we can. Well, but, well, if he can read it today. Well, we'll see. So we'll see. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of little. <laughs> I, I wore my glasses. It's still kind of little. It is not little. I'm more of so, the comic ooh, relief. Her cutting Valerie's table is a coffee table and a kitchen table. Eunice, we need to have you see our amazing kookaburra cutting table that we're going to show you here. But first off, we're actually going to show you our kangaroo and Joey. Our number one, our best number cabinet. one best-selling cabinet. And why is it our number one best-selling cabinet? It's everything. It is everything. It's it everything. is optimal for storage and organization. And what are we talking about here? Storage and organization. Drawers so it's got, it's got the drawer cover here that comes up. So just kind of like the Krista cabinet yesterday, you can store all of your um, scissors or rotary cutters in there. And then it also comes with this little Joey, which is great for more storage. Look at all of these drawers that you can put more stuff in. And the bottom drawer, you can put a lot of extra fabric or books or whatever you want to put in it. I go to a lot of quilt shows and these ladies say there's never enough storage. And the nice thing about this is it does lock. So if you want to put your rotary cutters away in there um, or your scissors, keep small hands out of there. You can even hide your chocolates in there if you'd like it. Um, Pockets is hiding somewhere. I don't Ooh. know where yet. We'll find, we'll we'll find, find her. Him. But Pockets her. is around. It's a her. Pockets. There's it, a yes, Joey. It is. Sorry. Sorry. Harley said it yesterday. Him. Pockets is a girl, guys. Oh, my goodness. So Pinky loves kangaroos. what makes a sewing cabinet <laughs> a sewing cabinet? So this one here, like we said, is optimal for your workspace. Just look at all the workspace here. Can you line it up? No, I, my aim you. is horrible as well. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so you've got all this space here on the left. Scott, do you want to sit down and show them how to You want me sit? to lay on it? No, oh, I don't want oh, you to sit, lay. Sit. I want you to oh, sit. Gosh. I want you to sit and just show them the correct way to sit at a sewing machine. Well, and first is in your sewing chair. Yes, and we'll get to our chairs. Don't oh, we'll worry. We'll talk about these. We'll talk about the chairs. Absolutely, can never not talk about our chairs. So, okay, we'll talk about the chairs and proper position uh, when we're sewing, especially our large projects. And this is where the kangaroo and Joey is just absolutely the must-have if you're working on the bigger pieces, whether it's quilts or garments. And the reason being is you have all of this support on the left si uh, left hand side. So, Ethan, can you see me? Yeah, you yep, can. Okay, can see you. I'll just talk then. Yes, you're good. <laughs> so when we're working with our big projects, we're not having to fight gravity on the left-hand side. And as we're sitting lined up center with our needle and we're pushing our project back, we then are pushing onto the quilt leaf to the back of the cabinet. So what ends up happening is we're not fighting gravity, pulling our project takes our stitches out of line. I get very angry. I had to use, do you remember what I had to use in my first quilt? Uh, he used a, uh, not a rotary cutter. He used a- uh, Not a seam ripper. Not a seam ripper. I may have used a box cutter a box on my cutter. very first quilt. I yes. wasn't happy about it. I didn't have a cabinet then, <laughs> but now I do have a cabinet. And it, the workspace and the support of your projects is my, gravity is bad. Debbie, I agree, yes. gravity is bad. <laughs> Uh, this is my my absolute go to reason of why having a cabinet, especially for for the big projects, for our quilters, for our garment makers. Uh, yes, Renee, an actual box cutter. 
Yes, it was, at least this one he didn't cut his finger open on. We just got to air all my yeah. laundry out there. Uh, <laughs> The, the space, the support of the project is always my absolute go-to reason of why having a sewing cabinet lets you sew in comfort for longer yes. because we're not having to fight what we're doing. We're, we're able to enjoy what we're doing and you just keep keep feeding, keep feeding, keep so feeding. So the other it's thing wonderful. too is with this cabinet, it does have some you know extra places that you can utilize. There was somebody else that was just talking about using a, a, another machine on here. So on this little Joey, you could put a serger on there. But the nice thing with this one back here, it's got two support legs. So it's strong enough to hold another sewing machine or a cutting surface. So you can actually have two machines set up. But like Scott said, you have your quilt coming across. And this, you don't want it to fall where it's going to pull on your stitches. So that's why you want to have the quilt leaf up. So it, you don't want gravity to hit your quilt. Uh Another fun thing for quilt leaps, just throwing this out there, you know, especially if we're, you know, if we're still putting our blocks together, uh, my Frankie girl, my three-year-old, she loves to make bracelets. And on my cabinet, we put the quilt leaf up. She sits behind, you know, behind, well, in front, behind a, what's, what's the direction? It'd be on the back side of the cabinet, but in front of, of you, yes. <laughs> she loves to make bracelets. Uh, and so, it, you know, whether you have a, another machine, a, a person working there, or you have your daughter, your granddaughter, you know, making making her own crafts. It's uh, yeah, kind of, it, it brings the whole family together. It does, and this is you know, it does look very large. So when it is open right here, it's seventy um, one inches, what it which or seventy five inches, which each was about six feet and four and a half deep with the drawer. Now we do have a, a measuring tape here to show you, so we, you guys can do see. Do we need the measuring? See, Valerie, Valerie knows all the dimensions. I just say <laughs> it, it's bigger than I am. <laughs> Like I said, she's the professional. I just, you know, <laughs> make jokes. So this one here is up oh, 71 and a half inches. Oh, you have good eyeballs. And then it is, where are we at? 55, 55. inches. So it still is a large cabinet that's going to be optimal for your workspace, but yet it can compact down to 57 inches, which is about four and a half feet closed by two feet. So when you close it all up. Should we close it up? Well, or you know we what? Talk about we were talking else? about gravity. And I don't know how many people watched yesterday with Harley and myself, but yesterday Where's we asked the questions, <laughs> if people want to win a set of quilt blocks. What are quilt blocks? Quilt blocks are what you can attach because we were talking yesterday how Krista Watson likes to do free motion quilting. So this is great because when you're sitting there and you are quilting and free motion quilting, I'm not you don't yet, have guys. to worry about your quilt pushing back and falling off. It all just kind of bunches up in the corner. It comes in a set of two. They're either in white, teak, or gray. And you can get, you can put them on the corner here. You can get two sets and make like a whole big wall, just depending on how big your quilt is actually um, when it's being made. But what we're going to do today... What are we going to do? Tell me what we're going to do. We are going to give away a set of these if somebody would like them. So all we need to do is have everybody put gravity defiers. Great second name. We're actually going to use the word gravity today. So for <laughs> that's the, our, that's our, that's our word. word today. So put gravity in the comment box. And what we're going to do is Kyle and Kennedy are going to spin the wheel um, after a few minutes here. And then we will need you guys to fill out the information to be able to get these sent directly to you. If someone could log into my Gmail and enter gravity, that would be great. I could use a set as well. I think I know where you can get a set. You, do you know a guy? I think I might know a guy or a girl. <laughs> or a gal. All right. So while we're, we're going to kind of just close this up to show you guys how compact this gets. You got it? There we go. The plant's hitting me. So then we've got the drawer cover here, so easily compacted. So this cabinet can be either in white, teak, or gray, but you know what? Three Two, colors. Three colors. And, you know, like we showed yesterday, more storage. More storage. More storage. We love storage. But, but wait, there's more. There, there's always more. So with the purchase of this cabinet here with Sewing Machines Plus Live today, you are going to get a matching Kiwi cabinet. The Kiwi comes with the pressing mat and the cutting mat. 
and those go right on there. And then the top two drawers have removable thread holders. So you can take these out, you can place them wherever you want, have it sit right next to you, put it in another area of your room. They make a room. great floating shelf. Uh, it's exactly what I did with my Kiwi cabinet. I just put my uh, thread storage on the wall. Because... And then the bottom drawer is big enough for a small serger or an iron. So or with the, the purchase of this wonderful cabinet, our Kangaroo and Joey, you are going to get this Kiwi cabinet absolutely free. But you could also be the winner of those magnificent cold catchers. Gravity defiers. Gravity defiers. There we go. So, <laughs> Z formation. <laughs> so, we are going to, let's see, is somebody there that are we going to keep letting people go? We'll go move out the cabinet and then should after we, we're done. Maybe show the probably the most important oh, thing. We could, yes. Absolutely. You I can mean, do I'm, that. I don't want to steal your thunder. It's okay. Three position lift. Kangaroo and Joey comes with a three position hydraulic lift. Did we figure out a great way to show the insert? Um, here, maybe we can try it this way because yesterday neither of us were really wearing dark colors. Can, so can you, you can see kind the... of see the insert, maybe a little bit on there. So where your machine will live 95% of the time. Sorry. Where am I at, Ethan? <laughs> we'll find it. Okay. So where your so, machine lives 95% of the time is in what we call position two, which is flatbed sewing. And what flatbed sewing does is it brings the deck of your machine down even with the cabinet. So you're not having to fight your project coming over the cabinet, over the deck of your machine. You have one flush surface. And to fill that space, we have these beautiful acrylic inserts. You can order these right from Sewing Machines Plus. They just need to know your cabinet and machine because they are custom made for the machine, for the cabinet, and it fills this entire space and you have one flat, smooth surface. So that's position two, flatbed sewing, which like I said, that's 95% of the time where your machine's gonna live. First position is free arm. Uh, this is what actually where I lived for my stocking. There uh, you go. You know, you learn new things. Uh, but also, you know, if you're doing garment making, if you're you know having to do that sleeve or that pant leg, uh, if you are uh, have a you know the bigger machines with the uh, embroidery arm attachments, that's where you're gonna uh, be for that type of project. So your free arm position, flatbed sewing, and then third position is storage. And the beautiful thing about this is your machine is doing all of the work. It's a hydraulic lift. So the weight of the machine is how that lift operates. And when it's in storage, it does have a well, a sewing well cover. So you can use this, you know, if you're doing piecing, if you're doing cutting and you don't have our kookaburra cutting table, you absolutely can use your cabinet, put the leaf up. You've got a ton of space for whatever your project is that you're working on, cutting, pressing, piecing, all those fun things. Okay, now right. where did we go? All right, so we are going to ask, Is I don't know if Jane's going to come back on, but we're going to give away a free set of quilt blocks. So I don't know if we need to just say spin that wheel and have Kennedy and, oh, grab it. There we go. So, all right, <laughs> spin that wheel and see who the winner is. I love that we got to do it in the middle of the presentation. Well, we don't really have anything else that, you have to leave that we'll be attached to for the show. You're so sweet. Congratulations right. to Monica, Monica. King. Woo! <laughs> I love that we did it right in the middle of the show too, you guys. It's uh, Monica <laughs> King is hanging with us on YouTube. Monica, you All are right. the winner. So what she needs to do is go to smplive.tv to redeem her prize. Now, go down to the bottom of the page, fill out all your information. Who are you? Where we're sending it? And then also tell us what you won from our friends at Arrow. And the color. And the color you like. And the color. Perfect. Any other details she needs? Nope. White that'll do it. Gray. White teak or gray. That's all we need to know. And an address. Oh, yes. But they'll get but, that. She has yeah, to fill that. Yeah, that, that'll be on the yeah. sheet. But there's a little area where she can write in all the specifics. Awesome, yeah. guys. I love it. All right. Well, this one's here for you, Jane. This, uh, this uh, cutting table is here and ready for you to get it into your home. So this here is our kookaburra cutting table. It's awesome. I just got one. This is an awesome cabinet. Why? Why is it awesome? Well, it's got storage. And then what else does it have? It has more storage. More storage. 
So this is a ideal cutting table to have. It is on heavy duty locking casters. You can move it around in any sort of space that you have with inside your sewing area. But wait, there's more. It expands. It expands to a 70 inches by 40 inches footprint. And it also has this beautiful cutting mat <clears throat> on the top that you can order additionally to go with this. And Scott, tell me what you like about a cutting table. Tell me why it's important for you to have the correct height cutting table. Happy wrists, okay. happy elbows. It's amazing. So how many people of you are actually cutting at, I know somebody had said earlier, they're cutting on a coffee table. How many of you are hunched, hunched over, over at a dining room table cutting? I sat last night. Um, I did a project last night for two and a half hours. And unfortunately, I don't have space for this quite yet in my house. And I legit was hunkered over my kitchen table for two oh, and a half hours yeah, it's like the this. Worst. And it was horrible. And all I can think of is the whole time I was going is, I really want one of these as my dining room table. Or just wait till <laughs> you're cutting on the floor and you go off your mat and then Janet gets really mad because then you put a nice cut, cut into mark the floor. into the hardwood floor. My so, wife was not happy about that one. She, ha she actually told me to get a cutting table. I'm not going to complain. So the one nice thing about when you're cutting, like we had mentioned, I'll let Scott do it because he's an avid cutter. At least it's not a um, box cutter. We'll give you Stop. a rotary cutter today. Um, so just making sure and, you know, just making sure it's at the right height. Now, this cabinet is sturdy enough so you can cut all the way across and it's not going to collapse on you. So you can cut nice and smooth. He's not hurting his wrists or anything. No. So how many of you are cutting, let's just say, a dining room table? Throw a one in the comments. There we go. What is another good place? Who, how many of you are cutting on the floor? I was. Let's put a two if you're cutting on the floor. I was, absolutely. I am completely guilty. Up, oh, Rebecca, we've got a bunch of ones coming in here. Awesome. No twos yet, so not many two cutters or floor cutters. But it's also nice just because it's got the storage here. Um, it's got the nice wing walls here that you can grab and open and close to put down to whatever position you would like to have it, whether you have it at 40 by 46 or the 70 by 40. So the cutting mat that comes with it that you can purchase, that's an additional purchase. We've got some a few people that cut on the floor. All right, there's my there floor There you go, cutters. there's your floor friends. <laughs> All right, so the cutting mat that comes with this is a self-healing cutting mat. And what makes it a self-healing cutting mat? Well, you don't wanna keep cutting in the exact same spots. You wanna kind of move throughout your cutting station. But also the other thing too is that um, you're gonna want to give your cutting mat a bath every now and then. And what that does is it cleans out all the fibers off of the cutting mat, and then it lets the material heal back up. So this is our Kookaburra cutting table. It is 36 inches high. Now I know it might be a little bit too high for some people out there. I do get that, that it's a little bit too high Pretty for some people. Pretty vertically challenged. You are a little bit shorter than I, I have most. boots on y'all just because it makes me look taller compared to Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> I have heels on too, so. Um, but we do have other tables out there um, that is available for you to look at and purchase if that's something that you need that needs to be a little bit shorter for you. Um, but this one is our number one selling cutting table. And the nice thing I like about it is on the back side, you're able to even put in a bolt of fabric. Um, so when you get, like we've got bolts of fabric here. Oh, yeah. So what you can do is you can just take this and then it slides right in here and it sits right in the back. So you can either have this set sitting in there or you can take it and put it to the side. I'm going to make a recommendation that has nothing to do with cabinets. OK, what's your recommendation? We need to get a new cutting disc on there. Oh, OK. I have a favorite cutter, and I have my favorite cutting discs. I should have brought it with. Scott, is there anything else you'd like to add about this cutting table? Uh, it works, you know, it works wonders for not just cutting, but man, can you make that thing go in. I like my Martelli cutter, just putting that out there. <laughs> uh, it, it works great for all the projects. Uh, there are pressing mats. Uh, we're actually uh, going to be bringing one out. There's some sneak peek advice that's going to be later this year uh, that fits perfectly on just one side of the kookaburra. So mm -hmm. you don't have to have the full 
uh, 40 by 70 profile, you can absolutely have just one of the wings up and having uh, the other wing down, which really makes this, I mean, it can fit in every space. My, my yeah. sewing room is I have a, you know, half of my, uh, my 18 year old's bedroom because she's away at college. So I have my cabinet, my kookaburra in her room and I can collapse everything down. It pushes against the wall and then I pull it out when I need it. Somebody else just said you can also use this and put a, a um, a tablecloth over the top and use it for events and stuff. Yeah. And, well, it out. and you know, it supports the way cause you've got the two gate legs on both sides. I mean, you can, uh, I'm not a little, I mean, I may be short, but I'm not a little guy and you can get some, you can put some weight on here. So you absolutely can use it for, you know, parties and serving and, and not just Cassie, the wings do not lock. There is a magnet that catches them, but they do not lock. So they are magnetized. Um, so that's a, you know, the way that they stay closed. Yes, this is great for laying out projects, but oh, yes. you, you really just went to town with cutting strips. Told, told me to cut, so <laughs> who needs binding strips? So, <laughs> we got binding I mean, strips. This table is really nice. It is going to give you a large work surface that everybody always dreams of having inside their sewing area. It is also going to give you organization because it also has not only three adjustable shelves on the back. It's got the four, four drawers, drawers in the, the front. front. Um, and, and then the perfect height for ergonomics. Yes. And even for people who like to stand and sew, you can use your machine up here. If you've got your embroidery arm on it, mm -hmm. you can embroider standing here. You can surge and stand at this. Um, like Scott said, it can hold a lot of weight on these wing walls. So not just a cutting table. You can use it to lay out your projects. You can use it for events at your home. You can surge on it. You can sew on it. You can do so everything. You can do anything and everything on here. Um, again, this is part of our kangaroo line. So this comes in white, teak, and gray. Has a lifetime warranty on it. It's just an amazing addition to any sewing space. Scott, did we miss anything on the kookaburra? Did we say three colors? I did. White, teak, and gray. Oh, those are three colors. Those are three colors. <laughs> That's right. You want to show them? Here, let's spin it around and show them how that, that bolt of fabric fits in there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and guys, these shelves are adjustable. So if you're, you know, say you've got a a, a serger that you want to store, uh, we have a also, serger in there. Do we have one? Down we have there? one right down there. Hey, look, yeah. I can see it on the screen. <laughs> we have a serger in there, right? You can you can adjust those to whatever height that you need, and it's it's you know it's a choose your own adventure. You make it up as you go. Yes. All right, we're gonna move on to the next one. The next one is our small little guy. Um, also that comes in white, teak, or gray. I but think again, you this get is... to present that one. Huh? I think you get to do the full I get presentation. To do presentation on this. Um, but, so this is why? our bandicoot. This is my cabinet that I have at home. This is the same cabinet that Blaine has for his wife at her house um, for their sewing machine. It's just a nice, small, compact cabinet. I am a beginner sewer. I, I do have a sewing machine that I recently purchased this last year, um, and I've used it five times. Hey, that's um, amazing. Once... Um, for our stockings here for the office. And then I also um, had to make a onesie for my friend's dog who had surgery. So I had to sew some stuff for her. Um, so this again has the three position hydraulic lift so you can bring it all the way up. So just like Scott had said, it's got three different positions. This one has that small opening. So this is only 20 and three quarters by 11. So not all the big machines. So mine is a Bernina 475, fits in here perfectly. So this one just has a little bit of storage. You can never have, I use this right here for my books. I have my Bernina kit right there with all of my tools in it right next to me. Um, I've got my foot pedal in the door right there. Pockets hey, finally found, found his pockets. way out. <laughs> there is pockets. Her way. Her way. There's a joke. Her. Her. Sorry. It's a girl. <laughs> um, but this again is, you know, going to give you you know, just a small compact cabinet, but yet still be able to sit and do your, your sewing. There's no quilt leaf that comes with it, but it is just a nice. I love it. I, oh, it's, it's great. It, Especially it's a, if you're, you know, if you're in a, say you're in a small apartment or, or small space. Mine's in our bedroom because I don't, our basement isn't finished. So I put it in the corner of our bedroom. Yeah, there was mine. That's where I bed. started. So I got <laughs> Bella's room. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the perfect cabinet. If you're just getting into sewing, uh, or also for the kiddos, right? Yes. Uh, it, it's it, it gives and it's you the an cubbies. Expensive cabinet, which has got you know a lifetime warranty on it. It so has they can all the it. kangaroo benefits. It has the heavy has duty the locking lift. casters. 
Um, I just love it because it rolls around. We just got new carpeting this last year. So I, of course, wanted the really fluff, plushy stuff because um, I didn't want it to be hard when I walked through our bedroom. The locking um, so heavy-duty casters this, go over it, it goes just over fine. It's so nice. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, but I mean, it's got a little bit of storage. It's got a nice workspace for, you know, for those people who are starting out a second sewing machine, um, whatever you want to utilize this for. So anything else I want to cover on this one? Otherwise, I think we, I think we have four minutes left and we can go over all the chairs. Wow. We're doing good we're doing today. Great. We're doing great. It, see how well it works when I let you do most of the talking. Oh, geez. You shouldn't let me do that. <laughs> um... It's been a long day and it's raining here in Wisconsin. It it's been windy gloomy. and rainy all day, and it's not been fun, and it just kind of makes you feel blah. We're going to put that right here. So we're <laughs> going to bring out all the sewing chairs. And this is what happens when Valerie's not in charge of moving cabinets. I blocked all my chairs in with the <laughs> kookaburra. <laughs> You're going to have yours out before me. Probably, but I'm still, I'm still digging because there's a lot of chairs. Here's an example. They're light because I have to lift mine over the cabinets. <laughs> so these chairs weigh 26 pounds. You know what? I'm going to switch it up today. I am going to put these solids in the front and the Ooh. prints in the back today. So we have our six solid colors. We have five fun prints. These are just magnificent to have not only in your sewing space, but also I've had people tell me that this is what they use to sit and watch TV with because it hits their back just right. It's a nice, comfortable chair. It's got that lumbar support that hits you right on the square of your back. So you don't have to worry about that pain on your lower back when you're sitting and sewing. It's got the adjustable height from 18 to 22 inches. This does have a 300 pound weight limit. Um, it's got the five star base, so you don't have to worry about falling off and don't try to push me off. Um, what, why would I do that? Because <laughs> Harley has. <laughs> so you're Guilty not going to fall. Association. And then it's also got the storage underneath. Again, more storage, comfort, amazing chairs. You got to have one. You got to get one. Call up Sewing Machines Plus. Get one of these on your in your cart and just check on out and take one home. Lots of love on the chairs. Wow. Yes. Of all the choices, my favorite is the sewing machines on it. Where's Notions? Right here. There's right behind Notions. Me. There's Notions right there. This is, uh, we're going to switch places. This is the one that I have at home. This is our so Wow, So one. Now. Yes. Just have to, you know. Everybody loves, loves the buttons too and the ruby. I need two oh, of them. Purple. Hey, Bernadette, Bernadette I you agree. can call up. They can get you two chairs we and they'll ship directly to your house. I think we know somebody. I think we know someone. I don't know. Jane, is that something that maybe we can do? We can get these chairs shipped out to these people? Yeah, these will ship. The, you order today, we'll ship these tomorrow. Yeah. Call up Sewing Machines Plus. But these are just amazing chairs. I just absolutely love, love them. them. A lot of people are like, oh, they don't look comfortable. And then they sit in them and I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you order today by 6 o'clock Eastern time. They're going to get it out to you. Those chairs, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, buy two. They're small. Like 26 pounds. You need to have two or three. Put a couple in the craft room, the sewing room, and then a couple in the other rooms. You're hey, what are you up to? Like six or seven right now? 17. Oh, 17. <laughs> I keep giving them away as gifts. I love them so much. Like all my neighbors on the court, everybody has one. Are you going to have chair races in the court? That would be in kind of fun. In the summertime, we will. Absolutely. These, these work great for chair races. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see you guys doing it all the time. Yeah. Uh, actually, I love I love the solid colors, but I mm -hmm. also am a huge fan of the buttons and then the one with the um, the, uh, the uh, la, 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 sewing machines on it. Okay, the buttons and the black love. sewing notions. But, but... But, but I, you, you know I love the chairs. Yes. However, today, the kookaburra, you sold me. See? Hey. 40 inches. 40 inches. 70 by 40. Here's 40. Like, that's big. And then 70. I mean, I when you guys are talking, I'm, measuring, lay on that I'm have measuring my room already. I'm like, <laughs> where am I going to put this? So I think it's fantastic. Question, you talked about the height. Do you know how high it is? 36, 36 inches high. Okay, that's what I need to know. 36 inches high. And I'll tell you where that hits me. It hits me perfectly to do work on. Thank you very much. Okay. He's just trying to help you out. You're just fill great. up your space that you got there. 
I love it. I I need a table like that. And I think yes. everybody else does too. So I'm going to tell yes. them how to get it. All right. Thanks, Perfect. Jane. We'll see you guys thanks, tomorrow. Jane. Bye, Valerie. Bye, Scott. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Oh my gosh. Arrow. We love it. Okay. Let's go through all of these amazing uh, items that they have. First, it's the kangaroo and Joey. And you see it right there. That's a great price. One nine nine nine. Call in special. Wink, wink. You're also getting that free Kiwi sewing storage rolling caddy with the purchase. I love that. They showed them together right there at the top of the show. 800-401-8151. If you're thinking about it, this is the week to get it. I'm telling you, they sold me. Uh, and I'm and I watch every single second of the entire day. OK, the next thing we have is oh, the Kookaburra cutting table. I love it. So that will be mine. Um, it has it comes in white, teak and gray. And that's the cutting table. It is 70 inches by 40 inches and it's 30. What did they say? 36 inches high. You could put that bolt of fabric in. It's got four drawers. One, one, nine, nine. Quilt fest pricing, but call in special, my friends. That thing folds right up, or you can just leave it out, put all your stuff on top of it, like I'm going to do. 800 401 81 51. And I think we're going to move on to ah, the Bandicoot 2. And that comes in white, gray, or teak. And that is the cutest thing. This is what Blaine and his wife Michelle have. And they talked about that. This is a great price. It's a nice little table to put your machine on. It folds right up. It looks clean. Uh, $6.99. But again, call in special, uh, of course, because it is Quilt Fest 800-401-8151. And now on to my next favorite thing, the chairs. If you will, this is the hydraulic sewing chair with a little storage space underneath the seat. Great price, $329, $329. And of course, there is a call-in special, wink, wink. You just have to have it. Get two, maybe get three and give one away as a gift because you know how great they are. Oh my goodness, I'm tired. Blaine? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I get so Jane. excited when they're on. What's that? I get so excited when they're on. I know. I see that. Oh. Well, I hope I everybody else gets girl. excited. I'm going to go shopping. I got to go. <laughs> hey, as long as everybody else is getting excited too, that's what matters. And <laughs> uh, they get them a Bandicoot too. I love that cabinet too, by the way. Folds up extremely small. I'm speaking from experience. And then it expands and opens up big. And we have a brother 3600D stuck in it. And it works perfectly. Um, do you, is it hard to assemble? Like you're putting it no. together? No, right. very easy. I thought so. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm, I got to go get my kookaburra because I, can't, I love it. So it does come in several boxes uh, and you have to put it together, but it's, you know, it's got instructions. It's very easy to do. And, you know, just, you know, get your, your favorite beverage and just go in there and, and spread it all out. <laughs> sure. And, uh, you know, spend just kind of plan on a couple hours and you'll have it all assembled. Make Easy. it a party. It's there you, you know go. what? Actually, invite some friends over and just be like, Oh, you know what we could do? Let's put my new, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then everybody's like, Oh, and then everyone gets a little turn at it. So, hey, why don't you come over for our arrow party? And you know, <laughs> yeah. the arrow cabinet party. And they're going, Oh, yeah, okay, we'll come. And they don't know that they're gonna have to put it together though. <laughs> they they won't care at that point. They'll be like, All right, we're all in it together, we'll do it. <laughs> That's all right. Oh all right, Jane, we're going right. to let you take a little break and uh, we'll get you back in here in a little bit. But we are going to move on and we're going to talk all about some robotics again. And we are going to talk about the Pro Stitcher Premium. And we've got our good buddy, Nicholas Turkan, coming back in. So let's bring Nicholas right back to the show. So, hey, Nick. Thank you. Excellent. On oh, How are you? Go. We are good, and uh, everybody loved your first session uh, earlier, so we're excited to see what you can show us about the Pro Stitcher and how to use it, and uh, we'll let you get going, and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. We'll tell them how they can get one. Excellent. Sounds great. Well, exactly. Pro Stitcher Premium. So let's start with the basics. What is Pro Stitcher? Pro Stitcher is our robotic system. So that means we have a computer-controlled tablet here, or the tablet is the computer, uh, that actually controls the system. And then the carriage that the machine rides on has two motors, one that'll control the x-axis movement.
Hey, uh, Nicholas, we lost your sound. Perhaps the AirPods got disconnected. You might, your AirPod, AirPods might have got disconnected somehow. Yeah, we can't hear anything. All right, we're going to give him just a second to uh, to see if he can fix that. And uh, but he, let's try. let's try it. He's oh. he's back. We I heard something. Okay, can you hear me now? Is yes, that gotcha, gotcha. Good deal. Okay. I'm just going to ditch the AirPods. My <laughs> my systems are fighting. The computer has it for a bit, and yeah. then my phone is trying to steal it. And I can't seem to stop it. It worked this morning great. Now yeah, it's it did. Really funny. So well, we can hear you just fine. So okay. I'll just enunciate clearly and speak loudly into my laptop. <laughs> no, no okay. A's or you know, you, you guys or anything like that. I'll I'll do my best, but I am from the Midwest. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But okay. Let's let's start over here. Pro Stitcher, what is it? So Pro Stitcher is our computerized robotic systems that will move and make the machine uh, move on its own while stitching. So there's two components to Pro Stitcher. We have our tablet where we do all of our design work, choosing what we're going, what we are going to tell the machine what to stitch out. And then there's the carriage. Now the machine sits on a carriage on the frame, and that's what provides movement. Now. The Pro Stitcher carriage has two motors that control the X and Y axis of movement, and those uh, two motors move at simultaneously, and it can move the machine in any direction you want. So like all technology, computers are only as good as the information you give them. So you need to give the information what you want it to stitch, where you want it to stitch, what size, all of that. Now, when you buy Pro Stitcher Premium, the package comes preloaded with over a thousand designs. So the other day we were talking about Pro Stitcher Lite. I know Sean and uh, Kim and Christina were talking about it. Those come with 250 designs preloaded. Premium comes with over a thousand right off the hop. So that is plenty to keep you busy for many, many, many months or years. And then in addition, you can purchase new designs and have them uh, loaded into the system. Now, previously, you had to put that onto a USB stick, put the USB, uh, download it on your computer, put it on a USB, transfer it over to here. Now we have Pro Stitcher Connect. That is our latest version of the software, and any of the previous systems can be upgraded to Connect. With Connect, you can actually go directly to uh, the Pro Stitcher website and purchase designs from the website and have them transferred directly onto your account and they will pop up and you can download them right on the tablet at the machine. So that is one of the, the newest features with Pro Stitcher Connect. So um, I'm running uh, just a, I'm not running Connect on this machine, I'm running Pro Stitcher Premium uh, just because I have most of the designs I need on there and I don't mind the USB. So all of the previous versions are still supported. So you don't have to worry about having to stay right on top of every single update. If you get to a version that you absolutely love and it works and it services all the needs that you have, you can stay there. And I know there are some people that still run Pro Stitcher Classic, one of the very first iterations of the program. I'm in love with Premium. I now have Pro Stitcher Lite on a second machine. So I'm learning the ins and outs of that very intimately now. But uh, it's interesting to see what some of those features are. So right off the hop, with Pro Stitch Premium, we have triangle skew. So if you are trying to fit a design into a certain area, we have two different skews. We can um, do sort of a, a skew inside of concave areas, one inside of convex areas, and one in triangles, where you only have three different points of an area to skew. So if I can have my camera switch over, I'm going to start working on, on the screen here. OK. And I hope the glare isn't too bad. Okay. And there we go. That should take care of that. Okay. So here we go. You can see I'm moving around. Now, 
When you're looking at the screen, the orange crosshairs represent where your needle is in your quilt. So if I wanted to, I'm actually going to come to an area slightly off to the side here. I'm going to create an area. So I'm going to move my needle to one position on the quilt. I'm going to press two corner and you just heard that little ding and I'm going to move it to the other corner and do a little ding. That pinkish purple box that just popped up is the area that I just created. So that is where I'm allowing the machine to stitch out. So if we want to bring in a design, we go, um, I should roll back a little. When you are operating in uh, Pro Stitcher, we have the tabs across the top. So that is file, edit, area, modify, repeat, Pro Stitcher. And right below it are the tabs. So we're going to go file, design, open, and then it'll pull up a design box. Now I want, I found a lovely flower pot design. Where is it? Sorry, it's hard to see this through, through my camera lens. So flower pots continuous. So I'm going to bring that design closer to my area. So without doing any modifications, it actually kind of fits in that area. But if I wanted it to fit exactly into that space, we can go to the Modify tab, and then on the ribbon below it, we can go to Skew. I don't know. Let me know if my audio cut out or if you can hear this just fine. I think it's the computer behind me is capturing my audio, but the camera in front of me is getting my video. Uh, so right here, if I go to skew, that is just stretched out that design and filled that space perfectly. So if we like that, we can go ahead and actually we can just go to Pro Stitcher. Under quilt, we can verify my settings. We have stitch. I'm going to do a tie off at the start. It's going to stop to pull up my thread automatically. And if I like those settings, I can click run. It's going to ask me to verify my settings. I, I already know I like all those settings. So I'm going to click proceed and the flashing across the bottom says, make sure the needle is up. That is because the computer system is going to move the machine. If your needle is down in your quilt, it will not know that and it is going to accidentally tear a hole in your quilt or break a needle. So let's click proceed. And I'm going to lower this so we can watch it stitch out. So it took one single stitch to pull up the bobbin thread. And now I'm just going to click resume on the screen. And away we go. So within about 30 seconds, you can start quilting.
Okay. So if we can have it switch back to my other camera, I'll go back to this one. Um, so I saw a couple of the questions that popped up. What foot am I using and does it matter? No, it doesn't really matter. You can use the closed toe foot or the ruler foot while using Pro Stitcher. I have the new Glide 3 foot. That is the, uh, it's like a little acrylic plastic bowl foot that literally just glides over the fabric. And this is the new third version of it. There's actually a little metal collar inside the plastic uh, sleeve. So you cannot, you know, break the plastic when you're, uh, if you accidentally put on the screw too tight. So the, the foot is not so important, but the benefit of using the glide foot, if you have any appliques, if you have any thick seams, this is going to jump over them. If you use some of the other feet, uh, they might catch on that and it'll actually push your fabric in one way over the other before the foot hops onto it. So that could matter with the foot. Uh, somebody said they need a flower pot design. Pro Stitcher Premium comes with this continuous flower designer right in it. And this is one that is available on the Pro Stitcher Lite and Pro Stitcher Premium. So you could buy the computer system to get that design. Uh, I, there was one more question that I saw that I thought was a good one that I can't remember at the moment. Um, hopefully it'll come back to me. Um, so, oh, it's, it's gonna bug me that I can't think of what that question was. Um, what I wanted to say was, uh, you know, so that was all in computerization. If we wanted to switch to free motion, I'm going to drop my needle so my machine isn't going to move. And I'm going to come over here to the Proster tab and listen to this. Did you hear that sound? That was my gears disengaging. So I'll do it one more time so you can hear it. That's how quick and easy it is to engage and disengage the robotics on this system. So one touch of a button on the screen, and now I'm able to do some free motion quilting. fancy as the uh, the stitching that the computerization did, but it is that easy to switch back and forth between them. So let's do another design. I'm going to tip you back up. So again, I'm going to engage my gears. So now I can do another computerized design. And I'm going to, I'm going to just move, oops, that, clear that area. I'm going to move those flower pots just to about where they actually stitched out, just so I can see them on the screen. And since spring has sprung, I found this other cute little bunny rabbit design that I thought would just be so cute, hopping along right beside our, our flower pots. So we can put them right there and we can start building designs together. There you go. Um, you know, just by adding to it. Now, I'm physically looking to see where the needle is down below and lining up where the crosshairs are. Now, those crosshairs represent where the needle is at any time. And again, if I like that size, that bunny, you know, he's almost the size of the flower pot, that's good enough for me. Pro stitcher, quilt. And if I wanted to double check, and see, is this position gonna work? We can actually turn the stitching off. And what this is gonna do is allow the machine, it's gonna air stitch. So all of my settings are turned off. I still need to make sure the needle is up because the computer is going to start moving the machine. And here we go. It is tracing right over the lines that it's going to be stitching but it's not doing any physical stitching. So if you needed to make sure that something was aligned perfectly, you can do your alignment, make sure it looks good, and then actually have the machine move right over it 
to make sure that it's going to work. So since that looks good, I'm going to press pause. Since I don't need to finish it, let it finish stitching. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to Pro Stitcher. I'm going to turn my stitch on and my flip on and proceed. And let's stitch that out. have it. Because I'm doing this on camera, I ran out of bobbin thread. So I just reached down below, pulled out my bobbin case, put a new bobbin in. There we go. And what we now need to do, I'm going to pull you up to the screen here. Let me zoom right down. So our bobbin thread ran out somewhere about there. What I'm going to do is go to Pro Stitcher, new start and end, and use the little auto. And that's going to give me a new start point. And let's click run. Pull up that bobbin thread. And now it's going to continue stitching on from the point that it left off. I'll bring you back down again. You'll be able to see that that finished the design and now I just have to get rid of those threads. So one of the other really cool features with Pro Stitcher is the record feature. So if you had a really great free motion design that you did yourself, uh, that you're very comfortable with, and you wanted to record it, or say you wanted to record your own handwriting, or possibly if the grandkids had uh, traced around their hands and you wanted to quilt that out, you can come over to the machine. We can turn our gears off, and that means the machine is going to move nice and free and easy, and our crosshairs have turned purple, so that's how we know that they're disengaged we can go to record. And if we record, again, I'm going to try zoom out a little bit of the screen so you can see it. It's always easy to start with something simple, like your name. So check that out. I just hand wrote my own name. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. We can come along here, modify it. Let's rotate that. There we go. That looks a little better. And if we engage our gears, and what I'm going to do is create a new little area. Rid of that design, and I'm going to put my name into that box. There we go. And have that stitch out. And again, you could do this with anything if you wanted to uh, draw out the design with a marker and then, then trace it out. You could do that. And while the machine is stitching, the little black lines actually turn gold, and that will tell you where you are in the design. So look at that. So my own little digitized name. 
Now with that, it can be resized, saved, turn into any, turn it in any direction, shrink one size, all of the modifications that we can make with it. So look within, you know, 20 minutes or so, we already got a couple of really cute designs, little bunny, well, maybe not so cute for the people that planted their flowers and have a bunny rabbit cho chewing on their little flowers. Um, but in a quilt, it's okay. So what other features can I tell you about? I think some of my, my favorite features, I run a business, I run quilting as a business. So Pro Stitcher Premium is essential for the business. If I didn't have it, I don't think I could run my business. So I have all my different designs. When you go through, you can just see all of these designs and every folder that I have here has countless designs in them. So the possibilities of what you can actually stitch out and quilt are endless. I like to have mine, a lot of them saved. I'll open this cute botanical. It has full rows. And all I have to do is crop that to the size of my quilt and it's ready to stitch out. So when I mean business, once I get my quilt loaded with the system, it takes maybe three to five minutes to get it all lined up and ready to go. And then you can start quilting. So again, Pro Stitcher Premium really allows you to just start quilting quickly and immediately. So was there any more questions in there? I'll get you to turn the camera to the other one. There we go. I don't know if Blaine has any questions. I'm trying to speed through this. I know the day has been slipping away and, you know, things get a little bit off schedule very quickly. So. Well, hey, great job, Nicholas. That was awesome. And uh, you. you are right. The Pro Stitcher, oh my gosh, it makes things so much easier. And uh, I used to, like when we go to trade shows, I'm always the one that, you know, demoed the Pro Stitcher. <laughs> It makes, uh, it makes a, uh, you know, somebody like me that really can't quilt a very good quilter. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing. Ooh, got some feedback there. Uh, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of practice and time, but even with the Pro Stitcher, everything has a learning curve. You have to take the time to learn it. And again, a lot of people gravitate towards it because it's a very intuitive computer system. And again, mm -hmm. the way things are designed in there. We have our uh, tabs across the top, then the ribbon below it, and then the sidebar to the right-hand side. And you will always follow the same procedure. You're going to click a tab, click the, the button on the ribbon, and then you have what you can actually turn on and turn off off to the side. So those are very easy to follow through once you get that in your home. Yeah. Good tips. Good tips. Well, thanks, Nicholas. We sure do appreciate you. And uh, so we're going to tell everybody how they can get one now. Excellent. Well, thanks for having me and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sure will. Okay. All right, everyone. That is the Pro Stitcher Premium. Now, again, uh, the price on this is $9,995. And, uh, $9 and uh, we do have a call-in special. So if you want to get that quilt show pricing, give us a call right now. We do have financing available and we're going to ship it free uh, nationwide. 800-401-8151. Now, what I want to tell you a little bit about the Pro Stitcher Premium now, Pro Stitcher makes this for several different long arm machines. Naturally, they're going to make it for handy quilter, all the, the uh, bigger handy quilter machines. Uh, if you want to get the smaller handy quilter machines, they have the Pro Stitcher Lite. But the Pro Stitcher Premium is going to be on the like the 18 inch and up. Uh, it also, uh, it works on our King Quilter. Uh, it works on the Baby Locks uh, quilting machine. And it also works on Janome's quilting machine. So uh, several different applications there. If you have any more questions about any of that, just give us a call. They can answer your questions. And uh, But we would highly recommend you give them a call if you, uh, to see the compatibility of the machine you have. All right, guys, we are going to move on, and we're going to actually go to the land of Brewer. And uh, so uh, looking forward to this, we have Katie Ludwig and Bernice Rios from Brewer going to be talking to us today. So, ladies, welcome to Quilt Fest. Hi, Hi, Blaine. How are y'all? We're good. We're excited to show you some really nice products. 
Well, good. We're excited to see your products. And uh, as y'all know, we sell a lot of the Brewer products. So we're excited to see what you have. And I'm going to let y'all get going and I'll be back in 30 minutes and tell everybody how they can get theirs. All right. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Katie. My name is Bernice. And we have some really nice products to show you. We'll start with the Tudo. And this is a Serger Deluxe Edition um, bag, but it's also great for storage and um, has really nice wheels and the great handle for rolling and, and traveling to get to different retreats or to take um, on the road with you when you need to take your sewing supplies. It fits the um, typical domestic machine as well as Serger's and then has tons of pockets for storage and can um, keep things that you need to take with you for your notions and different items. Uh, the stitching is beautiful on this. This is an exclusive to um, Brewer. And the dimensions? So the dimensions, the exterior dimensions is 20 by 17 by 14. But if we want to go ahead and do the dimensions in the inside for all those domestic uh, sewing machines, um, the dimensions for inside are 19 by 17 by 14. So really great size. Um, it's always good for not just sewing machines, but your projects. Maybe your kids, Katie. It definitely, we can <laughs> store things and travel with them. Yeah, Check and like Katie said, it does have different uh, feature, different pockets here in the front, and then I think you have one that it opens out. Opens it's up. Huge. Oh, it's the yes. other one, Katie. Oh, the, the other, other side. side. Yep. This is here. Here we go, and I think you can load it up front loader that's why that way it's easy to just put in um it does have adjustable straps as well you can strap your kids in again yes we'll strap the kids in. <laughs> uh, no don't do that <laughs> <laughs> but it is really good for traveling needs and storage um like you said and it does collapse as well if you need to store this and don't have the space to take it up and it breaks down really easy you just push Whoop. right here right there you push it, this goes down, and it collapses all into one. Uh, so let's say you're done traveling, you're done using it in the classroom uh, at a retreat. You can always collapse it in, put it in a closet, and not have to worry about it until you use it back up again. Yep, or it lies flat. You can slide it under a bed, too. That, too, definitely. Yep. So what the other product we have to bring um, out? This is a must-have in every sewing room. Sewing room, project room. We'll get it. It is a USB uh, USB connecti connection to it. Um, it is our light pad. And it's touch sensitive and turns on and to the bright setting um, and starts off and it goes the dimensions here. You can have the measurements on this side that you see, and then comes with this uh, cutting mat as well. Um, and these are great because they are, um, they have the inch measurements and then they have the angles. So if you need to cut on the 45 for cutting bias tape, you certainly can do that as well. We can turn the dimness down by holding that um, and see what we're talking about so the angles are there for you. So Katie, let's say I don't want to cut on it. I am I don't cut anything. What else could this, could this possibly be good for? Another great thing for this, so measuring or tracing um, for fabric patterns or different items, you can do that because the light comes through from the bottom and then you can put the fabric on top and still see here to trace the fabric and it's better than having to trace it on a window yeah so. i remember when i used to do it on the window oh my gosh it was a lifesaver but this this is very lightweight it's dimmable so let's say i have light but i just need a touch of light this is great because you could dim it to different brightness to it and turn it off and turn it right off definitely so how would it work if I were to want to cut on it? 
So if you are going to cut on it, it does have the glass surface, but then you do want to have this to cut through. And we would have then our cutting tool, which is another great product. Oh, that's a nice color. I love the tulip pink. Um, and this one is great because it works for both left hand and right hand people. You can put your blade to the other side and it has the shield that slides out with a touch really easy. Oh, nice. So I do like that one, but then you can measure and line it up and cut on the grid pretty easy. But if you are measuring too, another product that we would use with this and recommend is our spinabout rulers. Spinabout rulers. And I see you do have them here. And we do like the spinabouts because they come in the measured, they have the regular one inch. And then if you spin it to the other side, it gives you the half inch. So then you can line them up and go from there. I'm going to cut this way. And then you would just cut on your angle and go from there. Well, I didn't cut all the way through, <laughs> which is great. But the spinabout rulers we do have, and they run range in a variety of sizes from the two inch and square to then they have the, um, six inch on the um, rectangle and then this is the is that the 12 this one's the 12 and a half by 12, by 12 square 12 and a half. yep and they're all in half so we do have a range of them uh, I think the biggest one that we do have would be our 20 20 and a half um and i do like this one they all do come with this qr code that then takes you to videos and um explanation on how to use them which is great because the best part about this is when you have fabric that is patterned as well you can still see the through that and line it up and then there are clear boxes in every inch that then you can see and make sure you're getting an exact measurement as well on this. Okay, so I do see that there is like a frosted place to it. Can you tell me about that? I don't have these rulers in my sewing place. Definitely, and the frosted backing is um, ideal for these because then it helps not move around when you are laying it on the fabric. It gives you control and better measuring when you go to use those. Um, which is a nice feature. I really, really like the spinabout rulers. Uh, they also come, we have a stand for those. I see you have it right here, nice yeah. and organized. And it does fit all of the sizes um, up to the 12 by 12, which has a slide and we wanna pull that. So it slides in and holds that. And then you can also, where'd that mat go? I think you have the mat right over there. Oh, gotcha. Because it also makes for a great storage with your mat as well if you need to keep things handy and it keeps things off your counter or your cutting table but at a hand's length so you can grab them and go and make sure you're able to cut and do the quilting measurements that you need. Nice. I think I'm going to have to get at least maybe one of each. Yeah. Just maybe. I which, don't know. Just maybe, which is great. I, I love them. I think they make a great addition. Okay. Oh, uh, I almost did forget. I think we have a bag for the light pad. Oh, you're right. We yes. do. It is our Nifty Notions bag. Um, it has a nice contrast with the pink to it, and then you have the gray. Go ahead and give it a try, Katie. It has a zipper in the inside, so you could put your light pad in there. And it does slide in easy, fits it. Whoop. Yep. And then you're ready to zip it and take it and go, which is nice. That means I can add rulers, cutting mat, my rotary cutter. My rotary cutter and your light pad. And this does have the extra pocket in the front for storage too, which is nice. So then you could put them all together and take that to go to if you needed, which is, nice. it fits right under your arm and then you're ready to go. That seems very nice. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> so 
in addition to that, we have our wool mat. Which, Tell me a little bit about this one. This one is 100% natural wool, and it's like a pressing mat if we need to iron anything and you don't have space or don't have the iron up and want to get it out. You certainly have this to cover, and it's nice. It feels nice. It is really nice and thick, and the best thing about this is you can just clean it really easily with a lint roller, nice. um, and then you can lay your fabric out, and if you need to press it, you can do that. So I have some seams here, and I think we should probably try and press these. Okay, so this is our Panasonic iron. It's cordless. Katie, have you heard of cordless? A cordless iron? No, A cordless. that's amazing. Very cordless. Uh, there's no cord to it, Katie, look. No, so then <laughs> if you're ironing, you can iron in the center of the table. And if you're ironing a larger quilt, it can go anywhere you need. So some people do have piecing on the wall and you can certainly do that. And then you can iron vertically with this and steam as well, which that's a huge power of steam that comes out of this. The other great feature about this is that the tips are um, multi-directional. So when you're doing bias tape, you can do either direction or binding or doing splitting your seams when you're sewing your seams together. Um, you can go any direction and it'll help split the parts, which is nice. Wow, did you also know we can also detach the container to be able to refill it, take it to your sink, refill it, and then pop it right back on there. Which is great feature, I really love that. Um, and then when you dock it, what if I need to um, put it away? How? So once you go ahead and turn it on, it does take about a minute or so to heat from cold to hot. And then right now, you just laid it down less than five seconds. It reheated back to its normal temperature, which we have the setting on high right now. That's awesome. I really enjoy the steam. Look at this. I know. It's, it's really powerful. So this means I could take my iron to the project instead of the project to the iron. Really nice. Um, it is nickel, so plate, stainless steel. Um, it's a bit wider and like Katie said, it has two precision points that allows you for the seams to be able to go backwards and forwards. That makes a really nice, nice little iron. I love it. And yeah. another great feature too, something that I've never been able to get my husband to iron, <laughs> because, but with this one, I think he would be willing to iron, and if he ever forgot to turn it off, then... It, it does have the 30-minute auto shut off, so let's say husbands are very forgetful. I get it. Um, you forget to turn it off, so after I go ahead and put it on here, it's still plugged in the base to it, but if after 30 minutes I forget about it, it auto shuts off. And that's a huge, um, I guess, safety feature. It makes me feel a lot better if my husband were to forget or if I were to forget because sometimes Definitely. I'm busy and rushing out of my sewing room and <laughs> leave well, it running. And we all forget something. So we need that extra little feature that's going to allow us to have our mind at ease. Which is nice. So what about, you mentioned the cord before. Yes, so the cord is retractable, meaning the cord, the iron itself is cordless, but the base does need to be plugged in and it does have a retractable cord, uh, which is also nice because let's say um, at a retreat, I'm ready to go, the iron's still hot, I go ahead and pop it in has a case to it, it's still hot, pop it in, grab it, and take along with me. That's How awesome. neat is that, Katie? That's awesome. Don't Bernice. you want one? I do, I really do. You don't only need one, you need like five I of them. I need five of them. Yes, well, one in every room. And maybe one in every color, because they come in different colors. Correct. <laughs> and then you just go ahead and pop this open, comes right back out. Well, it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> there we go. And then it just you just go ahead, take the cord out, plug it in, and, and then it's, start using it again. And it's ready to go within a minute, you said, right? Within a minute from hot to cold. Let's say we're using it continuously. We put it back in the base to go ahead and reposition our fabric. Then it only takes, give or take, about five seconds to reheat back to its 
uh, heating set, the heat setting that we put it on. That's amazing. I don't know. I need, like you I need, said, we need one. We every, need one in every color. I agree. <laughs> Definitely. That's perfect. What else do you have there, so Katie? I also have the Nifty Notions Continuous Mist Spray Bottle. And the best thing about this is it is a mist. And you just do the one spray. Oh, my gosh. Yep. And it's a fine mist. And so this is great for when you need to put water or if you need to fill starch. Because um, some people like to starch their projects and have crisp edges and straight lines. So can I use this to kind of like, you know, it's hot in here. Let's just oh, mist just up. mist. Yes, definitely. <laughs> you like that? I do. I love it. It's perfect. That's um, nice. It is nice. And a lot of people, too, in the costume world, um, you can use it to uh, deodorize your clothes. If you mix in, you can do uh, vodka and water. Vodka? Vodka and water. Vodka you can here. add vodka and water. It's like a, <laughs> oh two, my it's God, a two to no. one ratio. And you would you would do two parts water and one part vodka. And wow. It'll help. I don't know that I'll be using vodka to fill that up. I'll drink the vodka, but no, not put it in. Not there. put it in. No, definitely okay. not. <laughs> but you can also do a 50-50 ratio and make a natural starch and then have something to press. So am I able to use this for like cleaning supplies? You know, my mom has one of these and I use it for my hair. Do you? Is I have that curly you hair. Pearls? Oh, yes. I love it. Yes. So <laughs> because it's just a mist, it doesn't wet my hair. It just kind of allows me to restyle it. That's perfect. So it refreshes and styles your curls. Another Definitely. use. Yeah. Which is great. So you could also um, just have these handy, I think, um, in your craft room or in your household. Definitely. And it could be used not only for, like Katie said, in the craft room, but our cleaning supplies, our vinegar, you mm -hmm. know, deodorizing, our best press. If we all buy best press, different scents. And we need more it. than just one bottle. Definitely. I agree. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do we have any questions? So the dimension of the light box, it is 11 by 17. The actual light box is, I believe, 16 by 11. Yeah. So this is the biggest one. Like I said, it is uh, 11... By 17 but the actual light itself is 16 by 11. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if we can see dimensions because this and then it does have the centimeters but then when we're talking about the mat those are in inches. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's on your side. Here. Oh sorry. Oh you're fine. These are in inches here. Yeah, so the one inch squares that we have, definitely. What other? Do you the wattage for the iron? The wattage for the iron, I believe, is on the base. Let me pull that. It is a standard wattage. Um, mm, power base. Mm, I don't have. It's not on there. So it's 120 volt, 60 hertz, 1500 watt. Yep. And then, yes, you can use uh, tap water or distilled water, of course, if you don't have um, access. access to any of that. Distilled water works fine, but tap water, I use mine with tap water. Okay. You can use it as a dry iron. There are three settings, and then it does have a spray feature on the front as well. Or you can also use your um, no, uh, Nifty Notions mist bottle. So you are able to use it without steam as well if you desire not to add water to the iron. Yep. All right, Katie, let's do a recap of all the items that we showed today because there was quite a few different ones. I know I have to get shopping and actually add a lot of these to my home because I don't have or I don't have a lot of them. Yep, definitely. So the first thing we talked about was the Tuto bag. The Tuto bag, the nice Lux Tuto bag. And it holds the domestic machines or sergers. Correct. Um, and has beautiful wheels and movement. Um, we talked about 
the light pad and the cutting mat for Nifty Notions. And then we talked about the Tula Pink um, cutter, which has left hand and right hand and capabilities. And let's not forget that this blade is just a 45 millimeter blade. We do have the replacements to go along, but any 45 millimeter blade does go well with these as well. Which I is like great. the grip of it. Yeah, it is a really good ergonomic feature. It fits in your hand nicely, it doesn't feel heavy, and you can cut and go fairly easy with this. Yep. And then it does come in this nice tin. So let's say Mother's Day is coming up, Katie. Yeah, it's yes. a great gift option. Or if you're just looking to give something to the crafter who has everything. We definitely don't have everything. We need a lot of... We need a lot of stuff. But I really like the tin and the color. Yeah, yes. put a bow on it, give it to your mom. <laughs> All right, and then the next thing we did have was the wool mat. Uh, this retains heat. Um, so as you're ironing on top of it, it retains the heat on the other side as well. And um, it feels really nice. It is. It's a nice weight, and it does protect any surface that it's on. So it's a good addition to any craft space that you need or home. Well, and it allows you not to have to have an iron board next to you because... I don't know about your home, but my sewing room is pretty small. <laughs> it is. It's really small. And I do like this because I'll keep it set up onto the side and then iron as I go okay. when I need to set seams or, or make things um, as I'm sewing. So it's a lot easier. Right. And then we do have our spinabout rulers, uh, the different sizes. And then we also have the rack that could be purchased separately. And it's just to keep all of your rulers, your mats organized. It has nice little slits. I know if my kids were to see those, they would just come and grab everything. <laughs> Definitely. But we do have the different rulers, different size, the frosted to it. It's anti-slip. And then like Katie had mentioned, um, it gives you precise uh, lining up because of the little squares in the middle where you can actually see where one one of the um, fabrics comes with the other one. Definitely. So if you're making a seam or if you have fabrics that you need to make sure are lining up precisely, it gives you full visibility. Right. I love it because not only is it just a square, it's actually giving me angles as well in each one of them. It has the different angles to it. So It does. So if you need to do any diamond cutting or triangles, it gives you that uh, capability. You can cut on the 45, the 60, or then you turn it, and then you can cut and the, do your halves. And your halves as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they do go up to the larger size as well. This is the biggest one we have, and then the two inch by um, two and a half by two, two and, and a half, half would be the smallest one. Yep. You want to see the bag again? Sure. It's really nice. Uh, once you get to actually driving it, it drives very well. It does. The these are really um, great wheels. They go over pavement, they go over cobblestones, they they go um, when you're on the go anywhere. <laughs> yes. So it makes a great addition and it it is. What I love about it is just the kind of stitches that it has. It's a bag that you're not going to see anybody else out there with it and all the different storage features that it does have. And then didn't you also say it has a lock to the wheels? The wheels do lock on this edition and I love that it then you can lock each one individually and then it's not going to roll away from you if you're out at a craft fair or you need to stop somewhere and and have it stay stationary so you can do that as so well. that means if your kids get in here you can lock it so they don't know i can or <laughs> or you could put your dog in there that's true it is a dog <laughs> and take it on on the road or your sewing machines definitely yep All right, and then the other recap. We had the Nifty Notions Mist Bottle as well, but then you can fill um, and just have to mist and do your curls. Definitely. So. And then, of course, last but not least, we do have the Panasonic Iron. Great addition to your craft room, 
your everyday ironing. I mean, I don't iron all day long, but no, but it's I want to with to this. Have it. Yeah. I love this one because it's wire or cordless, and you can just do the center of a table and bring it to your project instead of ironing your project on the ironing board. Definitely, and you can also steam. Uh, you could do it uh, vertically. So you if I needed it. to steam like curtains or something, I could use this that. This is right? your iron for it. If you needed to do, let's say we're on the long arm machine, we actually need to iron something in the middle. We take it to the middle and then we just steam it away. That's amazing. That's nice. I love the steam on this. Um, the pricing will be available at uh, the website here um, as you're being directed where to order. So I think I'm ready. I need to get one of these in every um, color. Yes, you need five, remember? Oh, five. five one each, each room, different colors. Definitely. And then I really like these bottles. I think I'm going to... I'm going to have to try this too. vodka. The vodka, it works, I promise. <laughs> and it's it's not a joke. It's it's a deodorizer for your fabric. And then to starch I'm going to have projects. to try it. Next next time, try it on your hair. It, it works. I will. I'll, on your hair. I'll I'll try the curly girl method, and maybe I'll there get curls as beautiful yes, as yours, like these. Yes. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? I was looking through to see. Well, thank you, ladies. A great job, and uh, we're going to tell everybody how they can get the products now. Okay. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a great day. All right, everyone, that was some products from Brewer. And so if you saw anything there that really piqued your interest right now, get on the phone and give us a call. Everything that you see on the page in front of you right now has a quilt show special on it, a call in special. So you need to give us a call to get that special. Uh, you can just type in uh, Brewer. Kyle, will they just type in Brewer in the in the search bar or will they? You can still go to us. Okay, so the best way to see the products is to go to smplive.tv. Uh, once you get to that website, you'll scroll down to day four, and you'll just scroll over on the little arrow bar, and it'll take you through all the products that we had on the show today. When you get to these products that you saw we just demonstrated, you click on them, it takes you to the product page. Then you can just call 800-401-8151. Uh, uh, and especially, uh, you know, like that light box, that thing is pretty, really cool. Uh, if you see something like that, give us a call. And then over the phone, they can tell you what the quilt uh, fest pricing is. All right, everyone. Guess what? We're at the day, end of day four. It's already flying by. And uh, so let's bring in my co-host, Jane Klaus. Here I am, Blaine. <laughs> hey. Who's tired? I'm not tired. End of day four already. <laughs> what? Yes. I cannot believe it. So tomorrow is the last day of Quilt Fest. So everybody Ooh. better really uh, stick to that that uh, TV or a computer or iPhone tomorrow and watch watch the show because this is the, tomorrow's the last day. But we still got to give some stuff, more stuff away today. And Jane, we get to pick our fourth oh, finalist for the Dream Studio giveaway. <laughs> What am I going to do next week when I don't get to hang out with all my friends? I don't know. You're going to have to withdrawals. I know it. This is okay. Well, I still have one more day. This is fine. <laughs> all right. So, hey, first up, we're going to give away a, is it a $100? Uh, it is a $50. $50. <laughs> so we're going to do two $50 gift cards to SMP. Uh, you can use these at checkout of anything you buy. Uh, so we're in basically we're gonna give two of these away. So, uh, Kennedy, yes, spin that wheel. Oh, no. Here we go. Here we go. The suspense is killing me. It's so exciting. Ooh, Fran Renzi hanging with us on YouTube. Hi, Fran. Thanks for being here. You won $50 gift card from our friends at Sewing Machines Plus. Uh, just go to smplive.tv to redeem your prize, and then they will send that out to you. Um, I asked you this yesterday, but um, oddly enough, I forgot. Do you send it in a, in a gift card form, or do you send an email? It's actually electronic, Jane. We'll send an email to them. They'll have the gift card code. And then all they have to do when they're at checkout, 
uh, anything to buy on SewingMachinesPlus.com oh, website, they just put that code in Got at the it. checkout in the coupon area, and it'll deduct fifty dollars off their order. I love that. Okay, I promise I'm going to remember that for tomorrow. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to give one more $50 gift card away. So, Kennedy, spend that wheel. Got it. You got it. She's like, <laughs> she's on it today. She yeah. is on it. I love it. Oh, Cindy Shelley, congratulations watching us on Facebook. I love that. Uh, hey, Cindy. You just won a $50 gift card to Sewing Machines Plus. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for you, too. Go to smblive.tv to redeem your prize. And you heard Blaine just tell you they're going to give you the electronic code. So when you buy something, you get your 50 bucks off. I love it. Easy. Easy, easy. We like All to right, make it easy. So next up, Jane, we're going to give uh, some, from Arrow Cabinets one of those Krista quilt blocks. Oh, and so oh, they love I'm going to let you do the honors. Okay, Kennedy, you ready? I'm ready. Spin that wheel. You got it. <laughs> Here we go. You got it, dude. Thank you, you Kennedy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Norma Bates. Hey, Norma. So we know Norma, and uh, so congratulations, Norma Bates. She is watching today from YouTube. So Norma, what we need you to do is go to smplive.tv, scroll down toward the bottom of that page where it says claim my prize, fill out all their information complete, hit submit, and we'll get those shipped out to you. All right, next up, Jane, we're gonna give an AccuQuilt Go Away, the Me Cutting Machine. Oh yeah, I love this, the AccuQuilt Go, Me Cutting Machine. All right, you machine. can do the honors. Okay, Kennedy, spin that wheel. Of course. <laughs> As I'm, I'm jumping around and saying it, you know, it's very exciting. Kim Johnson is our winner and Kim is watching today from YouTube. So congratulations, Kim. Kim, what we need you to do to claim that prize is go to smplive.tv. Scroll down toward the bottom of that page where it says claim a prize, fill out all the information complete, hit submit. And once we get that, uh, we will ship your AccuQuil, I mean, your, uh, yeah, the AccuQuilt Go, the meat Go cutting me, machine cut right out to you. Yep. You have 30 days to claim that prize. All right, next up, Jane, this is a big one. Oh, what is it? So we are going to give away a little Rebel with a special bundle from Grace. Wow. So, Kennedy, what? spin that wheel. Oh, I will gladly, gladly. That's a big prize. This is a big prize. I know it. How awesome is it would be to win that? Natasha. Right, Natasha Lennox? How awesome would it be to win that, Natasha? Guess what? You're the winner on YouTube watching us today. All right, Natasha, we need you to go to smplive.tv. Scroll down toward the bottom of that page where it says claim my prize. Fill out all that information complete. Hit submit. You have 30 days to claim the prize or it goes back into the prize closet and uh, we'll get that shipped out to you absolutely free. All right, Jane, we have come to the end of the day where we are going to pick our fourth finalist oh my God. for the Dream Studio giveaway worth $26,000. Okay, I'm ready. Kennedy, you want to show that real quick? Kennedy's going to put it on the Look screen and show that. Look at all that product. Wow. That's crazy. I Isn't see it? a Butler robotic system. I, I see, see a digitizing Star software. Iron. I see a Lore Star iron. Yep. I see a little Rebel, a Jazz 2, a Grace, I mean, a, a Moxie. Um, that's a Moxie XL. I, that's a Moxie XL. Yeah. yeah, the 18 inch long arm with frame. I see uh, some what? arrow cabinets. Yep, in the chair. So a print Moda from Brother. So yes, this yes. is, and what's cool about that print moto, Jane, is they can actually print their own fabric for quilting. Or if they had an old quilt they couldn't finish because they could no longer had the fabric, now print they can it. recreate the fabric to match. How cool is that? It <laughs> is really cool. I mean, that's so, amazing. So Monday, our finalist uh, was Laverne Mendez. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, our finalist was Sewing Bev. Okay. 
And yesterday, our finalist was Karen Bruin. So today, we're going to pick our finalists. And here's the great thing, Jane. All five finalists that we pick out, I throw them in a hat. I'm going to pick one name out. They're our grand prize winner for the $26,000 prize. But everybody that gets in the hat is going to go home a minimum of a sewing machine. Everyone, uh, that's, I mean, okay, get excited, people. Cross your fingers. I mean, it's, really it's pretty crazy. Awesome. Yeah, it is. Great. It's awesome. So, are y'all ready? Yeah. Everybody out there, SP Nation, are y'all ready for this this fourth finalist? I think All right, Kennedy, ready. Here we Fingers go. Cross for you. Ben, that will. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? <gasps> And Ronder Spillers Rouge. I'd say so, wrong. <laughs> wrong. Rhonda. Wrong. Rhonda Spillers wrong. Spillers wrong. So Rhonda, watching today on Facebook, you are our fourth finalist for the twenty-six thousand dollar Dream Studio giveaway. So they're oh just goodness. that easy, Jane. Just that easy. Ron is just hanging out on Facebook, watching yep. us all day, chatting away. And now all of a sudden she's in the finals. And Kennedy is adding her to the list as we speak. Oh, boy. <laughs> How excited is Rhonda right now? Oh, my gosh. So tomorrow we're going to pick our fifth and final finalists. Okay. And we will put them all in a hat. I'll draw that in name out and we'll see who's going to take home the all the hardware. Um, oh my gosh, that dream studio is, I don't even know what I would do if I won that. I, oh, I, don't, man, it's, I would it's just awesome. go run and hide in a corner and be so excited. I have a question for you though. So yes. tomorrow, we so we'll pick the fifth and final, um, you know, finalist. Can we do that first and then give away some prizes and then do the finale? Is that how you do it? Yeah, that's how we do it. We give it, I give Kyle time enough to, he actually goes in a Word document, prints their name out. We print it on the printer. We cut it out the exact same size as the rest of them. Uh -huh. We already have the four ready. And then he picks that, we get the fifth one picked. He does that, gives us enough time to have it printed. I bring them up here, I throw them in a hat and I pull the name out. I just wanted to do it for the suspense. Oh, it's awesome. It's, yeah, because really then cool. everyone would be like, the five people. <laughs> I wish we could get their five faces up on the screen and watch oh, them. Oh, I know. It would be awesome. I know it. A live we might, reaction. What if we could pull that off, Kyle? Huh. I think you can. You just have everybody log in, and then you, me on the side, and then five little faces. Can we have that many people on the screen? Yeah. All right. So you uh, finalists, we may try to... Uh, get in contact with you to send you a link to come on to the show tomorrow. I like that. That would be cool to have all five people's faces when we announce it. I know it. I, cause it would be like watching like the Oscars and when you win the big prize, they like, you know, the whole reaction would be great. <laughs> but I'm curious. Yeah. So that last person would have to be by a, well, they can put it on their phone too. Yep. So you I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We may be able to get to them. Um, this is my favorite thing. We're just like show prepping with everybody. It's like live show yeah. prep. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> well, also, tomorrow, Jane, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be crowning the winners of the oh, People's yes. Choice Award for the quilt contest and the judges' choice for best of show. And we get to meet the judges tomorrow too. Yes, we get to really. We're gonna tomorrow. We're gonna have uh, the educational session is gonna be at ten thirty Pacific time, twelve thirty p.m. Central. Uh, we have a session called Meet the Judges, and we'll spend about 15 minutes on with each judge uh, and talk to them and talk to them about, you know, their quilting journey and in what they look for in an award-winning quilt. I think it's great. I'm super excited. Um, I'm going to, and just because we're show prepping with everybody, I'm going to wear green <laughs> because of St. Patrick's Day being Sunday. I just, I'm all planning right. my wardrobe. I mean, we're all friends. You're, you're all part of it. <laughs> all right. Sounds like a plan. Because uh, I don't have a green quilt. I just have to do something else. <laughs> Whatever. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed today. I hope you had a great time. Hope you got some some of the great deals we had going out there. Uh, oh, and I wanted to make a real important announcement real quick uh, about Kimberly Imo. 
uh her book sold out jane and her ruler sold out oh my I gosh call, i got on the phone called her we have another order she's filling it right now i'm going to ship it out tomorrow it'll be here so we're going to have more so y'all need to make sure if you want to get the autograph book and the ruler set you got to go pre-order it right now so we can make sure we get those orders filled uh so anyway make sure y'all do that go pre-order it uh the book that she showed today in the Kennedy, we have that picture. Ooh, let me... We yeah, actually took a picture of the book roll. with her where she autographed it. Oh. And uh, so, again, if y'all want to do that, make sure y'all go order that tonight and uh, get it pre-ordered. I think the button on the website's pre-ordered, oh, but right cool. there you can see it. Yeah. I think it says Happy Quilting and it has her signature on it. Awesome. And uh, that's on the inside cover, I think. Oh, Blaine, you're always doing the hard work when I'm just sitting around having fun. <laughs> well Thank she was you. excited uh you know she was so excited to hear that it sold out and she was you know we were ordering more and i told her i said well the smp nation man they're gonna they're gonna support you and uh, i said we're gonna tell them to go ahead and pre-order it so we may be calling you back to order even more of them so sounds good that was awesome she was a great she was great oh, to have on today too. Fantastic. i know i know so fun that's all right well, Jane, we'll see you in the morning. Everybody, yep. S&P Nation out there, thank y'all for joining in. We're going to be starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, 10 a.m. Central. Yep. So y'all have a great night. We'll see you first thing in the morning. Bye, everybody. Bye.